हेलो गाइस वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन वेलकम टू द सेशन एंड वेलकम टू द महा 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 मैराथन सीरीज एंड यस यस दिस इज द कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स पार्ट नंबर वन फॉर द लास्ट टू डेज यू हैव फिनिश्ड अप डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड नेटवर्क थियोरी एंड द इंटायर टीम ऑफ बाइजूस एग्जाम प्रेप ई सी डब्ल आई एन वी आर हेयर टू इंश्योर यूर कंप्लीट रिविजन ऑफ ऑल सब्जेक्ट आई रिपीट ऑल सब्जेक्ट्स okay live on this youtube platform so do not forget to subscribe in case you are not subscribed so that you get to know about all the sessions you get you are aware about all the activities happening on this channel and today you will be having two subjects starting that is control systems and in the second half that is from 4 pm analog circuits and again these will go for two days control systems today morning tomorrow morning right analog circuit today evening tomorrow evening right so in around this 10 to 12 days we are covering up entire syllabus and as if you have followed the classes of network or digital you might have noticed that even you know you have not prepared much for those who have not prepared much for the gate this series can be helpful to have a quick crunch of the subject so that you can score some decent marks in this particular in this particular subject isn't it guys all right good morning good morning everyone very good morning as a very cool morning here and i think very cool morning in many parts of the country okay but here it's very cool actually today and not today it's from quite some days it's very cool but yeah whatever the weather may be whatever the season may be the show must always go on because gate examination is just now less than one month away from you away from you yes 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 kal ka digital ka pdf uh, i'll give you today right i'll give you today so actually you know yesterday preparing up the ppt uh, yesterday night we were preparing up the ppt of control system because the throughout the day we are busy with other classes and other activities so night i prepared uh, you know uh, ppt for uh, control set so got late and i think i forgot that digital pdf but i'll give you today afternoon itself right i'll collect from sanjay sir and we'll both give you okay we'll both give you so let us get started guys and let's get started with a good motivation do not forget to like the session let us start by a positive intent positive intent positive session okay because this is the control system maha marathon right and one by one as you are able to see this is going to be covered by me ashu jhangra sir and fanind sir we are going to cover up okay some topics today some topics tomorrow we have divided all the topics we have had yesterday meetings right definitely him and so here it's in delhi itself is very cold so i can imagine manali will be extremely cold at this point of time right just a moment guys all right <clears throat> yes definitely deepa just follow it and uh, you know at least practice some pyqs at least so that will help you to a good extent so guys let's get started then I think students are joining they'll keep joining uh, slowly okay so let's get started this is a brief intro about me this is rakesh i have secured ia 9 in the gate examination completed my masters from indian institute of science bangalore and these are the major area of expertise uh and guys this is the maha marathon as i am telling you it's not only control network digital but the entire subjects because the entire team complete team of byju's exam prep is ready to help you in the last month of the preparation and not only technical marathons after that there will be the marathons regarding to the maths and aptitude there will be some more practice sessions there will be uh, menti quizzes so many things it's a fully loaded month guys okay but let me also update you that for all gate 24 aspirants the next sunday 15 january at 1230 pm okay byju's exam prep is coming you with the seventh success mantras yes and who is going to take it your favorite abhinav degi sir m tech from iit delhi he is presenting this workshop seven success mantras to convert yourself from a beginner to a topper join live 1230 pm sunday 15th of january and also guys this sunday 8th january 1230 pm you have a chance to avail up to 90% scholarship on the gate preparation programs of byju's exam prep right okay just appear in the scholarship test again for this you have to go to the app log into the app and register for the event appear in this and now let's quickly revise up guys let's first revise up some basics of time response and everybody do not forget to share the session do not forget to share the session to all your friends colleagues juniors who are preparing 
ओके ऑल दो इट मे बी कूल मॉर्निंग बट द शो मस्ट गो ऑन आई सी अटेंडेंस लाइट ड्रॉप बट येस डे इट सेल्फ आई टोल्ड यू राइट एज द डेज विल गो ऑन फॉर द मैराथन आई नो द ट्रेंड ऑलरेडी राइट एज द डेज विल गो ऑन अटेंडेंस विल ड्रॉप बट अप टू द पॉइंट यू आर देयर keep 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 trusting yourself if you are following anything with continuity with dedication you are following the pattern of gate because same things happen in gate these many students will fill up the form these many will appear these many will have prepared these many will have prepared honestly right and out of that these many would have done test series mock everything ideally are you getting it so there is a difference between honesty and ideally also are you getting it okay i repeat guys these many will fill up the form of gate these many actually these many not able to see also these many will appear out of these appeared these many would have just prepared rest just appeared form bhar diya tha to appear ho gaye right out of these these much have prepared honestly and out of that also this much has prepared with all mock test revision syllabus completion matlab ideally right same thing happens i just give demonstrating you so if you are there till the last means you are following a characteristic of a true gate aspirants because you are there to ready to fight even in the end game yes it's the end game we have declared and now let's get started the, the first order control system as we know a first order control system mathematically can be described by a first order differential equation right electrically uh, it can be described as a, a system which has uh, one storage element one energy storage element right and uh, transfer function wise it can be defined as the one in which highest power of s in the denominator would be one because when you simplify its transfer function guys will not go into some basic derivations we all know how to calculate the transfer function we all know you can calculate the transfer function as g upon 1 plus gs hs i have taken a prototype model with the unity feedback okay so the transfer function of this system which is the ratio of the output laplace transform divided by the input laplace transforms turns out to be 1 upon 1 plus st what is the st what is the role of st let us consider all these things and and in uh, this the highest power of s in the denominator is just equal to the 1 right is just equal to the 1 mathematically if you convert into the differential equation there will be a first order differential equation dy by dt right or dct by dt and uh, electrically if i want to take an example here just a moment electrically if i want to take an example here so this could be the rc low pass filter is very clearly a first order example this is the output voltage v not t or that can be written as vct and when you calculate the transfer function of this rc low pass filter okay in terms of v not s is divided by vis you get the example 1 upon 1 plus s r c 1 upon 1 plus s r c just a second comments are slightly no just by qualification you will not get you know at least most of the good iits right yashwan so target little above that little more than that okay now dear what are the important parameters since it's a revision course so let us focus on the important parameters so that quickly i can jump to the question practice as well so what will be the impulse response as i have already told you the transfer function the transfer function is 1 upon 1 plus st right or i can write this as 1 by t 1 upon s plus 1 by t okay and what is the impulse response then impulse response as we know is the inverse laplace transform of the transfer function and that will turn out to be how much 1 upon t 1 upon s plus so it's going to be e raised to the power minus at so e power minus t by t is the impulse response very important is the step response so step response is the value of the output right when the input would be taken as unit step signal when the input would be taken as the unit step signal right so again you know if the input is unit step its laplace transform will be 1 by s solving a laplace transform taking inverse laplace transform applying all regular techniques what is the output that you are going to get you get the output ct which is going to be 1 minus e raised to the power minus t by t of course for t greater than equal to 0 okay 
So C T will be 1 minus E raised to the power minus T by T for T greater than E0. Then sir, what is this value T? What is this capital T that is coming from the beginning? Now, when I sketch this output waveform, when I sketch this output waveform mathematically, graphically or even if we take the snaps into the MATLAB, this is the output waveform that turns up. This is what is the output waveform that actually turns up in front of you, right? C T 1 minus E power minus T by T when the input applied was equal to the 1, right? Because, you know, usually we talk about causal systems in the control system. Okay, so RT equal to 1 by default for T greater than equal to 0. We ensure that we talk about causal systems and the causal signal. So, no need to specify T greater than 0. So, output in a sense is exponentially rising. Now, dear, what is the meaning of this linear dotted line? What is this linear dotted line? What is this approximation to the first order system? I will explain you this with the help of question. I am going to take a question related to it. So, just right now ignore it and I am going to explain you this with the help of question. This clearly represents an overdamped type of waveform. Although in second order there can be different types of response. Now, this response is exponentially increasing with time and gradually it settles to the value of 1. Yes, because when t tends to the infinity, when t tends to the infinity, the value of ct is 1 minus e power minus infinity and e power minus infinity is 0. So, the value of ct will be equal to what? The value of ct is equal to the 1 when limit t tends to infinity. So, finally it settles uh, to the value of 1. Now, since it is gradually increasing, uh, there comes a time, okay, there comes a time when the output ct is 1 minus e power minus t by t, this exponential factor becomes the first exponential, okay, the first exponential factor, right. So, ct, which is 1 minus, right, ct, 1 minus e raised to the power, 1 minus e raised to the power minus 1, the first exponential factor, right. Now, the general formula is 1 minus e power minus t by t. Let me equate this to 1 minus e power minus 1. After comparing both, we get t equal to t. t by t equal to 1 or t equal to t. This particular time, okay, the time taken by the step response to reach 63.2 percent, okay. That is 1 minus 1 by E, which is nearly 0 0.632, is known as the time constant of the system. That is defined as the time constant of the system, right. So, uh, the time when the output reaches 0 0.632 is known as the time constant of the system, right. Now, at T equal to T, it reaches 0 0.632. So, what is actually the trend that is followed here, as I am telling you, at the T equal to T, output reaches 0 0.632. Right. At t equal to 2t, I am writing down the value of the output. When you calculate at 2t, it approximately reaches 0 0.86. So, when I move in multiples of the time constant, when I move in the multiples of the time constant, I just keep observing the output. Then it reaches approximately 0 0.95. At 4t, it approximately reaches 0 0.98. At 5t, it approximately reaches the 0 0.99 and etc, etc, etc. Only when t tends to infinity, only when t tends to infinity, the output is finally equal to the 1. Okay, let's say your target here was, let's say as I have taken the example already for RLC, RLC circuit, let's say the target here was charging the capacitor to 1 volt. Here you applied an input source of 1 volt. The capacitor will slowly start charging and it will reach to the level of 1 volt at what time? If I want to talk about exact 1 volt, if I want to talk about the exact one volt, the capacitor will be taking how much of time, right? Because with respect, this is the general expression. With respect to the RC circuit, if you write down, right? with respect to the RC circuit, if you write down the V naught T, this will be given by what expression, right? If I apply the VIT is equal to 1, V naught T will be obtained as 1 minus E power minus T by T, where T is equal to RC. The time constant of the RC circuit is equal to product of R and C. Right. So, the time taken by the capacitor to charge exactly ideally to the 1 volt will be tending to infinity, will be what tending to infinity, right. And we can't define infinity, we can't wait for infinite time, that is why we here define the constant of settling time, we define the concept of settling time, right, uh, taking some uh, tolerance, taking some error. We will say that when output reaches up to a certain acceptable level. When the output reaches a certain particular level, we will call it to be settled. We will call it to be what? Settled. We define the concept of settling time. 
it is the time taken by the step response of a control system to reach within a specific percentage that specific percentage commonly that we use in control theory is 95% or the 98 percent right by default uh, nothing mentioned to take 98 percent in the questions but commonly they will mention right uh, the output uh, if i take the 98 percent criteria right the time taken by the output to reach 98 percent of the final value that means how much of the tolerance i have accepted how much of the error i have accepted two percent rather than 100 percent i settle at 98 percent and this is known as the case of this was having the two percent error band or it is also known as the 2% tolerance in the output, right. Similarly, if you define the settling time uh, definition by 95% criteria, that is having the 5% of the tolerance, that will be having the 5% of tolerance, right. And according to the 98% criteria, this can be commonly taken as the settling time, because at four times a time constant output settles at 98%, 0 0.98. Right. So, according to this 98% definition, my settling time is known as the 40. According to the 95% criteria for a first order system, it is approximately the 3T and etc, etc, etc. Okay. Next. Now, since I have shown you the waveform which is over damped, what is the rise time? Okay. The rise time, it is the time taken by the step response to change from 10% to 90%. Although this definition is different from under damped, Okay, right now I first define the rise time for over damped waveform, which is the time taken by the output to change from 10% to the 90%, right, nothing we are going to do, okay, I am not deriving it, I am just telling, I will take some time T1, where the output is, okay, I will take a time T1, where the output is 10%, I will take some another time T2, where the output is 90% and the difference of them, difference of them will be known as the rise time, the time taken to change from 10% to 90% of the final value, right. Similarly, there will be a time which is known as the settling time if I take 98% case only, if I just consider the 98% criteria, there will be the time which is the settling time where the output is nearly 98% that is known as the settling time, right. The time up to the settling time is known as the transient period that you all know and after the settling time we say that the steady state has been achieved. The steady state has been achieved, right. The steady state has been achieved. Clear? Eh? This is what it is. Achha ji. Thik hai? Now, what is the definition of rise time then? What should be the definition of rise time? Okay, what is the formula for rise time for a first order control system? It is given by 2.2t. It is given by the 2.2t. The rise time is given by the formula 2.2t. Clear everybody? Let's not derive it right down finally for the first order system 2.2t. Now, let's have a quick question here. For the system shown below, what is the rise time and settling time? For the system shown below, what is the rise time and the settling time? For the system shown below, what should be the rise time and settling time? So, so there can be direct, very simple question. Wo bhi dekh lete so, what should be the answer for the question? What should be the answer for this question? Okay, it's 5 upon S or I. Let's do it quickly. So, it is 5 divided by 5, 1 plus S by 5 or in the standard time constant form, it is 1 upon 1 plus s by 5. So, the time constant of the system is 1 by 5 or that is also equal to the 0 0.2 seconds. The time constant is equal to the 0 0.2 seconds, right. Now, if the time constant is 0 0.2 seconds, if the time constant is 0 0.2 seconds, tell me what is the rise time and the settling time. The very simple settling time, of course, as per the 2 percent criteria, as per the 2 percent tolerance criteria. So, what is going to be the settling time? So, that is the 40. That is known as sorry, t kahenge, 0.2. So that is 4 into 0.2, 0 0.8 second. What is the rise time? That is 2.2 t. So that is known as 2.2 of 0 0.2244. So that is 0 0.44 second. So what is the answer, sir? Okay, first rise time, the 0 0.44. Now see, guys, be very careful. Be very careful, yar. Some of you are giving the answer as D. It's C, na? Just 
don't exchange the things first rise time and then the settling time that's a very uh, silly mistakes and silly mistakes occur in the exam as well the silly mistakes occur in the exam as well right the silly mistakes occur in the exam as well clear eh? so just be very careful about this it's the c okay rise time 0.44 settling time is equal to the 0 0.8 done eh, na? next question next question yeah that linear approximation to this first order uh, response have a look into this question a unit step input to a first order system yields a response as shown in the figure this can happen when the values of k and a are right now this straight line will have a slope which is equal to the slope of slope of step response at the origin which is equal to the slope of the step response at origin right now what is the step of slope of the step response at origin let us understand this let us understand this so what should be the value of gs that is the k divided by s plus a okay or that is k by a 1 upon 1 plus s by a so what is going to be the uh, this is the transfer function right this is the transfer function correct now what is going to be the output then what is going to be the step response The step response gt is defined as the k by a 1 minus e raised to the power 1 minus e raised to the power minus t by a because the time constant here is 1 by a correct the time constant is 1 by a. so k by a 1 minus e raised to the power minus t by a now when you different oh, sorry not gt tt that is not the gs is the transfer function so output is suppose ct k by a 1 minus e raised to the power minus minus a t minus t by t sorry so time constant is 1 by a correct now when I differentiate the step response now when I differentiate the step response why I differentiate so that I get the idea of the slope okay slope can be obtained as the slope of tangent or the first derivative concept so I write this as k by a <coughs> derivative of 1 is 0 this will become a e power minus a t after differentiating so this is simply equal to the k e raised to the power minus a t and when i take it at t equal to 0 what is the slope at t equal to 0 at the t equal to 0 e power 0 is 1 and the slope is equal to what the slope is equal to the k the slope is equal to the k clear the slope is equal to k now this straight line has a slope which is equal to k okay this straight line has a slope which is equal to the slope of the original response at origin okay and that is equal to k at origin matlab t equal to 0 and this should be equal to how much now what is the slope of straight line the coordinates are also given to you the height is 5 just a moment the height is given to you as 5 the base is 0.1 so this is 5 is divided by 0.1 and that is the 50 okay so slope is obtained uh, sorry the value of k is obtained that is the 50 that is equal to 50 okay then the value of a right k ka value 50 a gaya. answer is done but still we will calculate the value of a right yaha pe the option match ho gaya, but still we should know how to calculate the value of a as well so what should be the value of a what should be the value of the a dear everybody what should be the value of a Me. what should be the value of a now to obtain the value of a what we can use we can use the steady state value which is given to you as 5 okay pe dekhenge, we have already obtained the output as given by k by a 1 minus e raised to the power minus a t if t tends to infinity the output value is tending to 5 that is the steady state value given to me let's use this particular value Okay, let us use this particular value. So, k upon a 1 minus e power minus infinity that will be 0 is 5. So, k by a is equal to 5 and hence the value of a will be k which is the 50 divided by 5 and the answer should be equal to the 10. The answer should be equal to the 10. Okay, so that is already obtained. So, 50 and 10 the value of k and a. The value of k and a that is equal to the 50 and 10. Correct, G. 
all right let's move ahead then let's move ahead then and let's quickly revise the uh, fundamentals and the concepts of second order system as well then we take up more problems okay so like second order control system uh, which will be having the highest degree of s in the denominator equal to 2 or it will be described by a second order differential equation when you write down when you write down its transfer function you write down the transfer function as you write down the transfer function the standard transfer function after solving you get it as okay the equation s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n equal to z omega n square equal to 0 will be referred to as the characteristic equation of the control system and one suitable example that you can undoubtedly take here is the rlc circuit having two storage elements a series rlc circuit can be taken here as the example of a second order control system where i define the output as the output across the capacitor this is the point where i apply the input voltage and this is the output voltage right and we define its transfer function we actually calculate its transfer function that is v naught s upon v i s and that turns out to be 1 upon s square l c plus the s r c plus 1 okay Achha, even some questions now i'll show you that questions also but some questions can be related uh, you know with the concepts of control to be applied into the series RLC circuit. So what is the characteristic equation if I highlight this one separately. So for this series RLC circuit what is the characteristic equation and what are the values. Okay so the characteristic equation for the series RLC circuit will be S square LC plus SRC plus 1 equal to 0 or it can be also written as S square plus S R by L plus 1 by LC equal to 0. Solving which you get the value of omega n as 1 upon root LC, the natural undamped frequency and the value of zeta that you obtain is R by 2 root over C by L. Correct. It is R by 2. It's simply 2 zeta omega n is equal to R by L is equal to the R by L. You get R by 2 root over C by L. That is the value of uh, zeta you obtained and that is the value of omega n you obtained, right? Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll take up questions related to even these concepts. Okay, now we all uh, must be knowing that in this, the omega n is known as the natural undamped frequency measured in radian per second and zeta is defined as the damping ratio and based on the different values of zeta, there will be different beha behaviors of the system that also will define one by one, that also will revise one by one, right. Now, if I talk about the poles, we had the characteristic equation, poles matlab just put the characteristic equation, S square plus 2 zeta omega n S plus omega n square equal to 0. Solving this as a quadratic equation, we are going to obtain, get the poles as minus zeta omega n plus minus j omega n under root 1 minus zeta square or this can also be written as s is equal to minus alpha plus minus j omega d minus alpha plus minus j omega d in general complex but they can become pure imaginary and real as well under certain certain circum, circum, certain circumstances i'm sorry okay so we'll see what are those circumstances we'll see what are those circumstances here first of all alpha is defined as the damping factor for alpha equal to 0, there will be no damping in the system and omega d is defined as the damped frequency of the system, also defined as the pseudo frequency of the system. Okay, so alpha is zeta into omega and omega d is given by the formula omega n under root 1 minus zeta square. Generally assuming the poles to be complex, but it is not necessary, but just if I take it to be complex, this is what is the location of poles I have marked in front of you. Okay, having the negative real part minus alpha, they can go into the RHP also, sare cases abhi cover karenge and having the imaginary part j omega t as well as the minus j omega t, we have plotted this into the S plane. Okay, omega n, now there is a one more picture with respect to this uh, geometrical uh, 
a picture of the plots. The omega n, which is the natural undamped frequency. Natural undamped frequency is what? It is the frequency of the sinusoidal waveform obtained when the system is undamped. The system is undamped when the zeta is equal to zero. Wo sare cases abhi aayenge, right? All those cases will come up, right? Omega n is also one more mathematical point. It is also known as the distance of the poles with respect to origin. Distance of the poles with respect to the origin. That also you should note, so, you know, helpful in some of the good questions. Morning dreamer. Okay. And there is some angle theta mentioned here. There is some angle theta mentioned here. Okay. The angle subtended by the radial line to the pole. The angle subtended by the radial line to the pole with respect to the negative real axis. That is theta or in general we also call it as some angle. Commonly referred to it as phi. Now I have not said anything. Because when you calculate dear here. When you calculate the cosine of this angle. Na, when you calculate the cosine of this angle, take the base upon hypotenuse. Base is given by zeta omega n. Look into this base, x coordinate. And the hypotenuse is omega n. So, this is equal to what? This is equal to the zeta. Okay. So, zeta, the damping ratio is also the cosine of the angle subtended by the radial line to the pole with respect to the negative x-axis. With respect to the negative real axis, everybody. With respect to what? The negative real axis. With respect to the negative real axis. Done? Eh? Chalo. That is what is the zeta. <coughs> Chalo. Done, 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 done. Now, now let's move ahead and let's also talk about the general step response. But this will be having different expressions for different zeta. But first, in general, the step response expression after the Laplace transform techniques that come up is 1 minus e power minus alpha t upon under root 1 minus zeta square sine omega dt plus phi. Once again, alpha is the damping factor, zeta is the damping ratio, omega d is the undamped frequency and xi. What is xi? That is coming up from cos inverse of zeta. The xi that I have defined in the previous picture. Right? Or you can say zeta is equal to the cosine of phi. Okay. But what is the step response nature for different values of zeta? Right? For different values of zeta. First of all, we define zeta greater than 0. Zeta equal to 0 zeta less than 0. Okay, we need to study the behavior for all the values of the zeta. What happens if the damping is negative as well, right? All the three cases we shall study. Then for zeta greater than 0 also, how much greater? How much you damp the system? Accordingly, you classify as under damped. Then the critical point of damping where oscillations are lost out and then the over damped and then the over damped. So here also there will be three cases. That is zeta is between 0 and 1, zeta equal to 1 and the zeta being greater than 1. Okay. So, let's see uh, all of these cases differently. So, number 1, the step response nature when the zeta is between 0 to 1. Expression already, what are the important points I will highlight that you must necessarily remember questions answer directly, indirectly. The step response formula is anyways there in front of you. 1 minus e power minus alpha t upon 1 minus zeta square sin omega dt plus phi. Right. The system is stable because when you draw this waveform, this waveform turns up to be an under damped waveform. The system starts oscillating. Okay. But the oscillations are damped in nature. Oscillations are reducing in time. Finally, the system settles to the desired value of 1. Okay. Because the reference input was also equal to 1. Assuming the error here as, assuming the error here as RT minus CT. So, finally, there is no steady state error also. And also what is more important that the output is always bounded. Output is always bounded. Okay, so input was also bounded because input was step. I am talking about step response. So, this is a BIBO stable system anyways. This is a BIBO stable under damped system. Okay, important points to note, right? The settling time, settling time will be Alexa defined, karenge, but you can note down it is given by 4 by zeta omega n. Okay, the settling time is 4 by zeta omega n. We will define that separately also. Okay, let's come uh, to the poles. Poles already we have defined as minus alpha plus minus j omega d. So, this is minus alpha plus j omega d and this one is minus alpha minus j omega d signifying that the poles are complex conjugate in the LHP. The poles will be complex conjugate lying in the left half plane. What happens when zeta becomes equal to 0, right? We solve the expression actually limit zeta tending to 0 of ct and after solving this, we obtain the ct just putting zeta equal to 0. The expression that turns up is 1 minus cos omega nt. The expression that turns up is simply 1 minus cos omega nt. And that is what? 
it's purely a cosine function 1 minus cos theta that you can also write it in the form of 2 sin square theta by 2 ultimately pure oscillatory it's a sinusoidal expression that has turned up in front of you it's a pure oscillatory waveform okay the waveform is going to be something of this form okay when you draw its value uh, you know for different values of cos theta or swapping 1 minus cos theta you get this particular waveform and this is clearly undamped there is no damping because the oscillations are sustained in nature we also call it as the sustained oscillation case because oscillations are neither increasing nor decreasing so there is no damping in the system there is no damping in the system the reference input was equal to the one okay and the output is oscillatory even at t tending to infinity even at t tending to infinity it doesn't settle to a desired value so there is no settling time concept here right there is no settling time concept here okay the system is it stable according to bibo definition yes it has a bounded output but it doesn't settle to a value it is oscillatory we call it as marginally stable we call it as what we call it as marginally stable what about the poles again in the formula of poles you have to just put zeta equal to zero you get plus minus j omega n right the poles are pure imaginary the poles are complex conjugate lying on the imaginary axis in short call the poles as pure imaginary you can call the poles as pure imaginary moving ahead to the next case when zeta is equal to one we then solve a simple mathematics limit zeta tending to one ct here actually some limit fundamentals we will apply and after solving limit zeta tending to one of ct after solving the limit zeta tending to one of zt what is the expression we obtained here we obtain the expression as one minus e raised to the power minus omega nt one plus omega nt 1 minus e power minus omega nt 1 plus omega nt sir dear now tell me where is the sinusoidal term now where is the sinusoidal term right where is the sinusoidal term right. if i take up zeta between 0 and 1 right there is the exponential term e power minus term right from e power minus uh, t term multiplied by a sign term right multiply by a sinusoidal term for zeta equal to 0 if i start there is only pure sinusoidal term pure sinusoidal term right this is the damned sinusoidal we call this as under damned now when i talk about dear when we take the case of this is nothing mathematically derived easily limit zeta tending to one some, some small mathematics is done so when i take zeta tending to one for the first time i get that there are no oscillation well, there is no sinusoidal term right for zeta tending to one we see that all sinusoidal terms have been eliminated that means there is no oscillations at all it is going to be clearly non-oscillatory the minimum <coughs> the minimum damping the minimum damping under which the system doesn't oscillate at all it is just going to settle to its desired value without any oscillatory behavior is the critically damped system whose waveform is something of this kind whose waveform is something of this kind it rises and it settles to the steady state value as quickly as possible okay there is non oscillatory behavior okay and it settles to that is okay. It settles to the steady state value as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. And when you put down the zeta equal to 1 in the poles formula, in the formula for poles, the both the poles will come up to be plus minus, sorry, both the poles will be minus omega n and minus omega n. That means both the poles here are, both the poles here are real and equal <coughs> in the left half plane. Both the poles are real and equal in the left half plane. Dear, what is the settling time for this? Dear, what is the settling time for this? I will tell you some of the books, especially Indian author books, will tell you the common formula of settling time for second order system. They will tell you the settling time is 4 by zeta omega n. But this is actually not. Even if you put this value of 4 by zeta omega n in the response that we have obtained, the output actually turns up to be somewhere around 90%. No. 
So that is not the correct settling time formula. So what is the settling time for this case is given by 6 by zeta omega n or that is eventually 6 by omega n because zeta ki to baat 1 hi chal rahi hai. So putting zeta equal to 1, the settling time of this is 6 by omega n. Very clearly when you put the 6 by omega n here, t equal to 6 by omega n, you are going to get the output which is 98%. You are going to get the output which is the 98%, 0 0.98. <coughs> Okay, 0 0.98 approximately. So, the correct settling time for a critically damped system, please note down is 6 by omega n. Otherwise, you can sometimes fall up into the mistake, right? You can sometimes fall up into the mistakes. Okay, ji? So, these are some important pointers about critically damped. So, for zeta equal to 1, oscillations are totally lost. Now, what happens when you increase zeta beyond this minimum value, beyond this critical value is that the system will still be non-oscillatory. The system will still be non-oscillatory. Only thing is, it keeps becoming slower and slower and slower. Okay, because you are increasing. Increasing zeta is like increasing the negative forces acting on the, any body, acting the <coughs> restoring forces acting on the body. So, when zeta greater than 1, the system, no need to remember this equation, which is solved using the hyperbolic trigonometric function. No, just remember that the system is over damped for zeta greater than 1. The system is over damped for the zeta greater than for the zeta greater than one. Right. Finally, it is stable. Yes, it is BIBO stable. Even the previous case and this case, they are BIBO stable because the output is always bounded and settling to the finite value. Even this is the BIBO stable. Right. Where the system was critically damped. The next case. Okay, uh, yeah, for the zeta greater than 1, when the system is over damped, the poles will still be real, but unequal location in the left half plane. So, poles are real and unequal. These are the points to be remembered. Formula of poles is one formula. Usmeham, anytime we can put zeta and get the answer. Okay, just note down the conclusion, real and unequal, because these are conclusions that should immediately click into the mind. For negative values of zero, of, co of course, it's going to be e power minus of minus t if i put the zeta negative so of course alpha is also negative and it actually plays the role of amplifying the signal exponentially because it is e power alpha t and such systems are going to be dynamically unstable because because for t tending to infinity output also tends to infinity so we get for a finite input for a bounded input we get a unbounded for a bounded input we get an unbounded output such systems are unstable and not only for zeta between minus 1 to 0 even for zeta less than or equal to 1 the, the response rises but without any oscillation here also the response will rise going to infinity but without any without any oscillations right without any oscillations Hello. Now, now here, moving ahead and talking about some transient parameters, next important case is some transient parameters, especially for underdamped waveform and then let's take up the questions. Okay, so this is the underdamped waveform that uh, I have taken in front of you. In this underdamped waveform, there are several times that we need to consider and that we need to define here. So, uh, this is the reference uh, value of 1, this is the maximum value obtained by the output. So, what are these times? Let us come first with the rise time. Okay, the time taken, now this is an underdamped waveform. The time taken by the step response to these, the desired value for the very first time is the rise time. Overdamped definition already defined, kar diya pehle. no need to look into it. Overdamped definition already I have defined with first order. The definition of rise time for underdamped system is the time taken to reach the desired value for the first time. So, uh, let me mark it here. This is what is the rise time. Rise time, which turns out to be no derivation, guys, not needed. Just write down the for final formula. It turns out to be the pi minus phi is divided by the omega d. The rise time turns up as the formula pi minus phi is divided by the omega d. Next, the delay time, the time taken by the output to reach 50% of the desired value for the first time. 50% of the desired value for the first time. That will be defined as the delay time. The time taken to reach 50% of the desired value for the first time is known as the delay time. And the formula for delay time approximately. Why approximately, sir? Because because when you put the output value as 0.5 n and put in the formula of uh, the step response, there will be an equation which is not having a solvable formula. So, we solve it by numerical methods. We solve it by Newton-Raphson and approximately the formula that turns up is 
वन प्लस जीरो पॉइंट सेवन जीटा डिवाइडेड बाय द ओमेगा एन वन प्लस जीरो पॉइंट सेवन जीटा डिवाइडेड बाय द ओमेगा एन ओके नेक्स्ट मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द मैक्सिमम ओवरशूट एंड द पीक टाइम द पीक टाइम एज द नेम इट सेल्फ सजेस्ट इट इज द टाइम एट विच द आउटपुट ऑप्टेन इट्स पीक ओके आउटपुट ऑप्टेन इट्स पीक right that is the maximum value so the peak time again guys are deriving the peak time is given by the formula pi divided by omega d this is the peak time okay this is the peak time where the output attains its peak now although it has attained the peak here right here no no not necessary ankit kumar desired value will not be one here i have taken as an example because i just assumed the unit step input no it can be different as well okay it can be different as well that is why the overshoot questions and i will take a question of overshoot i have that question where the desired value may not be one we will take that question also ankit tiwari ab yahan pe dekhenge because the output shoots to a maximum that means it is deviating from its desired value right or in a sense the output is fluctuating about the desired value right we want the output to settle at the desired value but it is showing some fluctuation about the desired value and if that fluctuation is huge enough if there is a huge deviation from the desired output that sometimes may cause some slight damage also to the system so we are now interested in we are now interested in monitoring how high is this fluctuation we are not interested actually in the peak value right because if the desired value itself is suppose 10 for a moment as i am telling you ankit it may not be always one right suppose if the desired value is 10 and your peak value is 10.5 that is very close to desired value but if your desired value was 1 and in that case it is 10.5 that's a huge fluctuation so we are not only interested in the peak value we are interested in the fluctuation how much is the peak value fluctuating with respect to the with respect to the desired value and the maximum fluctuation the maximum deviation it is very crystal clear because there is a damping in the waveform very crystal clear that the maximum deviation is 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 in the first time when the output reaches the maxima right because of the damping these oscillations amplitude will be reducing continuously the next fluctuation will be definitely smaller in magnitude good morning sandhya and this is known as what this is known as the maximum deviation okay this will be contributing to the case of maximum overshoot then we also define it as the percentage then we also define it as the percentage this is the maximum overshoot also known as the peak overshoot theek hai also known as the peak overshoot then what is this sir this is actually known as the this is all maximum uh, peak is also obtained at the first maximum overshoot peak overshoot first overshoot because first one is going to be the maximum so what is this this is defined as the first undershoot <coughs> okay then what is this this one is the second overshoot so there are multiple fluctuations na this is the second overshoot then this is the second undershoot and etc 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 first of all this is known as the peak time where you achieve the maxima okay in general in general if i write down the formula in general what is the time for different overshoots dear what is the time for different overshoots the time is given by n pi integral multiple of pi by omega d but for overshoot it has to be the odd integral multiple it has to be odd integral multiple or n equal to odd that means for n equal to 1 3 5 etc right for n equal to 1 it will be the first overshoot that is always peak but this is the general formula and if i want to describe dear if i want to describe dear the time for undershoots all this is obtained using the maxima because undershoots represent the minima locations so all these are obtained as the uh, the basic calculus techniques of maxima and minima here also formula will be the same t equal to n pi by omega d but for all even values of n that is n equal to 2 4 6 etc we are going to observe the undershoots we are going to observe the undershoots right theek hai so general formula n pi by omega d for odd value of n it will represent the overshoots for even value of n it will represent the undershoots right now let us define this maximum overshoot as i told you maximum positive deviation with respect to the desired value as i am telling you na with respect to desired value if the desired value is 10 and the and this is 10.5 okay the maximum value is 10.5 so it's a small deviation okay 
or if the desired value is 10 and the maximum value is 12, the deviation is 2, the deviation is 2, but when you compare with the desired value, it is only 20%. If the desired value is 1 and then the peak value is just 2, then with respect to desired value, that is 100%. 100% over chala gaya. So, we always compare it with a base level that is a desired value. As I told you, how much is the fluctuation in the system with respect to what you desire. So, we now define the formula for overshoot, maximum overshoot, maximum bol lije ya peak bol lije ya first overshoot. Let me give the formula for first overshoot. Okay. And the basic definition of it is the basic definition of it is the maximum deviation with respect to desired value. So, what is the what is the value of deviation then? Maximum value minus the desired value. That is known as the absolute value. But when compared with the CT max, oh sorry, when the CT desired, when you compare it with the desired value, when you compare it with the desired value, right? That is the formula for overshoot for percentage just multiply by 100 okay for percentage multiply by 100 that is the formula for overshoot what is this formula turning up under normal circumstances this formula turns up to be this is given by the formula e raised to the power minus pi zeta divided by under root 1 minus zeta square but we all know that zeta is cosine of pi. So, if you remember the formula in terms of pi, it is little simpler. So, we can also write down this formula as e raised to the power minus pi cot pi. e raised to the power minus pi cot pi. Okay. e raised to the power minus pi cot pi. This is the formula for final simplified formula and this is the important definition. Sometimes the definition will play a crucial role. Okay. If the desired levels are changed. Okay. Now, now this is the formula for first overshoot. So, dear, dear, dear. Now, let us uh, generalize this. Right. Uh, if I talk about the first overshoot. Okay. Time bhi lik diya tha. That is the peak time pi by omega d. And there you get maximum overshoot that is e power minus pi cot pi. Okay. Then, if I talk about dear, the first undershoot. As I told you, undershoots will be for even value of n. The time is obtained as 2 pi by omega d. 2 pi by omega d. And, and the overshoot value, that will not be the maximum. But just some overshoot value, that is not going to be the maximum. Just let me write down the overshoot value. Overshoot or the fluctuation. If I define, that is obtained as e raised to the power minus 2 pi cot phi, right? In general, now this also will turn up by the formula e power minus n pi cot phi, right? For overshoots, put n odd. For undershoots, put n even. Although this may not be that much important for questions, but just note down, this is the complete general analysis, right? Settling time ka definition pehle hi bol diya hai, formula bhi pehle hi bata diya, it is given by the formula 4 by zeta omega n. When we were discussing under damped system, there only I have told you the general formula, right? Achha, guys, many a times, let me come back here, okay. Many a times, uh, the overshoot is given and then they are asking the value of zeta. So, if you, either you can solve from here directly, right, or you can note down the formula as well, that is your call, right. Overshoot, as I told you, maximum overshoot is given by the formula e power minus pi cot phi or e power minus pi zeta upon under root 1 minus zeta square. So, you know, sometimes they ask overshoot, but many of the questions given the overshoot find a zeta. So, from here, you can note down the formula for zeta that turns out to be ln mp whole square divided by ln mp whole square plus pi square and its whole under root. Clear? So, you can, you know, if you are able to manage, you can remember this formula. Otherwise, you know, we have overshoot, we can put the overshoot, we can first easily get the value of phi. This is a simple formula, e power minus pi cot phi, put the overshoot, get the value of phi, then zeta is cos phi. That's also a simple technique if you don't remember the separate formula. Okay, ji? Chalo. Quickly, chalo. Now, tell me answer very quickly. The system shown in the figure has a second order response 
has a second order response with the damping ratio of 0.6 and the frequency of damped oscillation 10 radian per second. What is the value of K1 and K2? What should be the value of the K1 and K2? What should be the value of the K1 and K2? The system shown in the figure has a second order response with the damping ratio given and the frequency of damped oscillation 10. What should be the K1 and K2? So, there are two things specified here. That is the zeta is 0.6 and the frequency of damped oscillation that is the omega d given to you as 10. For K1 and K2, okay, I'll, I'll write down these things very clearly if it is little blurred. I'll write down separately. This one is the K and this one is 1 upon S, S plus 1 plus K2S. I am able to observe it from the close proximity. You can now down this. Okay. What, what is the technique of solving this question? These are uh, sim simple questions, but yet requires some basic calculation. That's it. Okay. Characteristic equation. You have to turn back your attention to the characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. So, what is the characteristic equation here? Do it up guys, everybody quickly. What is going to be the characteristic equation here? 1 plus GSHS. Characteristic equation also we define it as 1 plus GSHS equal to 0. So, we will have 1 plus the forward path gain GS will be K1 into 1 by S. S plus 1 plus what? Plus the K2S equal to 0. So if I simplify, I get S square plus S, S ko common le lenge, to 1 plus K2 plus the K1 is equal to 0, is equal to 0. Now, before we solve up the char characteristic equation from the omega D, which is equal to omega N under root 1 minus zeta square, that is equal to 10. Let us calculate the value of the what? The value of the uh, omega n actually zeta given yeah there is this is zeta zeta is given to me so omega n will be 10 is divided by under root of 1 minus 0 0.6 square 10 upon the under root 1 minus 0 0.6 square yeah so 12.5 so the value of omega n is turning out to be 12.5 now everything is sorted if omega n is there, everything is sorted now because the value of k1, if I compare to the general characteristic equation, it is omega n square. Omega n is 12.5. So, 12.5 ka square, if I do it up quickly, it is 156.25 here. This part is the 156.25. And then the value of 1 plus k2 is given by the formula 2 zeta omega n. So, that is 2 into zeta 0 0.6 into omega n which is 12.5. Solving it, how much will be the answer? Fifteen. So, this part is coming out to be the fifteen. Right. So, what is my answer? Yeah, it is option number B. 156.25 under K2 is fifteen. Done. Simple question. A simple analysis question. Right. A very simple analysis question moving ahead to the next question guys right and in case you are enjoying your understanding this is a simple part of control system but yet important if you are getting your answers do not forget to be motivated do not forget to like the session okay do not forget to like let's at least make the century of likes now it's been you know almost one hour we have started guys almost one hour we have started or let's hit the century of likes now everybody for a unity feedback system guys this is a msq question for you for a unity feedback system, GS is equal to 1 upon S square plus 2S and choose the correct option. Choose the, well, actually two parameters. I just made it into an MSQ question. You have to talk about the peak overshoot. You have to talk about the settling time and choose the correct option. Choose the correct option, everybody. Achha, haan, sorry, wo 1 plus K2 tha, kya? Thik hai, dear, dear. Okay. So, what should, this is the 1 plus K2, no issues. So, the value of the K2 is equal to, kitna? Is equal to the 14. Okay, and that is the option number C. No issues, hai na? Option number C, 156.25 and 14. Done. Right. Done. Let's move ahead to the next question. Yeah. MSQ question. Right. So, for a unity feedback system, GS, the forward path gain is given to you. Okay. Or the open loop gain, you can say, is given to you. Find out what is the overshoot and the settling time quickly. Find out what is the overshoot and the settling time. Uh -uh.
यस गाइस चलो ओके आई होप यू आर डन आई होप यू आर डन विद द क्वेश्चन वेरी सिंपल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेरी क्लियरली व्हाट इज गोइंग टू बी माय कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इक्वेशन दैट इज वन प्लस वन अपॉन एस्क्वायर प्लस टू एस इक्वल टू जीरो तो एस्क्वायर प्लस टू एस प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू द जीरो एस्क्वायर प्लस टू एस प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू द जीरो राइट करेक्ट नाउ वॉट इज दिस दिस इज एस प्लस वन होल स्क्वायर equal to zero, giving you s equal to minus one and minus one. From here only I can tell you what is the what is the type of the response. s equal to minus one and minus one, real and equal. So the system is definitely critically damned. The system is critically damned. Now for critically damned, what is the overshoot? Question is just to purely confuse you. What is the overshoot? Since it is critically damned. right what is the settling time 6 by omega n right the roots itself are minus 1 minus 1 so omega n is equal to 1 yeah from here also you can say omega n is 1 the settling time is 6 seconds some of you might comment 4 ka seconds no it the formula is not 4 by zeta omega n right it is 6 by zeta omega n for a critically damped system and the next thing and the next thing because it is critically damped it will not have any overshoot na dear what is the critically damped wave form what is that critically damped wave form it just rises and settles to the desired value as quickly as possible it doesn't have even one single overshoot it doesn't rise above the desired value it's a non oscillatory so no overshoot or no undershoot so there is no overshoot right because the roots are real and equal that is why critically damped alok or you can calculate zeta other way other way you know maine aisa isliye likha because for me it was simple a plus b whole square identity or what you can do omega n is 1 2 zeta omega n is 2 zeta equal to 1 that also you can say alok hai na so anyways you can calculate now the point is now the point is now the point is uh, what is the correct answer it is only c what is the answer for the question there is no overshoot neither 10 nor 20% it is c and i intentionally sometimes take this question I intentionally sometimes take this question just to make you clear that MSQ questions can have a single option correct. Multiple select question, one or more than one answer can be correct. So you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared for such variety as well. ठीक है जी? You have to be prepared for such variety. Next question on your screen. Okay, for the system shown in the figure. Okay, is non-oscillatory has the lowest possible settling time. What is the meaning of this? Now again. a system is non oscillatory non oscillatory means non oscillatory means when is the response non oscillatory when the system is critically damped or over damped there the response is non oscillatory but the over damped as i told you if you just increase the damping and damping the system becomes slower and slower so it should have the lowest possible settling time but there are two things here it should be non oscillatory and it should have the lowest possible settling time so either that either out of these two the lowest possible settling time will be definitely for uh, for critically damped right nahi <laughs> ankit zero option cannot be there one or more option can be correct so nothing like zero right at least one will be correct ankit clearly mentioned one or more option just if you read into the it brochure as well so this is critically damped gauge right what is the value of k right so first if i take up the gain of this inner loop If I just take up the gain of the inner loop, this is going to be hundred by s square divided by one plus hundred by s square into k s, and that is equal to how much? Hundred is divided by s square plus one hundred k s. Hundred upon s square plus one hundred k s. That is what is the value of the. That is what is the uh, inner loop gain. So what is the final characteristic equation then here? What is the final characteristic equation? One plus hundred by s square plus s square plus hundred k s equal to zero. S square plus one hundred k s plus one hundred equal to the zero. Right. Out of which omega n square is hundred. So omega n ten ho gaya. And then I have two zeta. Omega n is also hundred. ठीक है क्रिटिकली डैम्ड है डियर सो व्हाट इज द क्रिटिकली डैम्ड जीटा जीटा विल बी टेकन एज वन सो पुट डाउन दिस वैल्यू 
put down this value this is 100k actually so 2 into zeta which is 1 omega n is 10 is 100k solving that k agya 20 by 100 the value of k is known as the 0.2 sir the value of k is 0.2 everybody the value of k is the 0.2 my correct answer is option number b my correct answer is the option number b correct answer is option number b Okay, hello. Let's come back to the next question then. Let's come back to the next question. For the second order system, response given below, find the value of the damping ratio. Find the value of the damping ratio. Find the value of damping ratio. Now, now from this waveform, first of all, what is the parameter that I will calculate is the deviation. Is this deviation? Okay, so what is the overshoot from this particular waveform? It is given by the maximum deviation which is 1.254 minus 1.04 divided by the desired value of 1.04 ct max minus ct desired compared with the ct desired okay so let me just calculate how much this value is going to turn up to be and that is 0.20 0 0.206 if I take more precise 0 0.206 correct eh? this is 0 0.206 find the value of the damping ratio so now what is going to be the zeta that can be calculated as ln mp whole square as I told you you can remember this formula or you can take up the formula of overshoot and start solving from there okay After solving 0.45, just put down the values, calculations you can complete, 0.45 will be the zeta damping ratio coming up. Just check up the calculation once and verify it. Just take up the calculations and verify that, right, and verify that. Okay, next, pole locations of four second order systems are given, which system has the lowest peak time? A conceptual question which system has the lowest peak time tell me which of these systems is having the lowest peak time everybody tell me which of these systems is having the lowest peak time come on everybody tell me the answer here quickly Yeah, correct answer. All right. Now, dekho, lowest peak time. We all know what should be the formula for the peak time. Peak time is given by pi by omega d and this will be lowest for omega d being the highest. Denominator has to be highest. And what is omega d? Okay. Omega d, the, the y coordinate, the... Uh, imaginary part right so this will have the highest omega d because the poles are given by minus alpha plus minus j omega d alpha is same for all alpha is same for all this one is the highest answer is system number four many of you have given the correct answer only very good okay many of you have given the correct answer okay so it is the omega d is the system number four where the omega d is highest okay done 
नेक्स्ट अच्छा इफ आई आस्ट कंसिडरिंग टू परसेंट क्राइटीरिया अंडर डैम सिस्टम कंसिडरिंग टू परसेंट क्राइटीरिया विच सिस्टम हैज द हाइएस्ट और द लोएस्ट सेटलिंग टाइम विच सिस्टम हैज द हाइएस्ट और लोएस्ट सेटलिंग टाइम वॉट इज द कमेंट ऑन सेटलिंग टाइम हेयर सो गाइज सेटलिंग टाइम इज गिवेन बाई द फॉर्मूला फोर बाय जीटा ओमेगा एंड बिकॉज इट इज अंडर डैम वाई इट इज अंडर डैम बिकॉज ऑल द पोल्स आर कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट इन द लेफ्ट हाफ प्लेन सो इट इज स्ट्रिक्टली अंडर डैम एंड फोर बाय जीटा ओमेगा एन जीटा ओमेगा एन इज एल्फा तो इट इज फोर बाय एल्फा बट ऑल द फोर पोल्स पैरल टू बाई एक्सिस दैट मीन देव द सेम रियल पार्ट सेम वैल्यू ऑफ एल्फा ऑल ऑफ देम हैव द सेम वैल्यू ऑफ एल्फा this part is minus alpha right this part is minus alpha so alpha is same so settling time for both the system we cannot define highest lowest that is going to be the same actually that is going to be the same actually theek hai chalo done hai chalo one more concept yahan pe add kar dete hain which of the system as हाइएस्ट जीटा या क्या पूछा था लोएस्ट पीक टाइम तो लोएस्ट जीटा टेल मी विच ऑफ द सिस्टम हैज द लोएस्ट जीटा टेल मी लोएस्ट जीटा विच ऑफ द सिस्टम हैज लोएस्ट ओमेगा एन टेल मी ना ओमेगा एन इट इज For under dam system, it is also the look, uh, distance of the poles from the distance of the poles from the origin. So this distance is the lowest because this height is the lowest. Base sabi ka same hai, right? So we need to calculate this hypotenuse. So height matter karegi yahan pe. So the answer is system number one for the lowest omega n. This is system number one. Clear, clear from the distance, right? The lowest zeta. Now zeta is given by the also given by the formula cosine of phi. And zeta is lowest. Cos phi inverse chalega. Zeta is lowest, so phi should be highest. Zeta is lowest, so phi should be highest. For which of them the phi is highest? System number four. The system number four. Correct. System number four. Okay, so this answer will be the system number four. Done? Eh? The phi highest that is for system number four. Chalo, clear, all clear. Moving ahead to the next case, then guys. Moving ahead to the next case, and that is equal to the steady state errors. Let us also quickly come to the steady state error. Okay, in a standard block diagram, I first define the actuating signal. Okay, that is applied to the plant here, and this is generally equal to the rs minus cs hs if nothing specified okay you know if we don't know what input output generally is if a specific uh, particular system is given then the other thing but if we generally don't know what input output is a general system given to you so in that normal situations we define the error okay we define the error as known as error as known as the difference between the reference input and the obtained output that is given by rt minus ct that is given by the rt minus ct or rs minus cs right so if the system is non unity feedback the actuating signal is not equal to error signal but for unity feedback it is going to be error signal the first let us discuss the uh, unity feedback case then we will come to the non unity case right this one is non unity feedback okay first let us come to the unity feedback case okay so that the error signal is clearly obtained as r minus c okay if i come to the unity feedback system that is the r minus c and we define we get the error signal the simple block diagram technique rs upon 1 plus gs by applying the block diagram technique what is more important is the steady state error and steady state error by the final value theorem limit s tending to 0 s into es it's a typo error here it's not es limit t tending to infinity es will be written as limit s tending to 0 s tending to 0 s multiplied by es and putting down the value we get limit s tending to 0 srs is divided by the 1 plus gs s into rs is divided by what is divided by 1 plus gs we also define to calculate a quick revision guys and ekdam detail mein derive nahi kar rahe okay to uh, simplify the calculation process of steady state error uh, we define the specific constant for special type of inputs like if i talk about the step input 
when the input is the step input we define the static positional error coefficient static positional error coefficient that is given by kp and the formula is limit of s tending to 0 gs limit s tending to 0 gs if the system is fed with the ramp error with the ramp input we define the velocity error coefficient kv which is given by the formula limit of s tending to 0 s multiplied by gs and if the system is fed with the parabolic input, we define the static acceleration error coefficient and that Ka is defined, defined by limit of s tending to 0 s square gs. <coughs> limit of s tending to 0 s square gs, right? Limit of s tending to 0 the s square gs. Now, what is the steady state error conclusion, direct conclusion for various types of system? First, let us see the direct questions and then we will see some uh, other indirect questions also. What is the steady state error for the various types of system? So, there can be, you know, how do you define the type of the system? The type is defined as? It is the number of poles of number of poles of gs at origin for unity feedback system number of poles of gs at origin for unity feedback system right so if in general i write down gs as some constant k1 plus st1 some simple zero terms divided by s raised to the power n 1 plus sta some simple pole terms so they can be second order poles as well okay n will be known as the type because based on the value of n you will decide how many poles are there at the origin it can be s power 0 s power 1 anything okay now if it is a type 0 system okay now these are the direct conclusions let's uh, formulate this all together better all right like this slide shows that after the calculations that for a type 0 system when you apply step input you get the uh, error as 1 upon 1 plus k where kp is equal to k in the standard form it is not necessary that the question is always in the standard form right 1 upon k is the standard form better remember the error is given by 1 upon 1 plus kp okay but the error for ramp and parabolic is infinity right then the second slide for type 1 then for type 2 better we will summarize in one single slide let us just put down as a matrix let me just put down these numbers in the form of a matrix Sorry. Okay, you can specify the type and the input here, right? Let me specify the input here. Let me specify the type here. We know that the type of the system commonly can be you know with questions can be type 0 type 1 type 2 if it is other type we can solve again by the basics and the inputs that is commonly given to you is the step the ramp and parabolic input right now dear if it is a type 0 system if it is a type 0 system and you apply the step input you get the error which is finite important point to note it is finite but for ramp and parabolic the error is infinity as the calculations have suggested that for ramp and parabolic the error is going to be the infinity the error is going to be infinity okay if it is type 1 system it is going to give the finite error Achha, how much is that finite 1 upon kv here 1 upon 1 plus kp right but if the step input is applied 0 parabolic input applied is infinity Right. So, if the degree of the input increases, it's going to be infinity. Similarly, for type 2, when you apply parabolic, you get the finite error. That is 1 upon Ka. But if you apply the input of lower degree, that is step or ramp, you get it as 0, 0. Right. So, all the diagonals will be finite. If you increase the degree of uh, input, the error is infinity. If you take it as a lower degree input, the error is 0. The error is 0. Where degree I am uh, simply defining in terms of the Laplace transform like 1 upon s, 1 upon s square, 1 upon s cube. That is what is the unit step, unit ramp and unit parabolic. These are the results for unit step. 
ये भी ध्यान रखना राइट दीज आर द रिजल्ट फॉर यूनिट स्टेप यूनिट रैम्प एंड यूनिट पैराबोलिक इफ इट इज If it is suppose twice of step or thrice of ramp, then we'll modify the calculations accordingly. This is what you should directly know. Okay, now based on this direct, पहले इस पे आते हैं, then फिर non-unity feedback पे भी आते हैं. Consider the negative feedback closed loop system whose open loop transfer function is given to you. Okay, whose open loop transfer function is given to you. The steady state error of the closed loop system to unit step reference input. Okay, consider the negative feedback, you negative unity feedback. यहाँ पे let me mention unity feedback. Okay, because directly open loop transfer function is given. Now the transfer function itself is clear. GSHS, it is only GS given. So that also you can conclude that it is unity feedback. Okay, what is the steady state error due to unit step reference input? So what is the type of the system, everybody? What should be the type of the system? How many poles are there at the origin? Denominator may, what is the S power N case? There is no pole at origin. It is the S power 0. So this turns out to be a type 0 system. This is what this turns out to be a type 0 system. And the error for step input. Type 0 system. Hai na? So for error for step input is definitely going to be finite. But what is that finite? You have to calculate and tell me. Na? So it is 1 upon 1 plus kp. 1 upon 1 plus kp. So dear, what should be the value of the kp? The kp is given by the formula. Limit s tending to 0 gs. Sabse pehle ye formula hi humne dekh liye the. Now, when you put s tending to 0 on gs, you get 2 is divided by the 10 right or uh, that is simply 1 by 5 clear that is simply the 1 by 5 now substitute that value and what is the steady state error is 1 upon 1 plus 1 by 5 or equivalently it becomes 5 by 6 or 0 0.83 would be the answer 0 0.83 would be the answer clear eh? the final answer would be 0 0.83 Right, everybody? Chalo. 5 by 6. The final answer. The coefficient is 1 by 5 and then we have the final answer. Achha. Okay, sir. Sometimes it can be a very simple question. Just taking a gate question as reference. Okay. The open loop transfer function is S plus 1 upon S power P, S plus 2, S plus 3, where P is an integer. Is connected in unity feedback configuration as shown in the figure. Given that the steady state error is 0 for unit step input is 6 for you... Uh, Steady state error is 0 for step input and is 6 for ramp input. What is the value of the parameter? Very simple, direct, conclusive question. The error is 0 for step input. Unity feedback hai, very clearly. Okay. And it is equal to 6 for unit ramp input. And it is equal to 6 for unit ramp input. So, if it is finite... If it is finite for ramp input, automatically it will be 0 for step input, but that happens only for a type 1 system. If it is finite for ramp input, so type of the system should be 1. And what is the type of the system? S power P. So, P is the number of poles at origin, so it should have one pole at origin. P equal to the 1. Clear? Sometimes it can be direct observation conclusive question. Direct observation conclusive question. Next question, dear, a MSQ question for you. Everybody, let us handle the MSQ question and come up with the answer. This is also going to relate the damping ratio and all those things. Okay, damping ratio bhi aega yaha pe. Take it out. The forward part transfer function of a unity feedback system is K upon S power N S plus A. The system has 10% overshoot. Now, this is the first data. And KV, velocity error coefficient is 100. Which of the following is or are true? Which of the following is or are true? Okay, yes, Raghu. Which of the following is or are true? The system is type 1, damping ratio kya hoga, A ka value, K ka value. What are the systems correct? Definitely, definitely the velocity error coefficient is non-zero. Is a finite non-zero. This itself, velocity error coefficient, which is finite non-zero, comes up only in the case of type 1. Comes up only in the case of type 1. Ye conclusive ho gaya? This is conclusive very clearly. So, this is type 1. So, option number A to at least true hai. At least true hai. Then we need to check into the other options as well. Okay, damping ratio will be obtained by overshoot. Okay, and the value of K and A. Ocha. For the value of K and A, let us use the KV actually, right? What is KV? It is the limit of S tending to 0. It is the limit of S tending to 0. S into GS. 
टाइप वन है अच्छा ये भी नोट कर लीजिए इफ इट इज टाइप वन दैट मीन्स एन का वैल्यू वन सब्सटीट्यूट करना है यहाँ पे सो लिमिट ऑफ एस टेंडिंग टू जीरो एस मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जी एस वे जी एस एस के अपॉन एस पावर वन एस प्लस ए ठीक है द के वी इज इक्वल टू वन हंड्रेड एस टू एस कैंसिल पुट डाउन द एस टेंडिंग टू जीरो यू गेट के बाय ए सो देर इज द रिलेशन बिटवीन के एंड ए दैट इज के इज इक्वल टू वन हंड्रेड ए नॉट गॉट द वैल्यू बट वेरी क्लियरली वन ऑफ दीज टू इज इन करेक्ट या मे बी बोथ आर इन करेक्ट आई डोंट नो बट दीज बोथ कैन बी साइमल्टेनियसली करेक्ट बिकॉज के शुड बी इक्वल टू द हंड्रेड ए दैट इज मिसिंग हेयर वॉट के शुड बी इक्वल टू द हंड्रेड ए ओके सो ये मिसिंग है यहां पर सो लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट केस देन okay now next what is the case you can use first you can calculate the zeta by the overshoot concept right the overshoot the percentage overshoot is given to you as 10% so what is the overshoot value the fractional value will be 0.1 and then again i can first calculate the zeta dr by the same formula log of overshoot whole square divided by log ln mp whole square plus the pi square whole under root of this let's calculate this value quickly dear and that is equal to 0.59 okay that is the value of zeta 0.59 acha zeta is also one of the question so yeah correct It's approximately 0.6. Yeah, not much a difference. It is approximately 0.6. Yes, that is approximately 0.6 only. 0.6. लेके चल लेते हैं इसको. Perfect answer. So option number B is also correct. Option number B is also correct. What about the value of K and A? What should be the value of K and A? Everybody. <coughs> What should be the value of Kn? Now zeta again. Now we'll go back to the characteristic equation now. Right? What is the characteristic equation? One plus k by s, s plus. Kitna hai? S plus a is equal to zero. So we'll have s square plus a s plus k equal to the zero. Right? So from here, dear, from here, the value of k is omega n square, and then 2 zeta omega n is equal to a. Zeta का वैल्यू आ चुका है तो 2 zeta omega n omega n can be written as under root of k and that is equal to the a. So one more relation between k and a is coming. Okay, so 1.2 root k is equal to a. Right, so 1.44 k will be equal to the a square and also we have k is equal to 100 a. K is equal to the 100A. Put down the K as 100A. Right. So 1.44 into A is equal to A square into 100A. I'm sorry. Into 100A is A square. So either A will be zero. That's not possible. So either A is 144. A 144 आ गया. So what is K? It is 100A. So 14400. So K and A values are obtained here. The values of k and a are now obtained, so the k is equal to a is one forty four perfect one forty four ही निकाला ना या correct this is one forty four but this thirty seven three thirty seven eight hundred this is incorrect so correct answer for this MSQ question is the correct answer for the MSQ question is the three options a b and c. It is going to be the three options. That is the A and the B and the C. It is the A and the B and C. Done. Cool. Next question on your screen. The next question coming up on your screen. Here it is. The unit step response of a unity feedback system with the open loop transfer function GSHS equal to k upon s plus one whole square s plus two is shown in the figure. What should be the value of two? A gate ka question liya hai yahan pe. Now this question is talking about unit step response, okay, of a feedback system. And when you calculate, it's actually going to be a third order system, okay. It's going to be a third order system when you calculate its characteristic equation s square into s s cube, right? Okay. It's not even a second order that you can use some underdam formula and all. Okay. Either we'll go to you know solving the transient and time response analysis for third order that can be lengthy. But what is one simple thing that we can use here? 
ओके यूनिट स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स यूनिट स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स दैट मीन्स द इनपुट आर टी इज इक्वल टू वन अप्लाइड ओके द इनपुट आर टी इज इक्वल टू वन अप्लाइड बट वॉट इज द फाइनल वैल्यू ऑफ द आउटपुट टू लुक इन टू दिस आउटपुट इज सेटलिंग एट द वैल्यू ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट एट कैन आई से आउटपुट सेटल्स एट द वैल्यू ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट एट राइट दिस इज द स्टडी स्टेट वैल्यू ऑफ द आउटपुट दैट इज जीरो पॉइंट एट सो माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स वॉट इज द स्टडी स्टेट एर दैट इज वन माइनस जीरो पॉइंट एट एट द स्टडी स्टेट ऑल्सो आउटपुट डजेंट सेटल टू वन एंड देर इज द स्टडी स्टेट एर दैट इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट टू there is the steady state error which is equal to what which is equal to 0.2 right which one murli second order why not include second order pole in the characteristic equation everything it's included what, no it's a second order characteristic equation only murli right acha you have removed it okay chalo yeah so the steady state error this question looks like a you know a wave a step response a response a timing analysis question but it's actually solvable very easily by the steady state error and now if you look into the gs what is the type of the system now unity feedback hai so i can clearly go and define the type as the number of poles of gshs at origin right because unity feedback hai so the number of poles of gse ho jayega and that actually becomes a type 0 that actually becomes type 0 no no it's how it's type 2 it's type 0 it is type 0 number of poles what is the number of poles at origin no no there is no s power n case here type 0 case here. right type 0 case here. so if it is the type 0 case na dear steady state error for step input should be finite which is 1 upon 1 plus kp which is 1 upon 1 plus kp right theek hai to 1 upon 1 sorry 1 upon 1 plus kp is 0.2 yahi to maine yahan pe bataya right so 1 plus kp is 1 upon 0.2 that is equal to the 5 so the kp should be equal to how much the kp should be equal to the 4 dear what should be the value of kp now what is the kp limit of s tending to 0 of gs let us put down that gs k is divided by s plus 1 whole square s plus 2 and this kp is Equal to four, right? So k upon one square into two is equal to four. <laughs> Just a second. One upon one plus k p. The error is point two. Perfect. And k upon s plus one whole square is multiplied by s plus two is equal to four. Correct. Okay. So k turns out to be four two is a eight. Yeah. The value of k is equal to the eight. Clear, everyone? The good question uh, to be solved by the error technique. Tell me. that part is a good question so some good questions which we need to specifically discuss i am taking non unity feedback case if the system is non unity feedback then what is to be done here if the system is non unity feedback just a moment ha huh, what does mulli say in the characteristic equation of type 2 system same as type 1 system in last question with same calculation see characteristic equation of type 2 system same as type 1 system in the last question which no i am not able to get exactly please specify murli we have taken the clear type and clear characteristic equation maybe just uh, modify your language and explain it to me yes guys so as i told you if it is non unity feedback this signal in general not equal to the error signal because i told you unless and until specified okay with some parameters i don't know what in if they sometimes give their input you know is some uh, voltage or output is this some frequency that we desire then we can match up what is the error what is the what we want what is the reference given but here nothing is mentioned by default so we define the error as the difference between reference input and the obtained output by default so by default we define the error for unity feedback system right if it is non unity feedback system this node generally doesn't describe the error signal so what is the method we convert this non unity feedback into we convert the system into equivalent unity feedback system sirf itna hi karna hai 
कन्वर्ट द नॉन यूनिटी फीडबैक इन टू इक्ट यूनिटी फीडबैक अच्छा वॉट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ दिस इक्ट टू सिस्टम आर इक्ट इफ दे सेम ट्रांसफर फंक्शन टू सिस्टम आर इक्ट दे हैव द सेम ट्रांसफर फंक्शन सो डी आर वेरी सिंपल वॉट इज द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन ऑन द लेफ्ट इज जी अपॉन वन प्लस जी एच नाउ वेन आई कन्वर्ट टू इक्ट यूनिटी फीडबैक फीडबैक इज यूनिटी बट द फॉरवर्ड पार्ट गेन इज जी सपोज फॉरवर्ड पार्ट गेन इज इक्वल टू द जी ओके जी equivalent forward path gain so we just have to compare both of them and you get a clear cut formula that i will write down directly now ge after solving from here will be obtained as g divided by the 1 plus gh minus g g divided by 1 plus gh minus g right G is divided by one plus G H minus G, and then after calculating the forward path gain, you can apply the same techniques of error. Now have a look into this question and answer. It's a non-unity feedback question. What is the steady state error for unit step input? Tell me. See, uh, are you talking about the characteristic equation one plus GSH is equal to zero, Vishwanathan? Then that is same for all type, right? Uh, in which question? Let me just check up your doubt exactly what you are referring to. Uh, guys, everybody note into this. Which question you are telling, Vishwanathan? Are you talking about this particular question? Characteristic equation for any system is always one plus GSH is equal to zero, but type is related to the concept of steady state error. From the characteristic equation, we primarily determine the order. and there is a difference between order and type morally so specify a doubt with respect to this question if you have anything okay okay ha ah, this one na acha iska bhi last aap bol rahe hain what is the last question of this ha ah, tell me what is the doubt here even though this question type depends on the value of p p can be different but characteristic equation of course the order will also be affected if i change the type okay same characteristic equation kaise hoga order will also be affected na if the type changes order will also be affected suppose here the answer was p equal to 1 if it is s power 1 there will be a different characteristic equation if it is s power 2 there will be a different characteristic equation also so i'm not telling that it will have the same characteristic equation no not at all i'm not telling that we'll have the same characteristic equation oh, where is that question gone dear where is that question gone let's come back to the question quickly yeah let's start solving the non unity feedback gauge quickly now okay for the system shown in the figure what is the steady state error for unit step input come on guys answer me anybody and then let's take up more doubts okay let's answer this so first what we have to find is the ge first let us convert into the unity feedback ge by the formula G is the forward path gain of the equivalent unity feedback system, so that will be given by the formula. Hundred is divided by S S plus ten is divided by one plus hundred by S S plus ten multiplied by H that is one upon S plus five minus G hundred by S S plus ten. Correct. Yeah. So uh, if I multiply by S S plus ten throughout. S S plus ten S plus five से multiply कर देते हैं actually तो hundred S plus five the denominator will have S if I multiply that is going to be S square plus ten five fifteen plus fifty plus S uh, S plus ten S plus five multiplied so only hundred here minus hundred into S plus five will also come okay so let me simplify this G E this is going to be obtained as the hundred S plus five is divided by the s cube plus 15 s square plus 50 s minus 100 s so that is minus 50 s overall 50 s minus 100 s that is the minus 50 s okay and then and then you are left with 100 minus 500 so that is going to be the minus 400 actually that is going to be the minus 400 actually Right, so hundred s plus five upon s cube plus fifteen s square minus fifty s minus four hundred. That should be the value of the GE. That should be the value of GE. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. That should be taken as the GE. Correct. 
Now, when I open it as a characteristic equation, all coefficients will be positive, no issues, right? So, what is the type of this system? What is the type of this system? As a measure of safety, one more thing I will tell you. Kabhi -kabhi ne kya ek special case aa jata hai. As a measure of safety, if I write down the character, type is 0, if I write down the characteristic equation, na, that will come up to be S cube. Just have a look into this. S cube plus 15 S square minus 50 plus 100, that will be the 50 S. That will be the 50 S and that is minus 400 plus 500. That is the 100 equal to the 0. Equal to the 0. Now, dear, remember, I hope you remember one small technique. I hope you remember if it is a cubic equation, A S cube plus B S square plus C S plus D. You can either go for the RH criteria to confirm the stability, right? Or you can have a direct shortcut, especially for cubic burgers, that is important. Just one glimpse of that S cube, S square, S power 1, S power 0. This becomes AC and this is the alternate coefficient BD. Although Routh orbits also will, uh, will be covered for you separately. So this is the... This is the BC minus AD divided by B 0. S power 0 pe aa jayenge. So that is just equal to D and then 0. Okay. So for stability, what do you want for stability? For stability, I assume ABCD by default positive. So if A and B are positive, definitely BC minus AD is also positive. Right. So BC must be greater than the AD. BC equal to AD will be marginally stable. BC equal to AD will be marginally stable. This will represent marginally stable. BC less than AD will represent unstable. So for stability, BC should be greater than the AD. That is the product of means greater than the product of extreme. So what is happening here? 15 into 50. Greater than 1 into 100. 15 into 50 is greater than 1 into 100. Yes, the system is stable because if the system is unstable, the output will be unbounded and, and, and then the output will be unbounded. Okay. System error will also be unbounded. Here the system is bounded. So you can apply your regular techniques now. So let me just come and complete the calculation here. So what should be the uh, type? Type is 0. So what is the KP? Limit of S tending to 0, GES, GES, so this will come to 100 is multiplied by 5, S ki jage 0 rakke, divided by the minus 400, okay, so that is minus 5 by 4, that is minus 5 by 4, on your error will be 1 upon 1 plus KP, KP is minus 5 by 4, so that is 4 is divided by minus 1, your study state error is minus 4, it can be negative, not a big deal, the study state error is equal to the minus 4, right? Nirm, chalo, now let me take some doubts as well. Guys, okay? Minus 58, S tending to 0, put karke 0 ho jayega na? No, that is for second order. It cannot be same for type 1, type 2, morally. That's what I'm telling. S square plus 2 zeta omega and S plus omega and square is for second order. If it is second order, order is different, type is different, Vishwanathan. Yehi mein aapko bol raho. That is there for second order. Okay. Sometimes type 2 can also be second order. Sometimes type 1 can also be second order. Aray bhai, aisa dekh lo na. If I give you something of this kind, 1 upon S square plus 50. Okay. When you solve it up, this is also going to be second order. When I give you 1 upon S, S plus 10. When you solve this, this is also second order, but this is type 1, this is type 0. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Order is different, type is different. First fit that thing into the mind, Vishwanathan. Right. 1 plus GSH is normal. Or kya kiya hai? 1 plus GSH is. Na na, Yashwant, are you talking about the gate 2014 question? Or one of the questions that I have discussed, Yashwant, or one of the gate 2014 questions, I will tell you answer bata dunga aapko. don't worry. Yashwant. Yes, tell me Yashwant. Chalo guys, let's move ahead to the next. Let's, now guys, why I have done this calculation, I am just going to explain you. Dhyan dena. Why I have done this calculation in the back end. I am going to explain you this. I am going to explain you this. Let me take the relevant example here. Have a look into this. Find a steady state error due to step input. Find a steady state error due to the step input. Tell me. Find a steady state error due to step input. Now, everybody please look. You are going to, it's a unity feedback system and you can comment that it's a type 2 system. Correct. 
नो प्रॉब्लम इट्स अ टाइप टू सिस्टम ठीक है द स्टडी स्टेट एरर द स्टडी स्टेट एरर फॉर स्टेप इनपुट यू विल पुट इट एज जीरो टाइप टू सिस्टम है ना टाइप टू सिस्टम है तो स्टडी स्टेट एरर इज जीरो फॉर स्टेप एंड रैम्प इट इज फाइनाइट फॉर पैराबोलिक राइट यू पुट इट एज जीरो आंसर आ गया सिंपल टेल मी आंसर इज सिंपल हेयर आंसर इज सिंपल हेयर this is wrong this is the wrong answer for the question so yes when that is what in that question they specified that this is the error i told you know for certain systems depending on the input output what exactly the input you have taken whether and we also need to match the units correspondingly so we define that actuating signal as error if not by default if there is no input output if there is a general system i don't know what the system is doing what is the input what is the output whether it is voltage whether it is current whether it is some frequency so we generally take it as r minus c if they mentioned you have to take it that that note yashwan and they mentioned in that question you are talking about gate 14 question i remember where they mentioned that error signal placed at the output of this summing point it was mentioned clearly as any directly they have taken they have mentioned also in the question that read that question once again okay what is the steady state error for step input it is zero but no that is wrong answer now why this is wrong that is why why i have done that previous calculation why i have done that isko samajhte hain yahan pe bhai yahan pe dhyan dena yahan pe dhyan dena what is the characteristic equation 1 plus 1 plus 10 divided by s square equal to 0 so s square plus 10 equal to 0 now tell me dear now tell me dear what is the what is the nature of the system here is right There is no zeta omega in term. That means zeta is zero. Omega in to a jayega. Zeta is zero. The system is undamped. Dear, if the system is undamped na, if the system is undamped, what is the steady state output? It doesn't settle to any particular value. So okay. So steady state output itself is indeterminate. Okay. If this is my output waveform. if this is my output waveform my steady state output css my steady state output css that itself is indeterminate we don't call it as unbounded or infinity also it is something which can't be determined right it is actually between it is actually between 0 to 2 मतलब अगर स्टैंडर्ड वैल्यू लेके चले तो इट वाज बिटवीन जीरो टू टू इट कैन बी बिटवीन समथिंग एल्स आल्सो राइट सो व्हाट अबाउट द स्टडी स्टेट एरर नाउ स्टडी स्टेट एरर इज 1 माइनस css assuming unit step input so that also can't be determined so here the steady state error is also indeterminate dear here the steady state error is also indeterminate are you getting it the steady state error is also known as the indeterminate the steady state error is also indeterminate cool so if you take it from the direct analysis it's zero now what is the failure here chalo ek aur question lete then i'll conclude what is the failure here why this is wrong let's take one more question here find a steady state error for the step input having the open loop transfer function 10 upon s s minus 1 to once again once again i will start speaking sir this is type 1 system no problem it is type 1 i don't deny that unity feedback and number of poles of gs at origin is 1 it is type 1 i don't deny then you will come and start saying sir because it is type 1 and the question is for step input the steady state error for step input will be zero that is what you are going to say next okay and next you know my answer also next once again you know my answer that this is wrong that this is wrong 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 क्लियर है दिस इज रॉन्ग ठीक है जी वाई बिकॉज इफ आई डू द बिहेवियर एनालिसिस ऑफ द सिस्टम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इक्वेशन है वन अपॉन वन प्लस टेन डिवाइडेड बाय एस एस माइनस वन इक्वल टू जीरो एस स्क्वायर माइनस एस प्लस टेन इक्वल टू जीरो गिविंग यू वेरी क्लियरली Negative value of zeta and the system is going to be unstable. What happened for negative value of zeta? Output was unbounded, tending to infinity. Steady state me, right? The output at the steady state will be tending to the infinity. Will be tending to what? Will be tending to infinity. So is the steady state error. 
so the steady state error here is also going to tend to infinity okay maybe plus or minus infinity won't matter nahi karega answer will be unbounded here the steady state error will be unbounded clear so guys so guys we have to be very watchful sometimes that if the system is itself unstable unstable system hai yahan pe right or the system is marginally stable the conclusions of steady state error cannot be defined why the simple reason is the steady state error methods that formula that i have directly given you come up from the final value theorem right and final value theorem final value theorem is not applicable for unbounded systems right uh, Shiva, that you have to just catch the graph of the output because input is fixed at one. The output can be negative also out of phase also. That's the only thing. The output can be out of phase with respect to input and that is why the error can be negative. Okay. So, steady state error is unbounded. Clear everybody? Clear everybody? That is why in that previous question of uh, non-unity feedback, I just verified that point. Okay. I just verified that point. Achha. Now, dear tell me now dear tell me one answer the open loop transfer function of a unity feedback system is k upon s plus 1 s plus 2 s plus 3 what is the minimum value of steady state error due to unit step input now what is this minimum value of steady state error you decide and tell me you decide and tell me Hanji huh, guys, tell me. Now, what is the minimum value of K for the error due to unit step input? Okay. Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Ab dekho. Clearly, the open loop transfer function is given s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus 3. The poles are minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. There is no pole at origin. So, clearly it is a type 0 case, dear. This is clearly known as the type 0 case. Now, if this is the type 0 case, what is my steady state error? My steady state error is given by 1 upon 1 plus kp. Mera steady state error kitna hua? 1 upon 1 plus kp. That is the answer or not? Yes. It is 1 upon 1 plus kp. Now, if this is the 1 upon 1 plus kp, if this is 1 upon 1 plus kp, okay, kp yahan se nikal lenge. So, what should be the kp? Okay, let me first focus the kp from here. So, kp also we know is limit of s tending to 0 gs. Limit s tending to 0 gs. So, that is k upon 1 into 2 into 3. Okay, so that is k by 6. Okay, steady state error will be 1 upon 1 plus k by 6 or that will become 6 divided by k plus 6. Now, what is the meaning of this? 6 is divided by the k plus 6. Okay, it is 6 upon k plus 6. This is known as the 6 is divided by the k plus 6. Steady state error. 6 is divided by k plus 6. Now, what is the minimum steady state error? Dekho, yahan pe likhte steady state error is obtained as 6 is divided by the k plus 6. 
वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ मिनिमम इट कैन बी मिनिमम इफ के इज मैक्सिमम सर वॉट इज द मैक्सिमम के कैन आई टेक इन्फिनिटी ऑल्सो सो दैट एर बिकम जीरो नहीं ना हाउ टू डिफाइन द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ के द स्टडी स्टेट एर विल बी बाउंडेड वैलिड इफ एंड ओनली इफ दिस स्टडी स्टेट एर विल बी एप्लीकेबल और बाउंडेड इफ एंड ओनली इफ यू हैव अ बी आई बी ओ स्टेबल केस राइट इफ द सिस्टम इज बी आई बी ओ स्टेबल अदरवाइज नॉट राइट अदरवाइज नॉट ओके सो वॉट इज द मिनिमम वैल्यू ऑफ स्टडी स्टेट एर तो मिनिमम वैल्यू ऑफ एर ने के को मैक्सिमाइज करेंगे okay now how to maximize the k so i will go back to the characteristic equation for stability characteristic equation will be 1 plus k divided by the s plus 1 s plus 2 s plus 3 1 plus k upon s plus 1 s plus 2 s plus 3 equal to the 0 now when i solve this that is going to be s cube plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 6 s square 2 and 8 plus 3 11s plus 1 2 3 6 Plus k equal to zero. This is the characteristic equation for stability. I just told you, na RH criteria will be discussed. Okay, but just what is the condition required for stability? That six into eleven should be the product of means should be greater than the product of extremes. Right? From here you will get that k is less than sixty. Sixty-six minus six k is less than the sixty. The value of k should be less than sixty. Worst case, marginally stable. Worst case, the system could be marginally stable. Worst case, k equal to sixty, considering marginally stable case. Okay. So worst case, k equal to sixty for stability, actually less than sixty. But what is the value? Just less than sixty in a continuous range. We can't define it, so we'll take it as sixty only. And then that is the maximum value of k. That is the maximum value of k. So, what is the minimum steady state error of the system? What is the minimum steady state error of the system? That is six divided by sixty plus six, and that is six is divided by sixty-six, or that is one by eleven. That is known as the one by eleven. Minimum steady state error is known as the one by eleven. Clear, everybody? Minimum steady state error is one by eleven. All right, dear. The minimum steady state error is one by eleven. ठीक है, done. चलो, next case then. Okay. Let's take some more good. थोड़ा सा और MSQ का practice यहाँ पे कर लेते हैं. अच्छा, let's take the next question also. Okay, for the unity feedback system shown, the transfer function is for unity feedback table. Now guys, uh, I verified this. I'll mention there, है ना? Otherwise, there will be a lot of time wasted in checking the stability. You can just trust here for the unity feedback stable system as shown below. Assume it to be stable. I am telling you. Okay, the transfer function is given to you. Twenty s plus three s plus four s plus eight upon s square s plus two s plus fifteen. If the input is thirty t square, what is the steady state error for this question? If the input is thirty t square, now what is this? This is clearly type two system. Okay, unity feedback and number of poles of GS at origin will be coming up as two. It is a type two system. This is the type two system. Now, if this is type two system, what is the steady state error if the input is thirty t square? If the input is thirty t square, so you have to be very careful. And first of all, type two and a K V. Itta to pata yes, that error for parabolic is going to be finite, and for that I am going to calculate the K A. What is the K A? Limit of x tending to zero. S square into G S, right? So S square, S square will get cancelled when you multiply. Then S tending to zero, twenty into three into four into eight is divided by the two into the fifteen, and that is going to be equal to you get sixty, sixty by thirty-two, eight eight sixty-four. This looks like sixty-four. एक बार चेक कर लेना कैलकुलेशन, right? Sorry, हाँ करेक्ट है, करेक्ट है. This looks like sixty-four. ठीक है? Just verify the calculation one. Okay. Now this is the K. What is the input here? What is the input here? The input here is given by thirty t square. The input here is given by the thirty t square. Or that can be written as thirty. Sorry. That can be written as the sixty t square by two. Right. 
right? 60 t square by 2 and that is 60 times unit parabolic input. Unit parabolic input. So, dear, for this case, what is going to be your steady state error? Normally, for a unit parabolic input, you write down the steady state error as 1 upon k for the parabolic input of type applied to type 2 system. Applied to the type 2 system. Okay. Now, the input is amplified by 60. Okay. So, the output is also amplified by 60 because it is a linear system and the error will also be amplified by 60. Simple definition. Na? Simple concept. So, 60 divided by k. K hum ne nikala 64. So, 60 by 64 or that is the 15 by 16. Numerical answer type question. Let me answer the value quickly. So, this is going to be 0 0.9375. This is the 0 0.9375. The correct answer here is 0 0.9375. 0 0.9375. Done. Okay, 0 0.9375. 0.9375. Now, let's take one more MSQ question here quickly. Yes. A good MSQ question based on the RLC circuit again. A step voltage is applied to an underdamped series RLC circuit in which R is variable. Which of the following is or are true? Which of the following is or are true? Tell me. Right. Yes, Vishwanathan. Okay. For finite duration, that is bounded. Uh, finite duration. Uh, steady state error for finite duration signal. Right. No, then if it is, if you are talking about finite duration signal morally, then you can directly go with the basics of the steady state error limit S tending to 0, SRS upon 1 plus GS. It's SRS upon 1 plus GS. Directly you should apply that. Okay. If you are talking about a finite duration signal. Right. So, guys, uh, MSQ question for you once again because, you know, we are expecting this year MSQs. So, MSQs practice kar lete hain. Okay. Now, an underdamped series RLC circuit. Underdamped series RLC circuit. I have already made you the concept of this revised earlier. Right. Okay. Now, uh, see the steady state voltage across C, the frequency of oscillation across C, that is very clear that we are going to consider the output across the C. Okay. So, let me define this as the output voltage as the voltage across the capacitor as the voltage across the capacitor as what as the voltage across the capacitor and we know its transfer function as well we know that the transfer function obtained here is 1 upon s square lc plus src plus 1 okay that transfer function which is the Ratio of the output voltage is divided by the input voltage, right? Also, we have calculated zeta that turns out to be R by 2 root over C by L and omega and turns out to be 1 upon root LC. This is what already we have just revised earlier. Now, based on this, what are the options correct? If R is increased, steady state voltage across R will be reduced, across C will be reduced. Tell me, is this right or wrong? Steady state voltage across C, that is the steady state output. That is the steady state output. Bhai, option number A pe agar aayenge hum. Option number A pe aayenge. What is the V naught S? Okay, it is a unit step input. Step voltage is applied. So, VIT is 1 and hence its Laplace transform will be 1 by S. Its Laplace transform will be 1 by S. So, this is equal to the limit of S tending to 0 limit uh, sorry, steady state let me generally route input 1 by s into the transfer function okay now what is the steady state value limit t tending to infinity v naught t that is the steady state voltage 
that is the steady state voltage and that is given by limit s tending to 0 s into v naught s final value theorem and when you solve s tending to 0 s into v naught s s s will get cancelled s tending to 0 1 upon 1 this is constant 1 because it is an under damp now you can directly put the argument because it is under damp the final value is going to settle to 1 for a second order system we know the results right so whether you decrease or increase the r steady state voltage will not be reduced will not be increased right so this is a false option it will not be reduced it will not be increased it is fixed at one if r is increased the frequency of transient oscillation the frequency of transient oscillation that is equal to the omega d the frequency of transient oscillation to b option go dekhing it here what is the b option omega d which will be given by the formula omega n under root of 1 minus zeta square now what you are doing you are increasing the r Increasing the R will not change omega n but will change the zeta. Right. Aapne kya bola? R ko increase kiya. R ko increase kiya to zeta increase hua. Right. But omega n remains to be same because omega n doesn't depend on the resistance. So, what is the mutual effect of these two? Zeta increased. Zeta is in the subtraction form. So, omega d will happen what? Omega d will decrease. Omega d should decrease. The quantity to be subtracted is increased. So, omega d will decrease. Omega d will decrease. Okay. So, will be reduced correct answer. Yeah. This is true. This looks true. Right. So, one by one, step by step, similar analysis you should keep doing. Next one. Okay. Next one. If R is reduced, the transient oscillation will die out at a faster rate. Dear, if the R is reduced, the transient oscillations will die out at a faster rate will die out at a faster rate. So, R ko reduce karenge. Transient oscillation. Now, rate, transient oscillation will die out at a faster rate related to the concept of settling time. Transient oscillations die out about the settling time. So, option number C is related with the concept of what? With the concept of settling time. Right. Option number T, settling time. And it's an under damped case. So, 4 by zeta omega n directly. 4 by zeta omega n. But what is the product zeta omega n? Dekho. Zeta omega n ka product, yaha se agar hum lenge bhi, this is equal to 4 divided by, see what is the zeta omega n in the standard form, cc will cancel, it's r by l, 2 zeta omega n is r by l, so it is half of r by l, okay, ultimately the setting time depends on r as well as l, it becomes 8 l divided by the r, clear it? Because when you want to calculate the zeta omega n, you have to consider this LC uh, to be divided. Okay, S square plus S R by L. Okay. Achha. So, here it came. Now, option kya tha? Let me just see the option. If R is reduced, transient oscillation will die down at a faster rate. Okay. Now, R ko reduce kiya. R decreased. So, settling time increased. R is in the denominator. Now, settling time increased. Matlab, transient will be there for a longer time. Right. Transient will be there for a longer time. Steady state will be achieved later. Steady state will be achieved later. So, if R is reduced, transient oscillation will die down at a faster rate? No, sir. No. They will die down at a slower rate indeed. They will die out at a slower rate indeed. Take care. Next case. If R is reduced to 0, if R is reduced to 0, the peak amplitude of the voltage across C will be double that of the input voltage. So, if R0 is reduced, okay, just one second, guys. Hanji guys, so if R is reduced to 0, now what happens if the R is reduced to 0? D option pe a jayenge, D option me bola hai, dear R is reduced to 0, very clearly the zeta will be 0. Zeta will be 0, so the system becomes the undamped. Zeta equal to 0, so the system becomes the undamped. And if the system is undamped, zeta equal to 0, we know that what is the undamped waveform for a second order? What is the undamped waveform for the second order? Tell me. What is the undamped waveform for the second order? That too, input is unit step. Input be ekdam fixed, unit step. 
इट ऑसिलेट्स बिटवीन जीरो टू टू स्टैंडर्ड रिजल्ट ऑफ सेकेंड ऑर्डर हमेशा एकदम फिक्स रखना राइट एंड दिस इज वन सो वॉट इज द पीक वैल्यू ऑफ द आउटपुट अक्रॉस द कैपेसिटर वॉट इज दिस वे फॉर्म दिस इज द आउटपुट अक्रॉस द कैपेसिटर वी नॉट टी या वी सी टी द पीक वैल्यू ऑफ द आउटपुट अक्रॉस द कैपेसिटर इज डबल इज डबल ऑफ दैट ऑफ the input voltage input voltage was one so if r is reduced to zero the peak amplitude of voltage the peak amplitude of voltage across c we have checked this is true this is true so what is the answer for the msq question guys it is b and d the answer for the msq question is b and d the answer for the msq question is b and d right chalo all right guys so uh, just I got the call from Ashu Jhangra sir. He is ready, guys, and he is going to bring you yet another topics: uh, state space analysis, RH criteria. All those things will be discussed, and with that, the basics of signal flow graph also he'll cover. So, guys, be ready now to join Ashu Jhangra sir. It's been more than two hours, and we have completed transient and steady state. Although we haven't gone into derivations, but we have looked into the important concepts, important formula, and variety of problems. That is what you actually need in the end game. right so we have prepared the content as per the last month left and now very soon just immediately ashu sir is ready so guys keep enjoying do not forget to like the session increase kar dete be more motivated and i'll see you once again tomorrow right so guys ashu jhangra sir ready just be uh, ready and he is just going to come up wait a moment Hello everyone So good afternoon and uh, please ch uh, check audio and video is it fine please check audio and video is it fine guys tell me tell me guys is audio and video fine I think audio and video is fine so uh, let's start uh, state space because uh, Rakesh sir has covered uh, i think uh, the time domain analysis and the basics of control system so uh, now i'm going to start state space but let me tell you guys uh, i'll teach you the state space in a purely different way the way you have studied state space might be different and uh, my method will be different first i'm going to teach you about mathematics okay i'll teach you about the maths which we are going to use in state space and then we'll try to cover the concepts so so that you can you can feel comfortable in the mathematics okay so uh, let's uh, start the topic guys uh, let let me start the topic uh, okay wait a minute because uh, yes yes now we can start okay so this is maha marathon series and uh, i hope you are enjoying there is one mega workshop is going on on 15th of january uh, which is uh, taken by abhinav negi sir so you can recommend to your ju juniors or maybe th those student who are preparing for 2024 okay so um, they will get some tips and tricks for, uh, from abhinav negi sir and there is one more test we are conducting uh, you can avail 90% of scholarship so you have to register it on on the link below so the link is given in the description of the video you can go there uh there is one more session which is going to uh, which is coming soon and uh, this is on general aptitude taken by rakesh sir okay so i hope you'll enjoy this session also uh mathematics uh, marathon session is also coming and uh, it's it's again coming soon so uh, you'll enjoy this okay now it's time to join the test series guys because this time is very crucial and you have to uh, you have to give some test so that you can judge your speed and accuracy so please join Baiju's exam prep for the test series, and uh, here you will get more than sixty plus tests and 
uh, the the interface is exactly same as uh, provided provided by the IITs. Okay, so before starting the session, please subscribe our channel and like this session because I want to make the double century of likes. Okay, so this time uh, the like is one one hundred eleven. And now I want to make the double century of the likes. So those students who haven't liked the session, please like it. Okay. Okay. So let's start the basic mathematics first. The maths which we are going to use in the state space. And then we'll try to cover the, uh, the theoretical concepts of the state space. Okay. But let me tell you guys, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you some, let's say maybe uh, some break after one or maybe one and a half hour. So that uh, because you feel exhausted. Because uh, from from morning 10 a.m. you are studying, so I feel that you feel exhausted. So I'll give you 10, 10 uh, five ten minutes break, and uh, uh, I mean that break will be provided after one hour. Okay, so I think we can start now. So let's start the session, guys. First of all, I want to tell you about how to calculate eigenvalue and eigenvector. Everybody know that. Everybody know how to calculate eigenvalue and eigenvector. <coughs> so uh, there will be some spelling mistake. So anyway, correct it. This is eigenvalue, eigenvalue. Okay, so how to calculate eigenvalue and eigenvector? To calculate eigenvector, what you can do is lambda i minus a and take the determinant and make it equal to zero. Lambda is eigenvalue. Lambda is eigenvalue. Everybody know that. Lambda is eigenvalue. So let's say I have this matrix. And I want to calculate the eigenvalue. How to calculate the eigenvalues, guys? Tell me. To calculate the eigenvalue, what you can do is lambda i minus a or a minus lambda i. Whatever you can do. A minus lambda i, take the determinant of that, make it equal to 0. Then you will get the eigenvalue. So it's very simple. What you can do is matrix A is provided to you. You can take a minus lambda into identity equal to 0. So this is my A matrix. So if I apply this, it will be 25 minus lambda into i so minus lambda this is 12 this is 0 minus 18 this will be minus 5 minus lambda 0 and this is 6 6 and 13 minus lambda take the de determinant of this and make it equal to 0 okay so you will get a you will get a cubic equation from here and then you can calculate the value of lambda so you'll get three value of lambdas okay Lambda 1 is 7, lambda 2 is 13 and lambda 3 is also 13. So you will get 3, 3 eigenvalue. Okay. Now you can see that there are repeated eigenvalues. 7, 13, 13. There are repeated eigenvalues. If there are repeated eigenvalues, then it's a problem. It's a problem. Why I am calling this as a problem? Why I am calling this uh, repeated eigenvalues as problem? Because maybe if you try to solve the differential equation first order differential equation then you will feel difficulty in this i'll tell you how uh, this is problematic okay but before going to the solution of differential equation i want to tell you about eigenvector how to calculate the eigenvector so the method of getting eigenvector is again very simple a minus lambda 1 into identity now you have to put lambda 1 value here into identity into v1 let's call it v1 v1 is first eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1 value every value i mean let's say this is my lambda 1 so every eigenvalue corresponding to every eigenvalue you have eigenvector let's say the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1 is v1 and eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2 is v2 and eigenvector corresponding to lambda 3 is v3 okay so you have three eigenvector now how to calculate this eigenvector it's very simple what you need to do is again this formula is used in this formula in place of lambda you put lambda 1 into v1 make it equal to 0 v1 is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1 similarly if you put lambda 2 you have to put v2 equal to 0 and you put lambda 3 then you have to take v3 equal to 0 okay this way you have to calculate the eigenvector but the problem is if you have distinct eigenvalues if you have distinct eigenvalues there is no problem for corresponding to every eigenvalue you can calculate eigenvector there is no problem at all okay but the problem will come when you have repeated eigenvalues because if you have repeated eigenvalues then to calculate the eigenvector it's a it's a challenge okay 
it will be problematic okay why it will be problematic because if you have distinct eigenvalues for distinct eigenvalues for distinct eigenvalues you have linearly independent eigenvector linearly independent eigenvector now what is the meaning of this linearly independent eigenvector linearly independent eigenvector okay what is the meaning of linearly independent eigenvector tell me guys what is the meaning of linearly independent eigenvector let me tell you what is the meaning of linearly dependent independent eigenvector and dependent eigenvector let's say there are three vectors one two let's say there are two vectors first let's uh, this is v1 and this is v2 now if you take the linear combination of these two vectors linear combination of these two vectors then you can reach any point by by varying a and b you can reach any point in this plane in this 2d plane in the plane in which two vectors are lying in this 2d plane you can reach anywhere you can reach anywhere if you vary this a and b let's take a as 1 and b as 2 then a as minus 1 and b as whatever okay whatever value you take from uh, for a and b you can reach any point in this plane any point in this plane okay so you can say that these these two vectors are linearly independent and using the linear combination you can go anywhere but let's say i create a third vector v3 i create a third vector in the same plane in the in the plane uh, uh, in which v1 and v2 are already there so we have taken third vector v3 and this third vector v3 is also in the same plane in which v1 and v2 were there now this vector can be represented as a linear combination of these two this vector can be represented as a, i mean to to reach this this point to reach this point what you can do is you can take the linear combination of v1 and v2 and you can reach it here it means this third vector is dependent this third vector is dependent or i can say in a different way that if you take this vector it can be represented as linear combination of these two vectors because this vector is lying in the plane of these two vectors so you can say that any vector can be represented as a linear combination of other two vector that's why v1 v2 v3 will make a linear linearly dependent group okay so v1 v2 v3 are linearly dependent but if you take two vectors if you take two vector v1 and v2 only if you don't take third vector let's say if you take two vectors only then these two vectors now you can't you can you can't say that v1 can be represented in terms of v2 no sir using v2 you can't reach to v1 because if you are varying the coefficient of v2 you can you can move only on this line you can only on move you can only move on this line if you are varying the amplitude of v2 you can only move on this line you can't reach this point it means v1 and v2 are linearly independent here v1 and v2 are linearly independent okay let's take v1 on this side and v2 also on this side now tell me whether it is a linearly dependent pair or linearly independent pair tell me guys whether it is a linearly dependent or linearly independent tell me guys whether this is linearly dependent pair or linearly independent pair now you can see that in this case v1 can be represented as in terms of v2 with the help of v2 you can represent v1 or with the help of v1 you can represent v2 so you can say that v1 and v2 let's call it v1 now now you can say that v1 and v2 are linearly dependent okay v1 and v2 are linearly dependent is it fine guys so first of all you have to understand what is the meaning of linearly dependent and linearly independent with the help of one vector you can go to the other vector that's why this pair is linearly dependent but here this pair is linearly independent now how to check it mathematically let's say v1 is v1 is 2i cap plus 3j cap let's say it's a 2d vector okay and v2 is v2 is i cap plus 4j cap i need to check whether this pair is linearly dependent or independent 
how to check it guys how to check it it's simple what you can do is you can use the, you can write them in matrix you can write them in matrix 2 and 3 this is 2 this is 3 and the other vector is 1 4 if the rank of the matrix if the rank of this matrix is less than 2 because there are two dimensions now if the rank of this matrix is less than 2 then these vectors are linearly dependent okay now what is the rank how to calculate the rank check the determinant the determinant is non zero if the determinant is non zero it means its rank is 2 okay determinant is non zero it means its rank is 2 okay if the rank is 2 it means this pair v1 and v2 are linearly independent this pair is linearly independent v1 v2 pair is linearly independent first you have to understand this let's take one more example let's say v1 is equal to i cap plus 3j cap and v2 is equal to v2 is equal to maybe minus i cap minus 2 i cap minus 6 j cap let's say this is <coughs> v2 v1 is this v2 is this now if you check it if you make the matrix 1 and 3 and this will be minus 2 and minus 6 and if you calculate the determinant of this you will get 0 okay determinant you will get 0 it means it means if the determinant is 0 it means the rank cannot be 2 so you can say that v1 and v2 are linearly dependent with the help of v1 you can represent v2 or with the help of v2 you can represent v1 and you can even check that v2 is equal to minus 2 times of v1 you can see that okay so v2 can be represented with the help of v1 so you can say that here in this case v1 and v2 are linearly dependent so first you have to understand what is the meaning of linearly dependency how to check whether the met whether the vectors are linearly dependent or independent okay okay now let's come back so i told you if you have distinct eigenvalues let's say these eigenvalues will distinct no uh, 7 maybe 13 or maybe some different okay so the, if, the, if if you have dif distinct eigenvalues then eigenvector will be linearly independent but if you have repeated eigenvalues for repeated eigenvalues eigenvector may be linearly dependent may not be linearly dependent okay then it may or may not be linearly independent okay remember whenever you have repeated eigenvalues then eigenvector may or may not be linearly dependent just remember this point because it's very important okay so i have written this if any system has distinct eigenvalues then eigenvector will be linearly independent it means with the linear combination let's say the matrix is 2 by 2 or maybe 3 by 3 so for 3 by 3 matrix you have lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 three eigenvalues if you have distinct three eigenvalues then the corresponding eigenvector will be linearly independent it means with the help of these three vectors you can reach to any any point in space because you have now three vectors now with the help of three vectors you can you can reach in any space uh, any point in the space so they will be linearly independent try to understand this okay if you have distinct eigenvalues you will get linearly independent eigenvector now for repeated eigenvalues let's say the eigenvalues are repeated for repeated eigenvalues eigenvector eigenvector may or may not be linearly independent it may be possible that eigenvector are linearly independent it may be possible that eigenvector may not be linearly independent okay to check the nature of eigenvector we have to check the diagonalization this is important how to check for repeated eigenvalues especially if eigenvalues are repeating then how to check whether whether you have uh, uh, linearly independent eigenvector or linearly dependent eigenvector how to check it using diagonalization if any matrix is diagonalizable let's say you have a matrix and if a matrix is diagonalizable you can diagonalize that then it will be yeah it will get i mean then you will get a linearly independent eigenvector but if the matrix is non diagonalizable then you can't say then you say then you will say that the eigenvector will be linearly dependent let's say you have this matrix now in this matrix this is 7 this is 13 this is 13 now repeated eigenvalues are there 
if you have repeated eigen values the eigen vector may be linearly dependent v2 and v3 may be linearly dependent and this group may be linearly dependent you have to check you have to check whether you can diagonalize this matrix or not now how to check whether we can diagonalize this matrix or not how to check it to check this it's very simple you can check diagonalization with the help of algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity okay if algebraic multiplicity is equal to geometric multiplicity then we will say that this matrix is diagonalizable let's say you have a matrix now you have this a matrix and the eigen values are 2 2 3 now we want to check whether we can diagonalize this matrix or not whether we can diagonalize this matrix or not can it be possible to diagonalize this matrix to check it what what we are going to do is we have to check geometric al uh, uh, algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity if algebraic multiplicity become equal to geometric multiplicity then we will say that this matrix can be diagonalizable and the eigenvector corresponding to these eigenvalue will be linearly independent if you can diagonalize the matrix it means you will get linearly independent eigenvector just remember this line if you can diagonalize any matrix then surely you can you can uh, you will get linearly independent eigenvector okay just remember this line is it fine guys so now you have repeated eigenvalues but you don't know whether the for these two eigenvalues you will have linearly independent eigenvector or not so what you can do is you can check the diagonalizability if you diagonalize it, if you can diagonalize it, this matrix then it will be linearly independent eigenvector for these two eigenvalues you will get linearly independent eigenvector and since this is distinct eigenvalue surely you will get independent eigenvalue uh, uh, independent eigenvector okay but you have to check for uh, i mean you have to check the diagonalization whether you can diagonalize this matrix or not so let me repeat this to check the diagonalizability what you can do is if arithmetic uh, if uh, algebraic multiplicity is equal to geometric multiplicity then matrix is diagonalizable otherwise not okay otherwise it will, it will not be uh, diagonalizable now how to check it how to check it okay let me check, let me tell you how to how to check it let's say i have a matrix let's say this is the matrix 25 12 minus 18 minus 5. this is the first matrix that i have taken okay uh, and the eigen values are 7 13 13 these are the eigen values how to calculate the eigen values tell me guys eigen values can be calculated a minus lambda i take the determinant of this equal to 0 from there you will get eigen values so these are the eigen values okay now first of all i need to check what is the uh, what is the algebraic multiplicity now how to check algebraic multiplicity it's very simple since this is not repeated so algebraic multiplicity for this value is 1 since it is not repeated but you can see that this 13 is repeated two times so algebraic multiplicity corresponding to 13 value is 2 since it is repeated two times okay so i think to calculate algebraic multiplicity it's simple you can calculate the algebraic multiplicity here is 1 and the algebraic multiplicity here is 2 okay so we have calculated algebraic multiplicity algebraic multiplicity corresponding to 7 is 1 and algebraic multiplicity corresponding to 13 is 2 now we need to check geometric multiplicity how to calculate how to check the geometric multiplicity geometric multiplicity can be calculated like this this is the formula for geometric multiplicity let me let me write it in a correct way because uh, okay let me write it in a correct way so the formula for geometric multiplicity is this n minus rank of a minus lambda into identity this is the formula for geometric multiplicity this is the formula for geometric multiplicity now n what is the n n is the dimension of the matrix let's say this is 3 by 3 matrix so n is 3 n represent the dimension of the matrix okay now let's let's calculate it let's check let's check how to calculate the geometric multiplicity corresponding to 7 so first i am checking i am calculating geometry multipli geometric multiplicity corresponding to 7 so if you are if you are looking uh, geometric multiplicity corresponding to 7 corresponding to 7 so what is this how to calculate it to calculate this you have to put the value of n n is 3 minus a rank of minus rank of rank of a minus 
lambda lambda is 7 a minus 7 identity you have to check the rank of this matrix okay once you get the rank of this you subtract from 3 and you will get the geometric multiplicity okay now tell me what is the rank of this what is the rank of this okay first of all you have to write a minus 7 into identity a is this minus 7 into identity so 25 minus 7 25 minus 7 is tell me 25 minus 7 is a 18 so you will get 18 here 12 0 and then it will be minus 18 minus 12 because minus 5 minus 7 is minus 12 0 and then 6 6 6 6 and this will be 6 is it fine guys 6 6 and 6 now we need to calculate the rank of this do you know how to calculate the rank of this mat how to calculate the rank of matrix tell me guys how to check the rank of this matrix please tell me the rank of this how to calculate the rank to calculate the rank what you can do is first it's a 3 by 3 square matrix look at the square matrix the highest the biggest square matrix so the biggest square matrix is 3 by 3 if the determinant came out to be non zero it means the rank is 3 it means the rank is 3 okay but if the determinant came out to be 0 then you have to make 2 by 2 matrices you have to break it in 2 by 2 you can take this 2 by 2 or this 2 by 2 or this 2 by 2 or this 2 by 2 and then you have to check the de check the determinant if any 2 by 2 matrix determinant came out to be 0 then the rank will become 2 so it's simple if so you start from the biggest matrix that is 3 by 3 matrix if the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix is 0 it means the rank cannot be 3 rank has to be less than 3 then you, you what you can do is if th if the determinant came out to be 0 then you make 2 by 2 matrices you take two, this 2 by 2 or this 2 by 2 this 2 by 2 and this whatever possible 2 by 2 matrix you can take okay so if the if the determinant of any 2 by 2 matrix came out to be non zero then the rank will be 2 but let's say whatever whatever 2 by 2 matrix you take determinant came out to be zero then the rank cannot be cannot be 2 you have to go to one uh, one by one matrix single single element you can take okay then you have to check for one by one matrix so it's simple i think you can easily calculate the rank now tell me what is the rank of this what is the rank of this if you calculate the rank you can uh, calculate the determinant so expand this with with this uh, with this 6 now so 6 into tell me guys plus minus plus minus plus so 6 into this into this minus this into this 18 into 18 into minus 12 minus of minus 18 into 12 so you can see that this came out to be 0 okay this is cancelled with this so it is 0 it means the determinant came out to be 0 the determinant of this matrix is 0 it means the rank cannot be 3 so you have to check for 2 by 2 matrix okay now you make any 2 by 2 matrix you can take any 2 by 2 matrix and check the determinant if you take this 2 by 2 matrix if you take this 2 by 2 matrix or maybe the, uh, the lower one minus 18 mi any 2 by 2 matrix you can check okay now check the determinant of this the determinant of this matrix is non zero determinant of this matrix is non zero this is not equal to zero what does it mean it means if any 2 by 2 matrix determinant become non zero then rank has to be 2 so now the rank is 2 so we have calculated the rank came out to be 2 i hope it is clear to everyone so rank is 2 now tell me the rank of this a minus 7 i came out to be 2 so 3 minus 2 3 minus 2 will become 1 so you can say that geometric multiplicity corresponding to 7 is 1 and algebraic multiplicity corresponding to 7 is also 1 so it means it will create no problem according to this i mean uh, corresponding to this you will get an independent eigenvector okay let's say the eigenvector came out to be v1 but this was not creating any problem you don't need to check this you don't need to check the distinct eigenvalue because in case of distinct eigenvalue you will always always get algebraic multiplicity equal to geometric multiplicity you don't need to check the distinct value what you need to check is this repeated eigenvalue corresponding to this repeated eigenvalue you have to check the geometric multiplicity and algebraic multiplicity then only you can check uh, whether you can diagonalize this matrix or, or not diagonalize this matrix okay i hope you understood it okay so let's proceed guys alok dube sir rank wala fir se bata dijiye okay let me repeat this rank one 
uh, rank once uh, I'm not telling you about the physical meaning of rank because rank means span rank means span uh, so what you can do is let's say you have three by three matrix actually you have three vectors actually you have three vectors v1 v2 v3 now what is the span of these three vectors if you take the linear combination of these vectors so obviously if you have three vectors then the biggest span can be a 3d space using three vectors you can reach to any point in the space but if this group is linearly dependent it means if any vector can be represented as a combination of the other two vector then span cannot be 3d then span can be 2d it means rank will be 2 but anyway this is the physical meaning i am telling you but i think most of most of the students are not aware of the physical meaning you can check the mathematics you can you can check the rank using mathematics what you can do is while checking the mathematics while applying the mathematics what you can do is since you have 3 by 3 matrix no? so the biggest square matrix is 3 by 3 so the highest rank can be 3 but you have to check the determinant if the determinant came out to be 0 if the determinant of this matrix came out to be 0 it means rank cannot be 3 rank cannot be 3 is it fine guys rank cannot be 3 rank can be 2 or 1 now what you need to do is you have to make 2 by 2 matrices you have to make 2 by you have to uh, break this matrix you have to make 2 by 2 matrices and you have to uh, check out the determinant of 2 by 2 matrices if any 2 by 2 matrix determinant came out to be non zero rank will become 2 now i have i have uh, uh, i i put this 2 by 2 matrix out only this and i check the determinant determinant came out to be non zero if any 2 by 2 matrix determinant came, came out to be non zero then the rank will become 2 it's simple okay it might be possible that there are some matrices 2 by 2 matrices whose determinant is zero but I am not discussing about that. I am saying that if any 2 by 2 matrix determinant came out to be non zero, then the rank will become zero, uh, rank will become 2. Okay. Let us say all 2 by 2 matrix determinant came out to be 0, then rank cannot be 2. You have to go to 1 by 1 matrices. Okay. So this way you can check the rank. I hope it is it is clear. Okay, increase the live count, uh, increase the like count. Uh, please do it because I want to make the double century of likes. Those students who haven't liked it, please like the session. Please do like the session, guys. Okay, so I told you about the, I told you about the, about the rank. How to calculate the rank? Now, in this case, for seven, I mean, in the, this matrix A minus seven I, rank came out to be two. So the geometric multiplicity came out to be one. It means for this distinct eigenvalue, our, uh, algebraic multiplicity is equal to geometric multiplicity. Actually, for distinct eigenvalue, you don't need to check. You don't need to check. Because always you will get algebraic multiplicity equal to geometric multiplicity. Now, now I want to check for this repeated eigenvalue. Because you have only checked for 7. There was no need to check for 7. You need to check for 13. So, to check for 13, so I have to write geometric multiplicity corresponding to 13. Okay. Now, for corresponding to 13, what you need to do is you need to take 3 minus rank of. 3 minus rank of a minus 13 into identity. We have to check the rank of this. Okay. Now, what is a minus 13 into identity? First, write a minus 13 into identity. A, a is this matrix minus 13 into identity. So, here you will get 12. This is 12. This is 12. This is 0. And then minus 18. And if you subtract uh, 13 from it, you will get minus 18, 0. And then 6, 6, 0. Is it fine guys? Now tell me what is the rank of this matrix? Tell me guys. What is the rank of this matrix? Tell me what is the rank of this matrix? Good afternoon Abdul. Tell me guys what is the rank of this matrix? What is the rank? Everyone tell me what is the rank? Determinant agar upar se calculate kare to zero aega. Yes zero aega upar se calculate karoge. Then what I told you? Any 2 by 2, only this is not the only 2 by 2 matrix. This will be the 2 by 2 matrix. This will also be 2 by 2. This will also be 2 by 2. Any 2 by 2 matrix determinant came out to be non zero, then the rank will become 2. You are not listening me. Okay. Yeah, tell me guys, uh, what is the rank of this matrix? What is the rank of this matrix? The rank of this matrix came out to be 1. The rank came out to be 1. Okay. So now, what is the geometric multiplicity? Tell me guys. So the geometric multiplicity came out to be geometric multiplicity came out to be 3 minus 1 it came out to be 2 okay 
ज्योमेट्रिक मल्टीप्लिसिटी केम आउट टू बी टू इज इट फाइन गाइस नाउ यू कैन सी दैट ज्योमेट्रिक मल्टीप्लिसिटी इज ग्रेटर देन एल्जेब्रिक मल्टीप्लिसिटी ओके ज्योमेट्रिक मल्टीप्लिसिटी इज ग्रेटर देन एल्जेब्रिक मल्टीप्लिसिटी फोर थर्टीन नो 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 इट्स इक्वल नॉट ग्रेटर इट्स इक्वल ओके इट्स इक्वल एक्सक्यूज मी सो द ज्योमेट्रिक मल्टीप्लिसिटी केम आउट टू बी टू हेयर एंड द एल्जेब्रिक मल्टीप्लिसिटी इज अगेन टू फोर थर्टीन एल्जेब्रिक मल्टीप्लिसिटी इज टू अगेन so again you can say that algebraic multiplicity came out to be equal to geometric multiplicity it means you can diagonalize this matrix you can easily diagonalize this matrix is it fine guys so you can say easily diagonalize i am little confused good luck if you are confused then good luck okay so i told you that here in this case geometric multiplicity is equal to algebraic multiplicity because the algebraic multiplicity for 13 is 2 and we have calculated the geometric multiplicity that again came out to be 2 it means for this 13 case algebraic multiplicity is equal to geometric multiplicity so again for 7 also algebraic multiplicity equal to geometric and for 13 also algebraic multiplicity equal to geometric it means you can diagonalize this if you can diagonalize this it means you will get linearly independent eigen vector okay you will get linearly independent eigen vector all the three eigen vector will be linearly independent remember this point i hope it is clear to everyone okay now what is the diagonalization diagonalization of this matrix if you are going to diagonalize it what matrix you will get so the diagonalized matrix for diagonal matrix for this a i i write it lambda in in, in lambda term so it will be represent so you can check the geometric multiplicity and algebraic multiplicity so for algebraic multiplicity uh, uh, for 7 first you have calculated for 7 it came out to be 1 okay and for repeated eigen value uh, remember this point geometric multiplicity for non repeated eigen value is always one okay for non repeated eigen values geometric multiplicity is always one okay so uh, for non repeated eigen value algebraic multiplicity will always be equal to geometric multiplicity you don't need to check what you need to check is the repeated eigen values in case of repeated eigen values you can see that for 13 the rank came out to be 1 geometric multiplicity came out to be 2 so you can say that geometric multiplicity is equal to algebraic multiplicity because the algebraic multiplicity of 13 was again 2 geometric multiplicity again came out to be 2 so they are equal that's why you can diagonalize a matrix can be diagonalizable and eigen vector will be linearly independent just remember this point i hope it is clear to everyone now we can proceed let's say i have this matrix tell me guys first calculate the eigen values what are the eigen values please calculate eigen values okay please calculate eigen values and then comment on eigen vector comment on eigen vector tell me guys then comment on eigen vector what are the eigen values can you calculate the eigen values guys tell me what are the eigen values do it fast do it fast how to calculate the eigen values guys tell me how to calculate the eigen values eigen values can be calculated a minus lambda i equal to 0 take the determinant of this and make it equal to 0 you will get eigen values okay so tell me what are the eigen values guys if you apply this a minus lambda into identity so tell me what you what you will get you will get a a is this minus lambda into identity you will minus 1 minus lambda 0 1 and then 0 minus 1 minus lambda 1 and then 1 minus 1 Minus one minus lambda and take the determinant and make it equal to zero. Okay, guys, this way you can solve it. Now tell me what is the value of lambda? You take the determinant of this. So the determinant came out to be minus one minus lambda into this into this. That is minus one minus lambda whole square plus one. Okay, and then plus one into plus one into this into this zero minus this into this. That is one uh, plus lambda. Okay, equal to zero. So what I have done is I have taken the determinant. I have taken the determinant. I hope it is clear to everyone. Okay, I have taken the determinant, guys. Now, if you can solve it, you can write it like this: lambda plus one into minus. I I have taken this minus common, and here you can say one plus lambda plus one square plus lambda plus one equal to zero. Okay, you take lambda plus one common again. Lambda plus one, I have taken common, so here you will get one minus one plus 
lambda plus one square, okay, and make it equal to zero. So if you simplify it, you will get lambda equal to minus one comma minus one comma minus one. So you'll get three equal eigenvalues. Is it fine, guys? Tell me, everyone. You will get three equal eigenvalues. Minus one, minus one, minus one. You have repeated eigenvalues. Lambda one is minus one. Lambda two is also minus one. And lambda three will also be minus one. So you have repeated eigenvalues. Is it clear, guys? Tell me. So you will get minus one, minus one, minus one. Repeated eigenvalues. Now, what about eigenvector? You, you, you have three eigenvectors, nah? but the problem is they are repeated. So you have to check whether you will get linearly independent eigenvector or linearly dependent eigenvector. How to check it? By using the diagonalization method. Now tell me, what is the algebraic multiplicity? What is algebraic multiplicity? Algebraic multiplicity for minus 1 is 3. Now I need to calculate geometric multiplicity. Now how to calculate geometric multiplicity? n, n is 3 minus rank of minus rank of a minus lambda into i and lambda is minus 1 lambda is minus 1 so if you put the value of lambda minus 1 here one more minus is there so it will become plus identity it will become plus identity is it fine we need to calculate the rank of this that will be the geometric multiplicity now tell me what is the rank of a plus identity so if you add identity to it so the rank of rank of a plus identity matrix we need to calculate that uh, so it means a rank of what is a plus identity tell me guys if you add identity to it it will be 0 0 1 and then 0 0 1 0 0 1 and then 1 minus 1 0 1 minus 1 0 tell me what is the rank of this matrix can you tell me what is the rank of this matrix guys what is the rank of this matrix? Please tell me what is the rank of this matrix? So we have calculated algebraic multiplicity came out to be 3. Now I need to calculate geometric multiplicity. Now tell me what is the geometric multiplicity of this matrix? Tell me guys, what is the geometric multiplicity of this? The determinant of this uh, is 0. So obviously rank cannot be 3. Now check for rank equal to 2. Rank, if you make this 2 by 2 matrix, look, look at this matrix carefully. This, if you may take this 2 by 2 matrix out, then you can say the determinant of this 2 by 2 is non-zero. Is it fine, guys? The determinant of this 2 by 2 is non-zero. It means the rank is 2. It means the rank is 2. Okay. So rank of this matrix is 2. So geometric multiplicity will be equal to 3 minus 2 that came out to be 1. Is it fine, guys? First of all, tell me. Is it fine? So geometric multiplicity came out to be 1. Raghuram, it is 1. It is not 2. Rank is 2. Rank came out to be 2. You can see that the determinant of 3 by 3 matrix is 0. That's clear. It means the rank cannot be 3. Now I have to go to 2 by 2 matrix. So you can make 2 by 2 matrix out. Now you can take 2 by 2 matrix out. If I take this 2 by 2 matrix out, possible 2 by 2 matrix out, you have to take. Okay. So if I take this 2 by 2 matrix out, then the determinant of this matrix is not 0. It means the rank is 2. If the rank is 2, then you can put it here. And the geometric multiplicity came out to be 1. Now you can see that algebraic multiplicity is 3 and geometric multiplicity is 1. So algebraic multiplicity is less than geometric multiplicity. So can you diagonalize this? Say yes or no. Say yes or no. Tell me guys. Can you diagonalize this matrix? Say yes or no. Can you diagonalize this matrix? Answer is no. You can't diagonalize this. You can't diagonalize this because algebraic multiplicity is less than geometric multiplicity so diagonalization is not possible here if you want to diagonalize it by using some uh, mathematics manipulation you will get jordan matrix not the diagonal matrix okay you will not get diagonal matrix if you want to diagonalize this because there is a method of diagonalization nah? you can diagonalize any matrix i will tell you what is the method of diagonalization so if you apply that method you will not be able to diagonalize it. You will get Jordan matrix. I hope you have heard this name Jordan. So if you want to diagonalize this by using mathematical manipulation, by using mathematical methods, because there are some methods to diagonalize any matrix. So if you apply that method, you will get Jordan matrix. You will not get diagonal matrix. Remember this. Now what is that Jordan matrix? What is Jordan matrix? You will get the matrix like this. These are the eigenvalues. Minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. 
0, 0, 0 and since it is repeated, you will get 1 here and since it is repeated, you will get 1 here. So, this will be the Jordan matrix. Okay. If you want to diagonalize this matrix, every eigenvalue will be on diagonal. But since you can't diagonalize it, you can't take this element 0 and this element 0. It will not be a perfect diagonal matrix. So, whatever the repeated eigenvalue, above that you will get 1. This is repeated, above that you will get 1. This is called Jordan matrix J. Okay. This is not diagonal matrix. You can't diagonalize this. If you can't diagonalize this, tell me, if you can't diagonalize this, what about eigenvector? Will the eigenvector be linearly independent? Tell me guys, will the eigenvector be linearly independent? Say yes or no. Will the eigenvector be linearly independent? Answer is no. Eigenvector will be linearly dependent. Okay. Here the eigenvector will be linearly dependent. Tell me guys, have you understood this method? How to check about eigenvalue and eigenvector? Whether eigenvector are linearly independent or linearly dependent. Okay. So you can check it from here. Tell me guys, is there any problem? Is there any problem? Tell me everyone. I hope it is clear to everyone. I hope this is clear to everyone. Okay. So now what I can do is, now you will ask me sir why you have taught this? What is the advantage of this? Why this, uh, this concept came into picture? Why, why you told, told us this? Because this is important. Where it is important? Let me tell you. Let us say you have a differential equation like this. x dot equal to ax. Let us say you have this differential equation. x dot equal to ax. Okay. This is my, this dot means first derivative dot means first derivative. Let me write it like this. Let us say you have this equation dxt by dt is equal to axt. Let us say you have this first order differential equation. A is some matrix. A is some matrix and you want to solve this. You want to solve this differential equation. Okay. x is state variable let us say and this is the change in state variable or whatever. Let us not go into state variable. Let us say this is matrix, this is some equation and this is some matrix A. Let me further uh, expand it. Let us say A is a 3 by 3 matrix and X can be represented as X1 T, X2 T, X3 T. On this side you have X1 dot T. Let us say this is some equation. I do not know what is this equation. Let us say you have this equation. You want to solve this, you want to solve this equation. What is the solution of this equation? So obviously you will have the eigenvalue of A, eigenvalue of matrix A, let us call it lambda 1 or lambda 2. Let us take it 2 by 2 matrix, not 3 by 3 or let us take it 3 by 3, there is no problem, okay. Let us take it 3 by 3. Let us say the eigenvalues are lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 and these eigenvalues are distinct. Let us say these eigenvalues are distinct. If these eigenvalues are distinct, then there the corresponding eigenvector are, the corresponding eigenvector are v1, v2 and v3 and they will be linearly independent. They will be linearly independent. Now, you can write the solution of this equation directly. Okay, I do not want to do calculation. I can write the di solution directly. What, what will be the solution? The solution will be xt is equal to some constant c1 e to the power lambda 1t v1 plus c2 e to the power lambda 2t v2 plus c3 e to the power lambda 3t v3. This will be the solution for this equation. Okay. C1, C2, C3 are some constant. They will be calculated using the initial value of state variable. They can be calculated using the initial value of xt. This will be the solution. You can directly write this. Now, let us take a question. Okay, I have written this in, uh, on the screen. You can see that if let us say A is a 2 by 2 matrix and it has distinct eigenvalues. For distinct eigenvalues, you will get linearly independent eigenvector. So, the solution will be C1 into V1 e to the power lambda 1t, C2 v into V2 into lambda 2t. This will be the solution. This will be the xt. Okay. Now, many students think that, sir, why you are writing this? We can use, we can use Laplace transform. Na? If you are using Laplace transform to solve this, then what you can do is, you can write like this. If you are using Laplace transform, this will be Sxs minus x0 is equal to Axs, right? Take this Xs on this side. So, if you take Xs on this side, you will get Si minus A 
is equal to x0. So from here you will get x is equal to si minus a inverse into x0 into x0. You can write it like this, fine. And now take the Laplace, trans Laplace inverse. If you take Laplace inverse, x t equal to Laplace inverse of si minus a inverse si minus a inverse into x0 and what is the Laplace inverse of si minus a inverse this will call e to the power at e to the power at x0 we call it state transition matrix this e to the power at will be state transition matrix if you if you know this we call it state transition matrix how to calculate this e to the power at I'll tell you I'll tell you how to calculate this e to the power at if a is given how to calculate e to the power at now this will be the solution x t equal to e to the power a t x 0. This can be the solution. Yes, that's correct. But there is one more solution. You can write the solution like this also. Now you'll ask me, sir, why you are writing the solution like this? Why not this? What's the problem with this? x t can be e to the power a t x 0. Why you are writing like this? Because sometimes a is not provided to you. Only the eigenvalue and eigenvector are provided to you. Okay. They will provide you only eigenvalue and eigenvector. They don't provide you A. So first, either you have to calculate A first and then you have to cal calculate E to the power A T or X0. Or you can directly put eigenvalues and eigenvector here. Is it fine? Let's take a question. Let's take a question. Let's say I have an equation X dot T is equal to AXT. And there are two eigenvalues. One and Two. Let's say lambda 1 is minus 1 and lambda 2 is equal to minus 2. Corresponding to minus 1, eigenvector is 1 minus 1. And corresponding to 2, eigenvalues is 1, 0. Is it fine? And the initial value is given as x0 is given as 1, 1. I need to find xt at t equal to 2. What is this value? Now the problem is you don't know A. What is A? Can you calculate A? No sir, we don't know A. Initial x is given and we need to calculate x t at t equal to 2. Now how to solve this question? How to solve this question? We don't know this A. So if you want to solve this using Laplace transform, you must know the A value. Then only you will get the x t. The problem is you don't know A. So either you calculate A from this you have to calculate a from this or it's a tedious process or what you can do is you can apply direct this expression since you have distinct eigenvalues so the solution will be so xt will be equal to c1 e to the power lambda 1t into v1 v1 is 1 minus 1 plus c2 e to the power lambda 2t into v2 1 0 is it fine guys you can write directly write like this. Now this xt is x1t and x2t. You can write this xt as x1t x2t. This is again in matrix form x1t and x2t. Now if you put t equal to 0 on both sides, if you put t equal to 0 on both sides, then this is x0, x10, x20 and the value is given as 1, 1. At t equal to 0, if you put t equal to 0 on both sides, this value is provided to you 1 1 so you can put the value 1 1 this is equal to c1 you put t to, t to the power 0 na? e to the power 0 is 1 c1 into 1 1 plus c2 into 1 0 okay now there will be two equation from here you can say that c1 plus c2 this into c1 this into c2 c1 plus c2 equal to 1 and this is c1 this is 0 so c1 plus 0 is equal to again 1 so c1 came out to be 1 and if you put the c1 value c2 came out to be 0 so we have calculated c1 and c2 now you can put the value of c1 and c2 here so you can say that x1 t x2 t will be equal to if you put the value of c1 c2 it will be equal to c1 is 1 so it will be e to the power minus t into 1 1 and c2 is 0 so you don't, you don't need to write this 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 term so you can say that it will be e to the power minus t and e to the power minus t now you can put the value of t t equal to 2 and you can calculate this value is it fine guys is it fine 
Is it fine? Have you understood it? Say yes or no. Have I done it correctly? Yes, I have done it correctly. What's the problem, guys? Tell me. I oh oh, this is minus one. Okay, this is minus one. Sorry, sorry. So it it will be minus one. C one equal to minus one. Okay, I made a mistake. Excuse me, I made a mistake. Okay, so you can put the value of uh, you, uh, you, uh, the, you can put the value of t equal to zero. So you'll get c1 into 1 minus 1 and c2 into 1 0. So the equation will be c1 plus c2 equal to 1 and minus c1 equal to 1. So c1 equal to minus 1. Is it fine? So c1 came out to be minus 1. If you put the value of c1, c2 came out to be 2. Okay. Now you can put the value of c1 and c2. If you put the value of c1 and c2, then x1 t x2 t will be equal to what is the value of c1? c1 is minus 1 e to the power minus t and it will be 1 minus 1 plus c2. c2 is 2 e to the power minus 2 1 0. Is it fine? Now you can further simplify it. It will be e to the power minus t with minus sign and 2 e to the power minus 2 t 2 e to the power minus 2 t minus e to the power minus t. This will be the first term and the second term is 0 here and it will be e to the power minus t. Is it fine guys? So you can calculate x1 t and x2 t from here and now put the value of t equal to 2. You can calculate this value. Is it fine guys? Tell me. I hope you understood it. Now look how beautifully we have solved it. But if you don't know this process, if you don't know this method, then you will not be able to solve it. Okay. And some student will say, sir, why are you teaching this? Is it in the gate exam? This is asked in PYQ. This is previous year question. Okay. So let me tell you guys, the problem in, in this method is you don't know A. If you don't know A, then it will create a problem. Then you, you can't say that x t is equal to e to the power a t x 0. Since x 0 is already given to you, you have to calculate e to the power a t, then you will get x t and then you can put t equal to 2. Okay. I hope you understood it. So this is very important. But the problem arises when you have independent eigenvector. If you have linearly dependent eigenvector, then this cannot be the solution. This cannot be the solution. Then the solution will change. If you have linearly dependent eigenvector, let's say v1 and v2 are linearly dependent, then what you need to do is, or let's say repeated eigenvalues, there are repeated eigenvalues, lambda 1 and lambda 2 are equal, let's say, they are equal, lambda and lambda. If they are equal, then the solution will be this. First, you have to calculate this v1 and v2. How to calculate this v1 and v2? Now, it's a different process. Now, you have to calculate v1 and v2 first and then you have to write like this. The solution will be c1 into v1 e to the power lambda t plus c2 into v1 t plus v2 e to the power lambda t. You can't write c2 into v2 e to the power lambda t. No, sir. There will be an extra term. Okay. So, you have to remember whenever you have dependent eigenvector. So, you have to check whether you have dependent eigenvector or independent eigenvector. If you have independent eigenvector, then it's sim simply you can write like this. Okay, C1 V1 and C2 V2. Lambda 1, Lambda 2 here. Even if you have same eigenvalue, even if you have same eigenvalue, but the eigenvector are linearly independent, then you have to write like this. In place of Lambda 1 and Lambda 2, you can put the same value. But since they have independent eigenvector, you have to write separately like this. But if you have dependent eigenvector, if you have dependent eigenvector, then you have to write like this. And you have to calculate V1 and V2 in a, in a different way. Now, V1, V2, you can't calculate directly. Let's take a question. Let's take a question. This is the question I have. X dot T equal to AX. Let's say this is the question. X dot T equal to AX. A is given like this. Okay. Now, what I need to do is, I need to ca first calculate the eigenvector. So, the I, uh, sorry, eigenvalue. What are the eigenvalue? So eigenvalue came out to be 4, 4. You can check. You can check that. You can apply the method. Na? Lambda A minus lambda I. So 3 minus lambda minus 1, 1, 5 minus lambda and take the determinant and make it equal to 0. Okay. Take the determinant and make it equal to 0. So if you do like this, then the lambda value will be 4 and 4. You will get repeated eigenvalues. Okay. Now if you have repeated eigenvalues, you have to check for geometric multiplicity and uh, arithmetic multiplicity, okay, algebraic multiplicity, okay. So now let's calculate 
algebraic multiplicity. So algebraic multiplicity came out to be 2. Is it fine guys? Now if algebraic multiplicity came out to be 2, what is the geometric multiplicity? Geometric multiplicity will be equal to dimension of the matrix that is 2 minus rank of minus rank of a minus 4 identity a minus 4 identity because lambda is 4 na so tell me about uh, this matrix a minus 4 identity so a minus 4 identity will be equal to tell me guys a minus 4 identity will be equal to here you will get minus 1 minus 1 that is 1 1 you will get this so a minus 4 identity is this what is the rank of this matrix guys what is the rank tell me guys what is rank what is rank of this a minus 4 identity tell me what is the rank of this matrix is it is it 2 is it 2 no sir it's not 2 determinant is 0 the highest matrix is 2 by 2 matrix so highest rank can be 2 but the rank will not be 2 because the determinant is 0 so what i can do is i can make it one by one matrix single single element single single element are non zero this is non zero so rank is 1 rank is 1 if rank is 1 then put the value 1 here so geometric multiplicity came out to be 1 2 minus 1 is 1 now you can see that algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity are not equal algebraic multiplicity remember one point algebraic multiplicity can never be less than geometric multiplicity in the worst case i mean in the best case what happens is it is equal to geometric multiplicity but otherwise it will always be greater than this geometric multiplicity can never be greater than algebraic multiplicity so anyway let's come back to this so the rank came out to be one i put the rank one and then geometric multiplicity came out to be one okay now you can see that algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity are not equal if they are not equal you can't diagonalize this it means what you have is you have linearly dependent eigenvector now the solution you can't write like this the solution xt is equal to c1 e to the power lambda t v1 plus c2 e to the power lambda t v2 no sir you can't write like this you will be able to write like this if for the same eigenvalue if the eigenvectors are linearly independent then you will be able to write like this for the same eigenvalue if the eigenvector are linearly independent then you can write like this but the problem is you don't have linearly independent eigenvector that's why now this solution is wrong you have to come to this solution okay first you have to calculate v1 and v2 how to calculate eigenvector how to calculate eigenvector in this case whenever you have linearly independent eigenvector i hope you know how to calculate eigenvector let me let me teach you let me teach you how to calculate the eigenvector okay let me teach you how to calculate the eigenvector let's say let's take some matrix now let's take some matrix so that we can calculate the eigenvector okay uh, this this is the blank space so i can utilize this okay let's say i have a matrix a equal to 2 4 2 4 1 and 2 let's say this is the matrix i have now can you calculate the eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 tell me the eigenvalues guys let me tell you how to calculate the eigenvector calculate lambda 1 and lambda 2 uh, wait a minute let me check uh, whether we can uh, do it like this 8 minus 2 that is uh, uh, 6 so the product of eigenvalues should be 6 and the sum should be uh, uh, wait a minute uh, i think this will be in decimal uh, okay i don't want to take decimal let let's yeah, let's change it wait a minute let's change it so that uh, so that i can make it simple okay so let's take it 2 and 4 the sum is 6 okay so lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is 6 okay lambda 2 is 6 now what i want to do is i want the determinant because you know that now sum of the eigenvalues must be equal to trace of the matrix trace means sum sum of the principal diagonal element okay so lambda 1 plus lambda 2 must be equal to 6 and lambda 1 lambda 2 must be equal to determinant i'll teach you that i'll tell you the properties of the eigenvalues so uh, what do you want to do is uh, you want to uh, make a product equal to the determinant uh, the determinant should be if i want to take uh, uh, four uh, uh, wait a minute guys nine okay minus one and one i think it is correct okay this would be nine you can see that eight plus one is nine now tell me okay okay wait no 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 i don't want to take repeated eigenvalues so let me let me erase this 
so let's say this is 4 and 2 uh, not 4 and 2 uh, let's say 5 and 1 so determinant should be okay now you can see that 8 minus 1 8 minus 3 is 5 okay so the determinant of this matrix is 5 and the trace of this matrix is 6 trace means the addition of the principal diagonal element the addition of the principal diagonal element is 6 so the sum of eigenvalues must be 6 and the product must be equal to determinant 8 minus 3 8 minus 3 is 5 okay so now tell me what are the eigenvalues can you calculate the eigenvalues actually i designed a problem okay that's why i need this otherwise there was no need so you don't look at this this case okay i will tell you the the process i will tell you the properties of eigenvalues so you have to wait for that but before that let's say this is the matrix let's say this is the matrix i need to calculate the eigenvalues please do it please tell me the eigenvalues don't look at this value don't look at the 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 process uh, by which i have designed this problem anyway let's take this is a i need to calculate lambda 1 and lambda 2 please do it please find lambda 1 and lambda 2 do it guys first of all you need to calculate lambda 1 and lambda 2 tell me guys what is the eigenvalues do it fast what are the eigenvalues yes 5 and 1 that's correct 1 is 5 1 lambda uh, lambda 1 is 5 and lambda 2 is 1 you can see that the sum of the eigenvalues should be the trace of the matrix it means 5 plus 1 is 6 and you can see that this is the trace 6 and the product of the eigenvalues should be the determinant of this matrix product is 5 and the determinant of this matrix is also 5 okay this way i have designed this problem now so you can even verify whether you have calculated correctly or not so eigenvalues came out to be 5 1 if these are the eigenvalues what will be the eigenvector can you calculate the eigenvector yes eigenvector can be calculated like this a minus lambda 1 identity into v1 first of all i want to calculate the eigenvector corresponding to phi obviously yeah, they, we have distinct eigenvalues if you have distinct eigenvalues eigenvector will be linearly independent eigenvector will be linearly independent okay now how to calculate the eigenvector a minus lambda 1 identity into v1 make it equal to 0 okay now a minus lambda 1 lambda 1 is 5 so a minus 5 into identity if you do like this you will get 2 minus 5 identity that is minus 3 here you will get 1 here you will get 3 here you will get minus 1 is it fine guys into v1 v1 is x1 x2 is equal to 0 or le maybe le let's call it a b v1 is a b okay v1 vector is a b now i need to calculate a and b value so if you try to solve it it will be minus 3 a plus b equal to 0 next equation is also the same so from here you can see that 3a equal to b you can select any value of b or a okay let's select a equal to 1 so b came out to be 3 this is one possible eigenvector this is one possible eigenvector is it fine so we have calculated the eigenvector corresponding to 5 as 1 3 now what is the eigenvector corresponding to 1 what is the eigenvector corresponding to 1? Tell me guys. To calculate the eigenvector corresponding to 1, what I need to do is, I need to take a minus lambda 2 into identity equal to 0. Okay. So, lambda 2 is 1. Put a, lambda 2 equal to 1. So, a minus lambda 2 into identity. What is this value guys? a minus lambda 2 into identity. If you want to calculate this value, so a minus identity, it will, because lambda 2 is 1, na, so it simply become identity. So, it will become 1, 1 and 3 3 is it fine into v2 obviously into v2 equal to 0 so what is v2 v2 i call it maybe a1 b1 equal to 0 so from here you can see that a1 plus b1 is equal to 0 from from here i can say that a1 equal to minus b1 so it will also give you infinite solution but whatever you can take the whatever v1 you can take a1 will be opposite to that so what we can do is we can select b1 as minus uh, b1 as 1 so if b1 is 1 then a1 will be minus 1 so this is the eigenvector corresponding to 1 okay since we have distinct eigenvalues eigenvector will be linearly independent eigenvector will be linearly independent and we can calculate eigenvector like this no problem at all but the problem arises when 
you have repeated eigen values and eigen vector are linearly dependent let's say this problem this problem in this problem you have repeated eigen values you have repeated eigen values okay and you can't diagonalize it it means eigen vector are linearly dependent it means the eigen vector are linearly dependent now how to calculate the eigen vector how to calculate the eigen vector in this case okay let's try the same method let's try the same method same method means the method we have just studied okay so according to that method if i apply the concept then what what i will get let let's calculate the eigen vector guys so let's calculate the eigen vector so eigen vector will be maybe may look uh, let me check any blank slide is there uh oh there is no blank slide okay i need to proceed okay wait a minute guys uh, let me check the blank slide yes i have the blank slide anyway so uh, the matrix was uh, 3 minus 1 1 5 3 minus 1 1 5 3 minus 1 1 5 this was the matrix a minus 4 into identity 4 into identity into some v1 equal to 0 this way you can calculate v1 let's try it so if you try like this you will get 3 minus 4 3 minus 4 is minus 1 and then minus 1 and then 1 uh, 1 and then 5 minus 4 is 1 okay into a b let's call it a b so from here you can see that a uh, a plus b equal to 0 so a equal to minus b okay so we get v1 you get v1 so v1 came out to be v1 came out to be let's take b as 1 so a will become minus 1 now how to calculate v2 tell me guys now how to calculate v2 now there is a problem we can't calculate v2 tell me guys how to calculate v2 the problem is v2 because for v2 also eigenvalue is 4 again so if you take eigenvalue as 4 and you place v1 as v2 you replace v1 with v2 then you'll get the same equation so will the v2 be same will the v2 be same you have to take v2 as same no sir i mean you can't take v2 same as v1 you have to calculate generalized eigenvector here you can't take v2 as same as v1 because you'll get the same equation now the next eigenvalue is also 4 so the problem is since you are getting linearly dependent eigenvector so once you get this v1 v2 will be same you can write v2 as same okay if v2 came out to be same then you can't proceed this question you can't proceed this question what i need to do is then i need to calculate the generalized eigenvector to write this solution to write this solution this v1 and v2 are generalized eigenvector now we call them generalized eigenvector now what is this generalized eigenvector how to calculate this generalized eigenvector okay let me tell you guys what you need to do is you need to follow the process what process you need to follow okay let me tell you what process you need to follow first you have to write like this first you have to write like this 4 minus uh, a minus 4 into identity into v1 equal to 0 okay so if you write like this you will get the equation like this okay but don't put the value of a and b take it in a generalized form generalized form means take this b and this will be minus b is it fine this will be my v1 don't put it put the value of v1 don't put don't take b as 1 and b b uh, minus b as minus 1 don't do it just take it in generalized form now v1 is this now what you can do is to calculate v2 what you can do is then you you write like this a minus 4 identity square of that a minus 4 identity take the square of that into v2 equal to 0 okay then this is the process you have to follow the process okay if eigenvalues are linearly dependent then you have to follow this process guys now what you need to do is a minus lambda identity take the square of this into v2 equal to 0 and a minus 4 identity is this you have to take the square of this so this into this into v2 v2 is c into d c and d okay make it equal to 0 so if you multiply them if you multiply them you'll get 0 0 0 0 into c d equal to 0 so it means c and d can take any value c and d can take any value so what i did is i took c and d any value like 0 and 1 so v2 came out to be 0 and 1 once you get this v2 once you get this v2 now 
Now you can calculate V1. How to calculate V1? How to calculate V1? Now you can put A minus lambda into identity into V1 yeah, into V1 is equal to into V2 is equal to V1. Okay. Now you can put like this. Once you get this V2, now, now you have to put like this. So there are three steps. There are three steps. First step is A minus lambda I into V1 equal to 0. Write V1 in generalized form. Write V1 in generalized form. Then what you need to do is, now you need to take square of that. Take square of that into V2 equal to 0 and calculate V2 from here. Once you get V2, then you use this equation to calculate V1. Is it fine guys? So you have to three, you have to apply three steps now to calculate V1 and V2. Okay. If you have repeated eigenvalues, remember if the eigenvector are linearly dependent to calculate the eigenvector, what you need to do is first you have to write like this. Okay. Then you have to write like this. Take square of this into V2 equal to 0. Calculate V2 from here. Once you calculate V2, now V2 is this. We have calculated V2. V2 came out to be random value. C and D, you can take any value. So what I have done is I have taken C as 0 and D as 1. So uh, this is my V2. Once you get this V2, you put the V2 here and equal to V1. V1 was in generalized form, minus B and B. So I have put minus B and B here and V2 I have put 0, 1 and A minus 4 I identity is this. Okay. So from here you can calculate B as 1. So now A came out to be this. A came out to be this. So A is, you can put the value of B, uh, 1 and minus 1. This is my V1. Is it fine guys? B1 is 1. Uh, so B is 1 and then uh, A is minus B you can say. So uh, this factor will become minus 1. So this way we have calculated V1. This is called generalized eigenvector. Okay. This is called generalized eigenvector. So we have calculated V1 and we have calculated V2. Now you can write the solution. Now you can write the solution as C1 into V1 e to the power lambda t plus C2 into V1 t plus V2 e to the power lambda t. Okay. This way you can write the solution guys. So remember in previous year, in last, last two, I, mean, I don't know which year it was asked. In that year you are lucky. You are lucky. They asked you about distinct eigenvalue. They asked you the distinct eigenvalues. Okay. In distinct eigenvalues, they have provided you the eigenvector. So you can easily write the solution. You can easily write the solution. If you have independent eigenvector, you can easily write the solution. Because they, you have distinct eigenvalues. For distinct eigenvalues, you have independent eigenvector. So you can write the solution directly. But if they, they, they would have asked you the repeated eigenvalue case. Okay. If they have given you the repeated eigenvalue case. Let's say for this 4, the eigenvector is, for this 4, the eigenvector is, let's say, uh, maybe uh, 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 what was the eigenvalue v1 v1 came out to be uh, let me check the value of v1 v1 came out to be uh, v1 came out to be minus 1 1 okay so this is minus 1 1 and for this 4 the eigenvalue is 0 1 let's say they they have provided this and it is given that the matrix a has independent eigenvector sorry dependent eigenvector eigenvectors are dependent let's say it is provided these are the generalized eigenvector. These are the generalized eigenvector. I need to write the solution. So if you want to write the solution, then you can't write like this. Okay. Because they are generalized eigenvector. The eigenvalues uh, are repeated. And for repeated eigenvalues, in this case, we can't find independent eigenvector. Eigenvector will be linearly dependent. That's why we have to move to generalized eigenvector. V1 and V2 are generalized eigenvector. I told you how to calculate them. And then you have to put the solution like this. Okay. I have, uh, I, uh, uh, I understand that you, you have understood this concept. Okay. I hope that you have understood this question and this concept because this is difficult concept. Anyway, so I told you whenever you have repeated eigenvalues, then in case of repeated eigenvalues, how you are going to write the solution of this equation. Okay. I hope you understood it. Okay. Let's move to the next case. Now, remember there are some important points. There are some important points and important points are if the matrix is symmetric, if you have symmetric matrix, if the matrix is symmetric, then the eigenvalues will be real and eigenvector will be orthogonal. Orthogonal means they are perpendicular to one another. Okay. Orthogonal means their dot product will be zero. Remember this point. If, uh, if matrix is symmetric, 
if the matrix is symmetric then eigen values will be real and uh, and the eigen vector will be orthogonal let's take an example let's take an example okay if i take an example let's say matrix a is this i take a symmetric matrix what is the meaning of symmetric matrix if i take the transpose of the matrix it will be equal to a only okay so let's take 2 3 minus 1 minus 1 tell me guys now you can see that this is a symmetric matrix if you take a transpose you will get the value a itself okay so it's a symmetric matrix now can you calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvector tell me what are the eigenvalues and what are the eigenvector tell me guys calculate the eigenvalue and the eigenvector do it fast do it fast guys what is eigenvalue and what is eigenvector do it fast please do it eigenvalues and eigenvector tell me guys and uh, please like this session because uh, only 129 likes are there i want to uh, complete this to i want to take this up to 200 likes okay i want to make the double century okay please like the session guys those students who haven't liked it please like the session you, so tell me what is the eigenvalue lambda 1 and lambda 2 please find lambda 1 lambda 2 and the corresponding eigenvector i need to calculate tell me what is lambda 1 what you can do is the sum of eigenvalues must be equal to 5 and the product of eigenvalues must be equal to tell me 5 minus 1 that is 4 okay so the sum must be 5 and the product must be 4 tell me what can i say what are the eigenvalues can i say that lambda 1 is 4 and lambda 2 is 1 can i say like this is it fine guys tell me 4 and 1 what you can do is you can put the values no i mean you can put the formula also a minus a minus lambda into identity if you do a minus lambda into identity this will be the matrix and take the determinant make it equal to 0 okay this way you can also calculate so it will be 2 minus lambda into 3 minus lambda minus 1 equal to 0 okay this way you can write this matrix and then it will be 6 minus 6 minus 5 lambda plus lambda square minus 1 equal to 0 is it fine please check it i think this is correct uh, wait a minute uh, is it correct guys tell me so it will be 6 minus 5 lambda plus lambda square minus 1 it is correct so lambda square minus 5 lambda plus 5 is equal to 0 is it correct please check it please check it oh oh i have written this wrong this is not correct the product should be determinant determinant is 5 so lambda 1 and lambda 2 cannot be this okay excuse me now tell me what is the lambda 1 and what is lambda 2 from here you can calculate lambda 1 and lambda 2 lambda 1 and lambda 2 please tell me what is lambda 1 lambda 2? so some of the eigenvalues must be 5 and the product should also be 5 okay look there are some students who are copying me uh, payas and uh, chinme 4 and 1 is not correct answer why because the trace the sum of the eigenvalues is the trace of the matrix that is 5 and the product of eigenvalues is the determinant determinant came out to be 5 again it's not 4 determinant is not 4 it's 5 again so tell me about lambda 1 and lambda 2 from here you can calculate lambda 1 and lambda 2 please calculate this tell me guys what is lambda 1 and lambda do you have the calculator do you have the calculator you can calculate for lambda 1 and lambda 2 tell me what is eigenvalues what is eigenvalues don't copy do it your own tell me chinme how can you say that it's 4 1 you are copying okay don't be smart okay do your own calculation so uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 you can calculate lambda 1 and lambda 2 from here tell me what is lambda 1 and what is lambda 2 once you get lambda 1 lambda 2 you can calculate the eigenvector eigenvector will be orthogonal what is the meaning of orthogonal orthogonal means let's say this is 1 minus 1 then the other vector will be 1 1 these are orthogonal how can you say that these are orthogonal multiply this with this or write like write a vector like this i cap minus j cap this is i cap minus j cap and this is i cap plus j cap if you take the take the dot product if you take the dot product it will be 0 okay if you take the dot product it will be 0 so you can say that these two vectors are orthogonal orthogonal means perpendicular 
okay 2.1 and 1.3 eigen value sir 2.1 and 1.3 how can you say that 2.1 and 1.3 eh? 2.1 and 1.3 is it correct how can it be correct sum should be 5 and product should also be 5 have some sense 3.6 and 1.38 okay 3.6 and 1.4 that's correct that's correct that looks correct 1 1 point uh, 3 point 3.6 and 1.4 okay 3.6 and 1.4 fine so we have calculated eigen values like this these are the eigen values so corresponding eigen values you can um, for these eigen values you can calculate eigen vector but let me tell you guys i don't want to go into eigen vector but distinct eigen values are there so distinct eigen value i mean independent eigen vector will be there because you have distinct eigen values so eigen vector will be linearly independent and the eigen vector will be orthogonal orthogonal means what is the meaning of orthogonal orthogonal means let's say one vector is like this 1 minus 1 the other vector will be like this 1 1 are they orthogonal yes they are orthogonal how to check whether they are orthogonal you can write it, write the vector like this i cap minus j cap and this is i cap plus j cap if you take the dot product you will get zero or what you can do is what you can do is you can multiply this into this it will be it will become one then multiply this with this it will become minus one just add them if you add them you will get zero so you can say that these two vectors are orthogonal okay please try to understand what is the meaning of orthogonal so i told you if the matrix is symmetric if the matrix is symmetric eigen values will be real and eigen vector will be orthogonal if the matrix is anti symmetric anti symmetric means skew symmetric okay if the matrix is skew symmetric then eigen value will be imaginary eigen value will be imaginary okay and eigen vector will be orthogonal eigen vector will be orthogonal okay eigen value will be imaginary and eigen vector will be orthogonal okay so try to remember it next come to come to the next case if a is orthogonal matrix what is the meaning of orthogonal matrix orthogonal means a transpose into a is equal to identity it means a transpose equal to a inverse we call that matrix as orthogonal matrix okay so if a is orthogonal matrix then then eigen value has the magnitude equal to 1 they have the magnitude equal to 1 and eigen vector will be orthogonal again so look for orthogonal eigen vector for orthogonal eigen vector for orthogonal eigen vector you can see that either matrix is symmetric or anti symmetric or orthogonal you are getting orthogonal eigen vector that's why i have written these three statement all together okay because in 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 these three matrices eigen vector will always be orthogonal perpendicular to one another eigen values will be in one case it, it's real in one case it's purely imaginary in other case determinant is always one i can understand that but eigen vector will be orthogonal so that's why you have to remember it is it fine okay what is the right time to study in this time you don't need to study guy okay the guy in the hood uh, the guy in the hood okay you don't need to study you can enjoy okay just uh, i mean you can enjoy guy it's not the right time to study okay let me tell you and for you specially it's not the right time you can take rest you can you can enjoy and you can take rest why are you asking this question tell me why are you asking this question what's the meaning of this question eh? Eh, grow up yaar bade ho jao theek hai okay let's come to the next so i told you what is the meaning of uh, eigen value and eigen vector and uh, uh, how to calculate eigen value eigen vector so i told you about the mathematics used in in state space but this is not complete i have not completed yet okay because this state space is not completed now i want to enter into the theory part okay but i want to give you a break because uh, it's been like uh, i think it's been like uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, 3 and maybe uh, 3 approximately 4 hours okay it's been 4 hours you are studying back to back so what you can do is you can take rest guys i, I i'm giving you some 5 10 minutes break in that break you can enjoy you can say take some tea or maybe whatever okay and then i'll start again because i have to teach you uh, some more topic because uh, i i have not completed the state space i am telling you the mathematics involved in the state space but still the mathematics is not completed i have to tell you uh, some extra point like 
properties of eigen values i have to tell you about the properties and then uh, state transition matrix what is the meaning of state transition how to calculate e to the power 80 i told you know the solution of this this equation the solution of this equation e to the power 80 x 0 how to calculate this e to the power 80 okay that's a part of the mathematics okay so once i complete the math mathematics once i complete the mathematics then i will tell you about uh, the theory part i'll tell you the theory plus uh, theory class of state space theory is very simple once you know the mathematics how the mathematics works then after you can go with the theory there is no problem because many students think that everything is formula formula is not everything okay especially in sta state space if you have understood the theory part if you, if you know the mathematics part then theory will look easy and you can easily solve the questions okay so anyway what topic you will cover today sir today i will cover state space because uh, uh, i haven't started the state space yet i am telling you only the mathematics till till this point that's why i am giving you the break okay after the break i'll tell you the the remaining part of the i'll teach you the remaining part of the uh, state space okay so it's 10 minute break guys let me tell you i'll i'll disturb you at 2 pm okay so there is a break up to 2 pm okay up to 2 pm we have the break okay so class will start class will start at 2 pm okay i'll see you at 2 pm and then we'll start the remaining part of the state space okay we'll study the remaining part of the state space so you can take break after the break we'll start okay thank you <clears throat> okay tell me guys can i uh, am i audible can you can you hear me tell me everyone am i audible tell me hello everyone can you hear me sir aap se sirf itni guidance leni thi ki kis tarah se revision ki jaye ki samay is samay mein try to solve maximum questions and try to revise the theory part okay that's important the guy in the hood okay so try to solve maximum question try to join some test series and try to attempt that test series whatever subject you have revised give the test of that subject okay and if you have uh, like uh, if you have prepared like uh, four or five subjects then what you can do is you can uh, give the combined test of this that four or five subjects that Im that's important and uh, you can join the test series okay start giving the test series then only your preparation will enhance okay so tell me guys is audio video clear to everyone let's wait for two three minutes so that everybody can join okay so so in the previous i mean in the previous uh, one and a half hour i have uh, taught you about the mathematics of the of the state space now i can start with the with the theory part uh, i mean with the state space but before starting uh, some mathematics part is also there now i want to tell you about the properties of eigen values and eigen vector what are the properties of eigen values and eigen vector so first let's take the properties let's look at the properties so the the first property is the trace of a what is the trace of a let's say you have a matrix let's say you have a matrix a b c d e f g h okay let's say this is the matrix now what is the trace of the matrix trace means the sum of the principal diagonal element this we call trace okay so the trace of matrix a will be equal to sum of eigen values trace of matrix a will be equal to sum of eigen values okay so if you want to take the trace trace means the the sum of the principal diagonal element that will be equal to sum of eigen values and the determinant of a will be equal to product of eigen values okay let's say there are n eigen values the matrix is n by n the matrix is n by n let's say so it will have n eigen values so the product of the eigen values will be equal to determinant of determinant of a and the sum of the eigen values will be equal to trace of a okay now let's say the eigen value of matrix a there is a matrix a and the eigen values are lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 what you can do is if you 
take the power k, then the eigen values will also be like this lambda 1 to the power k, lambda 2 to the power k, and lambda 3 to the power k. Okay, just remember if you take multiple power like this, okay, if you take this power, I mean, the, if you uh, put a to the power k, then eigen value will also be in the same power and eigen vector will remain same. Eigen vector will remain same. Eigen vector will remain same. Eigen vector will not change. Remember this point. Okay, so eigen value of a to the power k is lambda to the power k, and eigen vector remains same. Eigen vector remains same. Eigen vector will remain same. Eigen vector will not change. Remember this point. Okay. Now you can write a as s into diagonal matrix of a into s inverse. Okay, this is the representation of matrix A. You can represent the matrix A like this. S into diagonal matrix into S inverse. This way you can represent A. Now what is this S? S is called eigenvector matrix. How to write this eigenvector matrix? Let's say we have A and A has three eigenvalues. Lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. Corresponding to each eigenvalue, you have eigenvector V1, v2 and v3 corresponding to each eigen value you have eigen vector v1 v2 v3 now if you want to find s s is called eigen vector matrix that will be equal to v1 v2 v3 these are the column this is the first column this is the second column this is the third column we call it eigen vector matrix okay so now a can be represented as s into a diagonal matrix into s inverse this way you can represent a this way you can represent A. S is the eigenvector matrix and S inverse is the inverse of that eigenvector matrix. And what is this lambda? Lambda is the diagonal matrix. Diagonal form of this A. That I call lambda. Now how to cal calculate this lambda? If A is diagonalizable, then A can be represented like this. Uh, sorry, lambda can be represented like this. Okay. Lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, 0, 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0. If you can diagonalize the matrix A. If matrix A is diagonalizable, then the diagonal form of the matrix A will be like this. So you can put it here, multi pre multiply by S and post multiply by S inverse, you will get the value A itself. Okay. Just remember this property. This is again very important property. Okay. Now we can proceed, guys. We can also write th that if you can if you can invert this, you can say that the diagonal matrix is equal to S inverse A S. It means this is the mathematical way to diagonalize matrix A. If you have A matrix, then what you can do is you pre-multiply with S inverse and post-multiply with S, you will get the diagonal matrix. You can get the diagonal form of this matrix A. Okay. So this is the method to diagonalize. Okay. This is the method to diagonalize the matrix A. What you need to do is you have S. S means eigenvector matrix. You have the eigenvector matrix. You take the inverse of that pre multiply a with with the inverse of eigenvector matrix and post multiply with the eigenvector matrix you will get the diagonal matrix okay so this way you can calculate the diagonal form of a you can diagonalize the matrix a okay this way you can diagonalize the matrix a it's simple it's very simple okay now let's proceed guys let's proceed let's proceed let's proceed okay i told you about uh, about this this concept uh, uh, from where this came on both sides, I pre-multiply with S inverse and post-multiply with S. So on this side, you will remaining with the diagonal matrix and on this side, it will be S inverse AS. Okay. So remember this point. Remember this point, how to diagonalize the matrix A. This is the mathematical way to diagonalize. But there are some situations in which you can't diagonalize the matrix A. I told you where. Whenever the, uh, uh, whenever the algebraic multiplicity is not equal to geometric multiplicity, you can't diagonalize that. In that case, in that case, let's say you find generalized eigenvector matrix and you apply this concept. If you apply this concept, you will not get the diagonal matrix. You will get the Jordan matrix. Okay. You will get the Jordan matrix. Remember this point. Remember this point. Okay. So this is uh, uh, one rule that you need to remember. Let's come to the next thing. So I told you that diagonalization, you can diagonalize the matrix A like this. S inverse AS. Now S is the eigenvector matrix. Now come to the point number six. If a matrix is Hermitian matrix, okay, 
for the hermitian matrix eigen values will be real now what is this hermitian matrix what is this hermitian matrix how uh, how to check whether the matrix is hermitian matrix or not so transposed conjugate okay what you can do is first you take transpose and then take the conjugate if it came out to be a we call it a theta a theta came out to be a then we call that the matrix is hermitian matrix okay so for hermitian matrix the eigen values will be real just give me one minute guys mobile pe mobile pe okay okay so i told you uh, for the hermitian matrix eigen values will be real now point number 7 the point number 7 is eigen value of skew hermitian matrix are either purely imaginary it's like skew symmetric it's like skew symmetric skew hermitian is uh, i mean the <laughs> the you can say it's um, similar to skew symmetric so in skew symmetric matrix if you remember eigen values will be purely imaginary okay here also in skew hermitian eigen values will be purely imaginary or zero okay remember this point in unitary method matrix in unitary ma matrix lambda will will uh, will be equal to 1 mode of lambda rather okay mode of lambda will be equal to 1 in unitary method in unitary matrix mode of lambda will be 1 so this is again new property what is the unitary matrix if a into a theta equal to identity then we call unitary matrix a is a unitary matrix then okay now there is one more important point and that point is you need to remember if you have two similar matrix now how to check whether the two matrix are similar matrix or not tell me the property of the sim similar matrix tell me guys how to check whether two matrices are similar or not let's say there is a matrix a and there exists another matrix p what i do is i multiply a with p inverse of p inverse and p pre multiply with p inverse and post multiply with p you'll get the, the new matrix b now this b matrix and this a matrix are similar matrix we call them similar matrix okay let me repeat this again let's say you have matrix a and there is some other matrix p okay now what you do what what are you what you are doing is you are pre multiplying a with p inverse and post multiplying a with p if you do like this you'll get a different matrix b now this matrix is similar to this matrix okay and we call this transformation as similarity transformation okay we call it similarity transformation and we call this p matrix as transformation matrix transformation matrix transformation matrix this is the part of maths okay this is the part of mathematics so you are doing similarity transformation let's say that you have a matrix a and you have some matrix p p is a transformation matrix okay so what you do is you pre multiply a with p inverse and post multiply with p you are getting some new matrix b now this a matrix and this b matrix we call similar matrix a and b are called similar matrix and you have same eigen value for these similar matrix okay so if you have two similar matrix okay if you have two similar matrices they have the same eigen value remember okay two similar matrices have the same eigen value is it fine guys just remember this line so i told you the properties of eigen uh, eigen value and eigen vector first property is this trace of a is equal to sum of eigen values determinant of a is equal to product of eigen values and if you take the power of k let's say a to the power k then eigen value will also uh, get the same power okay in eigen values also you you put the same power let's say a has eigen values lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and a is non singular matrix now what is the eigen values of a inverse tell me it's 1 upon lambda 1 1 upon lambda 2 and 1 upon lambda 3 why because the k is minus 1 na yeah, the k is minus 1 if k is minus 1 the eigen value will also get the same power so remember this point but eigen vector will remain same why why eigen vector will remain same let me tell you why let me tell you why eigen vector will remain same let 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 me have some blank space i don't have the blank slide okay okay here i can i can tell you let's say you have a matrix a a can be represented as s lambda i s inverse i have told you that you can represent a like this a is equal to s diagonal matrix into s inverse this is the definition of a okay this is the definition of a a can be represented like this now what is this lambda matrix this lambda matrix is 
diagonal form of A. And S, S is called, what is S? S is Eigen vector matrix. Now, I have A square. Now, A square can be represented as A into A, fine. Now, this A can be replaced with S, diagonal matrix S inverse. And this A can be represented as S, diagonal matrix S inverse. Is it fine, guys? I can write it like this. Now, you can see that this S inverse is cancelled. So, it will become S lambda square S inverse. A square can be represented like this. Now, what is the difference in A and A, A square? If you look at carefully, here the diagonal matrix is there. Now, what you have done is, you have taken the square of this. But the, this coefficient and this coefficient remain same. It means the eigenvector matrix remains same. It means the eigenvector will remain same. So, remember this point. Whenever you take power, multiple power, A, A square, A cube, A, A to the power 4, 10, whatever, eigenvector will remain same. Eigenvector will not change. Okay. So, you have to remember this. Only the eigenvalue will change. Eigenvalue will get squared. In diagonal matrix, what is the diagonal matrix? Diagonal matrix is like this lambda 1, 0, 0, 0, lambda 2, 0, 0, 0, lambda 3. This is my eigen uh, diagonal matrix. This is the diagonal matrix. In the diagonal matrix, on the principal diagonal, you write the eigenvalues. So if you take the square of this now, if you take the square of this, all the eigenvalues will get squared. It means in A square, eigenvalues are getting squared. But the eigenvalue will remain same, eigenvector will remain same, okay. So please be careful about this. This is again very important statement, okay. So th these are the properties of uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector, okay. So uh, just remember this, how to diagonalize any matrix. If matrix A is diagonalizable, then you can apply this, pre-multiply with S inverse and post-multiply with S and you will get the diagonal matrix, okay. Let's proceed guys. Let's come to the next. Eigenvalue of Hermitian matrix, okay, I told you everything. So just remember these points. And the last point is again very important. Two similar matrix have same eigenvalues. Now, what are the similar matrix? How you define similar matrix? So, I told you, let's say there is some matrix A and there is some matrix P. I call this P as transformation matrix. Now, if you pre-multiply with P inverse and post-multiply with P, you'll get a different matrix B. I call this B and A as similar matrix, okay? Remember this. Now, let's come to the next thing. At this time, mathematics is over. Now I want to start with state space. I hope you understood the mathematics part. Because mathematics is the most crucial part. Many students are not aware of the mathematics and they start reading the state space. And they stuck in the stuck in between and then they, they leave the chapter. This chapter is not that much easy, guys. So first you have to understand the mathematics. Now you are ready to understand state space. Okay. So first of all, Again, it's a little bit maths part. Let's say you have the, this first order differential equation. x dot t equal to axt. I want to solve this solution. I want to solve this differential equation. How to solve this equation, differential equation? What you can do is you can take the Laplace on both sides. Okay. If you take the Laplace on both sides, it will become Sxs minus x0 is equal to axs, right? Take this axis on this side. So it will become si minus a into xs is equal to x0. Now, you can calculate Xs as Si minus A inverse into X0. Now, you want to calculate Xt. So, you have to take the Laplace inverse of that. So, if you take Laplace inverse of this, it, you will get Xt as Laplace inverse of Si minus A inverse, Si minus A inverse into X0. Okay. This way, you can write for Xt. I hope you understood it. Okay. This way, you can write for Xt. Is it clear? Now, I have written the same thing. x t equal to e to the power 80, x of 0. Now the question is how to find this e to the power 80? How to find this e to the power 80? We call it state transition matrix phi t. We call this matrix as phi t. Phi t is called state transition matrix. State transition matrix. How to calculate this? How to calculate this state transition matrix? There are multiple methods. One method is this, e to the power 80 is Laplace inverse of Si minus A inverse, okay. First you calculate Si minus A, take the inverse of that and take Laplace inverse of that. You will get e to the power 80. This is first method. Now the second method, the second method is we know that A is this. A can be represented like this, S into lambda into S inverse. 
Now, if you calculate e to the power 80, then what you can do is you can do like this s into e to the power lambda t s inverse. You can write it like this. Now, how to calculate this e to the power lambda t? Lambda is diagonal matrix. Let us say lambda is like this 0, 0, 0, lambda 2. Let us say this is my diagonal matrix. Now, e to the power lambda t you can calculate directly. That will be equal to e to the power lambda 1 t 0, 0 and e to the power lambda 2 t. So, you can calculate this directly e to the power lambda t. Pre multiply with s and post multiply with s inverse you will get e to the power a t. So, this is one another I mean there is one more method uh, by which you can calculate e to the power a t. Okay. What is this s? s is the eigenvector matrix of a. s is the eigenvector matrix of a. So, this way also you can calculate e to the power a t and this way also you can calculate the e to the power a t. So, let us take some question. Okay. Haji. Uh, uh, sir, you are making state space more complicated. Bana rahe. Nirmal, you are not for me. You are going to study in another place. Because state space, which I am studying, can be difficult for you to understand. Because I am not studying the kids' stuff. Okay? I am not doing basic level. I am going to take a little advanced level. Bhi leke chal rahe. Because uh, uh, you will have to study this. Okay? So anyway, you are going to study in another place, Nirmal. Because it uh, is possible for you to understand. It is a natural thing. ऐसा हो सकता है कि आपको मेरा फ्रीक्वेंसी ना मैच हो ठीक है तो आप कहीं दूसरी जगह जा सकते हो ओके लेट्स कम टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक गाइस सो आई टोल्ड यू हाउ टू कैलकुलेट e टू द पावर 80 नाउ लेट्स टेक सम क्वेश्चन लेट्स ट्राई टू सॉल्व सम क्वेश्चन सो मैं सबसे पहले कोई क्वेश्चन ले रहा हूं लेट्स से a is equal to a is equal to 2 3 एंड 1 0 ओके और 1 1 लेट्स टेक इट 2 3 अह or maybe 1, 0. Let us let's do it like this. Okay. Ye koi matrix hai. This is some matrix A. And I want to calculate e to the power 80. How to calculate e to the power 80? Tell me guys. How to calculate e to the power 80? Now what you can do is you can apply this method. Because this is easy. So what you can do is you can always calculate first si minus A. Si minus A will be equal to S into identity. This will be S into identity minus A. A is 2, 0, 1, 3. Okay, this is my SI minus A. This is my SI minus A. So, if you want to calculate it, it will become S minus 2, 0, 0, uh, sorry, minus 1, it will be minus 1, minus 1 and S minus 3. Is it fine guys? This will be SI minus A. Now, what you can do is, you can take Laplace inverse of this. First, you have to take inverse of this and then Laplace inverse. Because I told you now, e to the power 8 is, first you have to take SI minus A inverse. Whatever the value you get, you take Laplace inverse of that. So, now this is SI minus A. I have to take inverse of that. How to calculate inverse of that? Tell me guys. SI minus A inverse. If you take 2 by 2 matrix inverse, that will be equal to, first you can cal calculate the determinant. The determinant will be S minus 2 into S minus 3. Okay. So, put it in the denominator. S minus 2, S minus 3. And then, Interchange these values, it will be s minus 3, s minus 2, and change the sign of these values 0 and 1. Okay, this will be the inverse of this matrix. You should know how to calculate inverse of 2 by 2 matrix directly. So, what you can do is first you take the determinant. So, the de determinant is s plus s minus 2 into s minus 3. This will be the determinant, put it in the denominator. Okay, I have put in the denominator and then interchange these values and change the sign of this, these elements. Okay, so this is the inverse of this. Now, what I need to do is I need to take the Laplace inverse of this. How to take the Laplace inverse of this? Laplace inverse of SI minus A inverse. I need to calculate the Laplace inverse of this. That will be equal to take this in, inside this matrix. So, if you take this component in the, inside this matrix, you will get 1 over S minus 2, 0. 1 over s minus 2 into s minus 3 and here you will get s minus 3. Is it fine guys? This way you can write this and take the Laplace inverse of this. I need to take the Laplace inverse of this. Now how to take the Laplace inverse of this? Tell me guys. Laplace inverse of this is e to the power 2t. Here you have 0. Here the Laplace inverse of this will be e to the power 3t. Now I need to calculate the Laplace inverse of this. How to calculate the Laplace inverse of this? Use partial fraction. Okay. Use partial fraction to calculate the Laplace inverse of this. So, it will be a1 e to the power 2t plus a2 e to the power 
dt. This way you can write, you can calculate the a1 and a2. You can calculate the residues of this. If you take the partial fraction, it will be a1 upon s minus 2 plus a2 upon s minus 3. Now you can calculate the Laplace inverse like this, okay. So this will be e to the power a t. I told you how to calculate e to the power a t. This is again a simple method, e to the power a t or phi t. We call it state transition method, state transition matrix, okay. So there are there are two methods I told you. One is this Laplace inverse of SI minus A inverse. Generally, we, we, we find this method easier for the, uh, I mean, uh, the student find it easier because they know the Laplace transform and how to take Laplace inverse. Everybody know that. So that's why they, they approach this method. There is one more method, guys. This is one more method, you can say. So in this method, what you, what you know is, what, what you can do is, first you have to calculate the diagonal matrix. The diagonal matrix is simple. We know that if this is the matrix I have, First of all, I have to calculate lambda 1 and lambda 2. So lambda 1 came out to be 2 and lambda 2 came out to be 3. Once you get lambda 1 and lambda 2 of this matrix, now you can you can, uh, 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 you can can uh, find this diagonal matrix. So the diagonal matrix is 2, 0, 0, 3. This is the diagonal form of this A matrix. Lambda 1 and lambda 2, you can put the lambda 1, lambda 2 on the principal diagonal. Now what you can do is you can calculate e to the power lambda t. So e to the power lambda t is equal to e to the power 2t 0 and 0 e to the power 3t. Is it fine? This way you can calculate e to the power lambda t. Now you pre-multiply with s and post-multiply with s inverse. Now what is s? s is the eigenvector matrix v1 and v2 you have to write. You have to write v1 and v2. What is v1? v1 is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1, corresponding to 2. And V2 is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2, corresponding to 3. You have to calculate the eigenvector. Those eigenvectors you can write it here and then pre-multiply with S and post-multiply with S inverse. You can calculate e to the power at, okay. So this is very easy I suppose, okay. I hope you understood how to calculate. Now the problem is sometime you don't have this diagonal form. Sometime you don't have this diagonal form, you have Jordan form. Whenever you have Jordan form, you write s e to the power j t, s inverse, okay. You can write it like this, but I am leaving this, this part, I am not uh, going the, uh, doing this because this is not that much important. This way you can solve it. Why I am telling you this method? Because sometimes they don't provide you a, they don't provide you the a, they provide you the eigenvalues of a and eigenvector only, okay. Or maybe something else, you, you should know now because now the question is MSQ, there are MSQ questions. So in MSQ question, they can say that e to the power at is this and e to the power at is this and uh, there is one more option they can provide you, two more options they can provide you. So you must know how to calculate e to the power at, how to calculate e to the power at, okay. That's why I told you. So this is one more method. There is one more method guys, we call it Sylvester interpolation method. What is this Sylvester interpolation method? I don't know how many of you have heard this method. Sylvester interpolation method. What is this? In this method, what you do is, this is identity matrix, this is A matrix and this is e to the power at. This is e to the power at. Here you have 1 lambda 2 e to the power lambda 2. Here you have 1 lambda 1 e to the power lambda 1 t. Take the determinant equal to 0. This way also you can calculate this part. Okay. Now how to calculate the determinant? Again, it's not easy okay so this way also you can calculate uh, e to the power at let's take a question i have a question on this so i want to solve this using interpolation method or i mean just remember this because uh, uh, maximum student do it like this way only okay so let's not waste time but just remember you can use this method also you can use this method also here the matrix is a here it is identity matrix here only one one lambda 1 lambda 2 e to the power lambda 1 t e to the power lambda 2 t equal to 0. Take the determinant of that and it will be 0. We call it Sylvester interpolation method. This method also using this method also you can calculate e to the power a t. Okay. Just remember this. I hope you understood it but I don't know how many of you know how to solve e to the power a t from this. If you want to solve e to the power a t from this method you can te telegram me or you can message me. I'll send you some example via this method how to calculate e to the power a t. Again, this is lengthy. This is not that much small. Okay, okay. You have to devote some time. This is more easier. Okay, this is lengthy again, but it is more easier. It is easier than this method and 
and this method okay so actually there are three methods but you have to know this i mean you should know this because there can be msq question let's say let me let me give you a question like this okay the equation is given like this which statement is true which statement which statement is true one phi t that is equal to e to the power a t is equal to laplace inverse of si minus a inverse this is my statement number one number two e to the power a t is equal to s into e to the power lambda t s inverse number three e to the power a t is equal to s inverse e to the power lambda t s number four determinant of let's say a is two by two matrix a is two by two matrix okay identity a e to the power a t one lambda one e to the power lambda 1 t or lambda 2 right write it lambda 2 here 1 lambda 1 e to the power lambda 1 t equal to 0 now tell me how many of statements are correct this is msq which options are correct tell me guys that's why i am telling you that's why i am telling all the methods if you are not aware of calculating e to the power 80 like this or this then you can't solve this question so option 1 is correct option 1 is correct option 2 is correct and option 4 is correct okay so this way you can design any msq this is on formula based okay so you can directly write like this now in sylvester interpolation method if you can't diagonalize the matrix let's say let's say there are repeated eigenvalues lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 they are equal to lambda and you can't diagonalize it then obviously this method will not work now how you need to write identity a a square e to the power a t and then 1 lambda lambda square e to the power lambda t. Now what you need to do is you need to take the derivative with respect to lambda. If you take the derivative with respect to lambda it will become 0, it will become 1, it will become 2 lambda, it will become t e to the power lambda t. Now further you need to take derivative with respect to lambda and divide by 2. So if you take the derivative with respect to lambda it will be 0, it will be 0. If you take the derivative with respect to lambda it will be 2 but you have to divide with 2 also. Na? So it will become 1. If you take the derivative of this quantity with respect to lambda, then it will become like this and you have to divide it with 2. So this way also you can calculate e to the power a t. You have to take the determinant equal to 0 and you will find e to the power a t from this. Okay. So again this is uh, one more method for calculating e to the power a t. Now you should know this. Why you know this? Because in MSQ question they can give you a matrix like this and they can put it equal to 0 or non-zero value and they can ask you which statement is true which option is true so if it is zero it will be true okay so remember this point this is again very important let's proceed let's come to the next thing now i want to tell you about the properties of state transition matrix what are the properties of phi t state transition matrix the first property is phi zero has to be identity matrix this property is very important why it is important because sometimes the question come like let's say there are four options okay there are four options for e to the power phi t e to the power a t or phi t they have provided you four four options like this okay four options like this now they ask you which can be the possible state transition matrix which can be the possible state transition matrix now how you are going to solve it these matrix should satisfy if they are state transition matrix they should satisfy their properties now so what you can do is you can put t equal to zero in these in these matrices okay let's say this is e to the power 2t this is uh, minus 1 this is 0 and this is e to the power 3t can it be a state transition matrix answer is no why not because if you put t equal to 0 in this matrix it will not be a identity matrix you can see that because phi 0 has to be identity matrix now it is not becoming identity matrix that's why this cannot be a state transition matrix so remember if you want to check which matrix can be a state transition matrix then what you need to do is you need to check the properties the first property is if you put t equal to 0 you'll get identity matrix so using this property some options can be eliminated okay and you're left with one or two two options out of these one or two options you can get the state transition matrix you have to check the other properties also if you in take the inverse of phi t that inverse of phi t 
will be equal to find itself with t replaced with minus t. Okay. If you take the inverse of phi t, okay, that phi t inverse will be equal to phi t itself t replaced with minus t. Okay. Just remember it. This will help you in checking which option will represent phi t accurately. Using this option, you will eliminate one or two options. You can eliminate one or two options. But still there are two options. Out of these two options, if you want to check which one can represent phi t, then you have to apply this property. Okay. If you replace t with minus t, that must be equal to inverse of phi t. Let's say you have you have a matrix like this 2 e to the power minus 2t minus e to the power minus t. Here you have 0, here also you have 0, and here you have e to the power minus 3t. Can be a state transcend matrix. Can be a state transcend matrix. First, you put t equal to 0. Is it becoming identity? Tell me, guys. Yes, it is becoming identity. Now, you are not sure whether it can be a state transcend matrix because it is satisfying this first property. So, what you need to do is you need to check the second property. What is the second property, guys? You replace minus t with t. Okay, you replace minus t with t and take the inverse of this. If the inverse of this came out to be phi of minus t, then it can represent state transcend matrix. Okay. So remember this point, these property will help you in deciding which one which option is correct and which option is not correct. So now let's come to the next. Let me write it again. Phi t raised to the power n. n can take any value. That will be equal to phi of n t. Remember this. Phi t raised to the power n will be equal to phi of n t. Now n can be 1 or 2 or minus 1 or minus 2. Okay. If n is minus 1, it will become the upper uh, the second property. Okay. Is it fine, guys? So this way also you can check. You can take the square of this. Phi t square is equal to phi of 2t. It means if you replace t with 2t and take the square of this matrix, they must be same. If it represents phi t, then it will it must satisfy this property. Okay. So this way you can check. Let's come to the next. The next is the next is phi t1 plus t2. Phi t1 plus t2 is equal to phi t1 into phi t2. Okay, remember this phi t1 plus t2 is equal to phi t1 plus uh, phi t1 into phi t2. This is again a good property. Okay, so uh, you need to remember this property also. Okay, now let me tell you one more point. State transcend process can be considered as bilateral in time. What is the meaning of this line? The meaning of this line, if you look at carefully, this is my initial state. This is my initial state and this is the next state. So this state transition matrix is telling us about the transition from the initial state to the next state. It is telling about the transition. So from t equal to 0, you are going to t equal to t. Okay. 0 to t, you are going like this. Now, using state transition matrix, you can come back. From xt, you can calculate x of 0. Okay. From xt, you can calculate x of 0. How to calculate that? What you can do is, on both side, you multiply with the inverse of this. Okay. On both side, let me write it again here. We know that xt is equal to e to the power a t into x of 0. We call it phi t. So, xt equal to phi t x of 0. Is it fine, guys? Is it fine? Now, what I can do is, we can go from xt to x0. In this expression, you are moving from x0 to xt. State is trans, uh, there is a state transition from t equal to 0 to t equal to t. And that transition is taken place with the help of phi t. Now, what you can do is you can move back. How to move back? You can pre-multiply both sides with the inverse of this. So, if I pre-multiply with the inverse of this, it will become like this. Phi t inverse into xt, it will become identity. Because phi t inverse into phi t is identity into x of 0. Is it fine, guys? Now, what is this? This will become phi of minus t. Okay, so I can write like this x0 is equal to phi of minus t into xt. So this is bilateral in time. This is bilateral in time. Remember this point. From one state, you can move to the other state or you can move back. You can also move back like this. Okay, so remember this point. Now, 
this is again a very good property this property says this is phi t2 minus t1 it means this shows the transition from t1 to t2 this this matrix shows the transition from t1 to t2 and this shows the transition from t0 to t1 from t0 to t1 it means if you multiply them together it means you are transitioning from t0 to t2 so you can write like this t2 minus t0 is it fine so again this is very important property you have to remember this property guys this is again very important let me tell you one more important property that property is again very important using phi t using phi t you can calculate a matrix phi t means e to the power a t now i want to calculate a matrix from this how to calculate a matrix take the derivative of phi t if i take the derivative of phi t you will get a e to the power a t fine a e to the power a t or simply you can say a phi t d phi t by dt is a phi t fine d phi t by dt is a phi t now on both side if you put t equal to 0 so it will become d phi t upon dt t equal to 0 on this side you will get a into phi of 0 and phi of 0 is identity matrix so from here you can calculate matrix a so matrix a will be equal to d phi t by dt and put t equal to 0 in this okay this way you can calculate the matrix a also just remember this point if phi t is provided to you if state transition matrix is provided to you you can calculate the matrix a also you can calculate the matrix a also it's simple take the derivative of each term and put t equal to 0 this way you can calculate a matrix i hope you understood it okay so this was the properties of uh, uh, state transition matrix now i want to go in a different dimension to understand the state space in a in a very good way i need to understand signal flow graph so everybody know about signal flow graph and mesen gain formula this is mesen gain formula okay so i don't want to discuss about the mesen gain formula i think everybody know that so mesen gain formula is um, what is mk and delta k and delta this is mk delta k and summation i uh, k from k from 1 to n k from 1 to n divided by delta now what this represent what this represent let me tell you delta and this mk and delta k and what is this n n is the number of forward path number of forward path number of forward path number of forward path okay n represent number of forward path n mk mk represent forward path gain of kth path path gain or rather forward path gain forward path gain forward path gain of kth path okay this is the forward path gain of kth path what is this delta delta is 1 minus sum of individual loop gain individual loop gain okay plus sum of product of sum of product of two non touching two non touching loop gain non touching loop gain i think you know that okay now this mesen gain formula i think uh, you must be aware of at this stage because i don't want to repeat this again and again okay so i i i think uh, everybody is aware of that similarly you take minus sum of product of three non touching loop gains okay you have to take three non touching loop gain and uh, you calculate the loop gain and uh, multiply them so uh, that's way th th this way you can calculate uh, delta now how to calculate delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 while calculating delta 1 the formula will remain same the only change is 1 minus sum of individual loop gain which are also non touching to first forward path because you are calculating delta 1 okay so this way you can calculate this now let's try to solve some question let's take some question guys so that you can understand how to apply this formula and how to solve it okay so let me take some some question like this this is 1 by s 
this is 1 by s this is again 1 by s this is minus 2 and let's say this is minus 1 and here you have 1 okay and uh, let's take it 2 okay rather you take this self loop here at this position 2 okay and wait a minute let's take it 1 okay this is my rs and this is my ys i need to calculate ys upon rs how to calculate ys upon rs guys tell me how to calculate ys upon rs obviously you can apply you can apply mess and gain formula you can apply mess and gain formula to calculate ys upon rs okay now tell me how many forward paths are there this is the first forward path in forward path you start from the input end you end at the output end but remember while going like this you should not return at the same node you should not return at the same node once you cover this node you have you you should not return at the same node because many students think that sir i go like this and then this and then this this can be a forward path no sir this cannot be forward path why because you go like this you reach to this node and then you are moving in a self loop and you are again coming to the same same node so you don't have to come to the same node that's why you have to uh, you have to go like this okay no node should be repeated twice okay remember this point anyway yes mess and gain formula uh, uh, mess and gain formula sir yes i told you no mess and gain formula so you can apply the mess and gain formula here so what is the mess and gain formula guy tell me guys if you go like this it will be first fold path gain first fold path gain is 1 into 1 by s into 1 by s into 1 so it will be 1 by s square is it fine this is the first forward path gain now there are no other forward path there is only one forward path there are no other forward path okay if you go like this let's say you you want to go like this sir i want to go like this no this is not a forward path why not because you are coming to the same node you're coming to the same node that's why it cannot be the forward path okay so just remember there is only one forward path one by s square now i need to calculate delta delta is 1 minus sum of individual loop gain this is an individual loop what is the individual loop gain it is minus 2 by s minus 2 by s now you can see that this is the individual loop follow the arrow follow the arrow so if you go in this individual loop it will be 1 by s into 1 by s into minus 1 so it will become minus 1 by s square okay and there is one more individual loop okay plus 2 is it fine guys so 1 minus sum of individual loop gain plus tell me sum of product of two non touching now do you have two non touching loops yes we have two non touching this one is non touching this one loop this loop and this loop are non touching so what we can do is we can take the product of this okay so it, it is 2 into 2 into minus 2 by s okay so we have to write this minus 4 by s here is it is it guy is it clear guys so we have only two non touching loop so we have to take product of the gain of two non touching loop so the uh, the gain of this loop is 2 and the gain of this loop is minus 2 by s so you have to take the product so if you take the product it will become minus 4 by s if there is one more pair let's say if there is one more pair there is one more loop here so that loop you look at look at that loop and uh, try to find with which loop this loop is non touching and you make the group okay you take the group of two only let's say there are there are three loop one two three l1 l2 l3 which are non touching so what you need to write here what you need to write here is l1 l2 plus l2 l3 plus l1 l3 is it fine guys because they are non touching they are non touching with one another so you have to make the group of two and multiply them okay and just add them sum of product of two non touching loop gains okay try to understand uh, what should i write here okay so uh, in this particular question only l1 and l2 are non touching so i have multiplied them and i have written it here next minus sum of product of three non touching there are no three non touching loop there are no three non touching loop so it's zero okay so this is my delta 
now come to delta 1 1 minus tell me 1 minus tell me individual loop which are non touching to first forward path there are no individual loop which are non touching to first forward path so it means what you need to write is 0 so delta 1 came out to be 0 is it fine guys so m1 is 1 by s square delta 1 is 1 and delta is this now what you can do is you can apply the formula ts equal to m1 delta 1 divided by delta only this term will get because there is no m2 so only m1 delta 1 divided by delta is there okay is it fine guys tell me everyone is it clear guys so this way you can write like this i think it's easy so i don't want to waste time in this okay i think everybody can do this mess and gain formula you can apply uh, you can solve this mess and gain formula and it's simple what i want to tell you is what are the difficulty in mess and gain where you can you can't apply mess and gain formula okay let's try to understand that okay so i want to tell you about the difficulty in mess and gain formula where this mess and gain formula cannot be applied okay sir why we generally prefer state space analysis over mess and gain no 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 mess and gain is a tool actually mess and gain will help you in the loop only like this is the loop and then uh, we can uh, calculate the gain using the mess and gain formula but state space is a different kind of uh, thing okay i mean state space is again uh, it's it's a method okay it's a method to solve and state space is easier method okay uh, using state space you can calculate um, uh, you you have many information like state variables how the state variable are changing controllability and observability so there are so many things that you can uh, analyze from state space analysis that's why we go in the state space okay so i told you how to write the transfer function using mess and gain formula now there is there is a limitation of mess and gain formula and what are those limitations so let's try to understand the limitations of mess and gain formula let's say i have this loop i have this 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 is this has input and this has output this is 4 this is 3 this node is A, this node is B and this node is C and there is a self loop of gain 1. If there is a self loop of gain 1, now tell me, can you apply the mess and gain formula here? Let's calculate. How many forward paths are there? Tell me guys. There is only one forward path. And the gain of the forward path is 2 into 3 into 4. You have like 2 into 3 into 4. If you do like this, it will be 2 into 3 is 6. 6 into 4 is 24. Fine. M1 is 24 now delta 1 minus individual loop how many individual loop are there only one individual loop is there and the gain of this loop is 1 so delta will become 0 is it fine now delta 1 delta 1 is 1 minus those individual loop gain sum of those individual loop gain which are non touching to first forward path there are no such loop which is non touching to this first forward path okay so delta 1 came out to be 1 now if you apply the formula m1 delta 1 divided by delta this is my transfer function cs over rs c over r okay this is my c over r now can you apply this formula tell me guys can you calculate this value c over r delta came out to be 0 if delta becomes 0 if delta becomes 0 how can you apply this you can't apply this okay so the problem is this this is the limitation you can't apply whenever you have a self loop of gain 1 Okay, you can't apply mess and gain formula. Now, let's apply the uh, cause effect relation. Let's apply the cause effect relation. If you apply the cause effect relation, so I told you this delta came out to be 0. Delta is 0. Wherever this delta is 0, you can't apply mess and gain formula. Okay, so remember, mess and gain formula is not applicable here. <clears throat> so, whenever you have self loop with unity gain, we call it invalid loop. We call it invalid loop. So we have to remove it. We have to remove it. Then only we will be able to solve it. Okay. We have to remove it and then only we will be able to calculate C upon R. So remember, remember this point. Whenever you have self loop of gain 1. self This is called invalid loop. You can't solve it using mess and gain formula. So what you need to do is you have to remove this self loop. Okay. Then only you will be able to solve this. You, you will be able to calculate C over R. So remember this point. Okay. So we have to remove it. Now let's come to the next thing. Let's come to the next thing. Okay, this is the same thing. Na? Yes. Now let's try this using cause and effect relation. I, I have taken the same, same question here. 2, 3, 4. And I want to apply the cause effect relation. What is the cause effect relation? Look, 
from this arrow I can say that c is equal to 4b c is equal to 4b fine because uh, c is coming from b so cause this is uh, affect this is cause so you can say that c is equal to 4b fine now what is b b came out to be tell me guys it's 3a say yes or no b is equal to 3a now what is a if you write a then a came out from r it is 2r 2r plus a plus a this a is also moving like this now tell me guys so this a must be equal to a plus this 2r now from here you can see that this will all will uh, this will be equal only if r is 0 only if r is 0 if r is 0 how can you calculate c upon r this is the problem so using cause effect relation also you can't calculate it okay this is the main problem that's why we can't apply Mason gain formula here so we have to remove this self loop of gain 1 then only you'll be able to solve it okay so please try to understand this concept whenever you have self loop like this you have to remove this self loop otherwise you can't solve it let's take some more more type of situation let's say I take this type of situation tell me guys now you have self loop of gain 1 here and here you have self loop of gain 2 self loop of gain 2 or minus 1 or minus 2 or 3 or 5 they will create no problem the only problematic thing is self loop of gain 1 let's say the self loop of gain 1 is minus 1 if it were minus 1 delta will not be 0 delta will not be 0 if let's say if it is minus 1 then delta will be 1 minus of minus 1 here it will not be 0 and you can easily calculate c upon r is it fine so the self loop of unity gain is the problematic thing okay that's why now we have self loop of 2 and self loop of 1 let's try to solve this question let's see whether we are able to solve this because of the self loop 1 whether we are able to solve this so again we can apply cause effect relation if you apply the cause effect relation c is equal to tell me c is equal to 6d c is equal to 6d this is the first relation now what is d d is equal to 2b plus 2d you can see that d is equal to tell me guys what is d d is equal to 2d 2d because d is coming from itself na? d is equal to 2d plus 2b from here it is coming like this uh, so uh, from here you can calculate d equal to minus 2b you take this d on this side and d equal to minus 2b fine so we have calculated d in terms of b now b b is equal to 4a is it fine b is equal to 4a clear now calculate a a can be equal to a plus 2r tell me a plus 2r if you take a equal to a plus 2r then r has to be 0 if r becomes 0 you can't calculate you can't calculate c upon r c upon r you, you can't calculate it okay is it fine guys so even cause effect relation if you are applying cause effect relation and if you have if you have a self loop of unity gain you can't solve it okay you can't solve it you can't calculate c upon r even using mason gain formula if you apply mason gain formula what is delta tell me guys delta will be 1 minus sum of individual loop tell me this loop has gained 2 plus this loop has gained 1 tell me guys this is the sum of individual loop minus minus no no it's plus plus tell me plus sum of product of two non-touching loop gain now they are not touching actually so 2 into 1 2 into 1 is what is 2 into 1 2 into 1 is 2 itself tell me guys is it correct so this is my delta now check this came out to be 0 2 plus 1 is 3 cancel with 3 so delta came out to be 0 that's why you can't apply Mason gain formula here is it fine guys so whenever you have self loop of unity gain whenever you have self loop of unity gain remember at that situation you can't apply Mason gain formula at that situation you can't apply Mason gain formula you can see this situation here you have to first remove this then only you, you will be able to apply so if C upon R is it is saying that calculate C upon R then you can calculate C upon R only if you remove this one okay is it fine guys now let's move to the next case now I have this self loop at this position only at the starting I have the self loop and here also I have the self loop now I need to calculate C upon R what is C upon R now remember this self loop is not unity gain 
this self loop is not unity gain. Let us see how to calculate this, uh, this case. Okay? Here you have the self loop at the starting. Now how to calculate C upon R? You can apply cause effect relation first. Okay? And then you can apply the mesh and gain formula also. Let us see how to calculate that. First apply cause effect relation. In case of cause effect relation, you can see that C is equal to 4B. This is first relation, C is equal to 4B. Now, B is equal to B is equal to 2A plus 2B. Fine. From here, I can say that B is equal to minus 2A. From here, I can say that B equal to minus 2A. Now, A is equal to A is equal to 2R. You can see that. A is equal to 2R. A is equal to 2R. Now, I can solve C upon R. How? You get A equal to 2R. You put A in this expression. So, you will get B equal to minus 4R. Once you get this B value, you put it here. So, C will be equal to minus 16R. Is it fine, guys? So, you can calculate C upon R as minus 16. So, now you can see that in this situation, I can calculate C upon R using cause effect relation. Now, can I apply mesh and gain formula? Let us try to apply the mesh and gain formula. The problem is, in mesh and gain formula, this is not the input node. This is not the input node. What is the meaning of input node? Tell me guys. What is the meaning of input node? Input node. You can't apply mesh and gain formula here. Because you want to write C upon R. R is not the input node. Problem is this. So you can't calculate C upon R. Now how to calculate this? How to calculate C upon R now? Using mesh and gain formula. You can't apply mesh and gain formula. Because this is not the input node. This is the main problematic thing. If this is not the input node, then how can, how can you solve it? How can you solve it? Tell me guys. How to solve it? How to calculate C upon R? Because C upon R will exist. C upon, using cause effect relation, you have calculated. It's minus 16 and this is correct. Because cause effect relation is correct always. Okay? It means, you can say that C upon R will exist here. That's correct. But using mesh and gain formula, you can't apply it. Because you don't have the input node. So what you can do is, better you remove this first self loop. If you can remove this first self loop, then you will left with this circuit only, with this loop only, okay? Now let's try to calculate C upon R now, okay? Let's see whether it is minus 16 or not. So if I remove this first loop, then this, then uh, delta, uh, then M1 will be equal to, what is the forward path gain, guys? Tell me, what is the forward path gain? 2 into 2 into 4, it will be 16. Now, what is delta 1? Delta 1 is 1 minus individual loop, which are non touching to this first loop. There are no individual loop which are not touching to the first loop, okay? So, I have put 0. Now, what is delta? Delta came out to be 1 minus, tell me, 1 minus individual loop, which are, uh, okay, 1 minus individual, sum of individual loop. There is only one individual loop, tell me. It is 2, okay? So, delta came out to be minus 1. Delta 1 is 1 and M1 is this one. So, tell me, transfer function, C upon R will be equal to M1 delta 1, 16 into 1 divided by delta minus 1. So, answer came out to be minus 16. Is it fine guys? Same answer you are getting from the mesh and, uh, cause effect relation. So, it means if you want to apply the mesh and gain formula, you have to remove this, this term. You have to remove this term. Is it fine guys? The first loop you have to remove it. Is it fine everyone? Tell me. Tell me everyone. You have to remove the first loop. Is it clear guys? Tell me. Tell me everyone. Now you can remove this first loop and then you can apply C upon R. It's again, it'll be it'll be easy now. Now you can calculate it. Whether this first loop is of one gain or two gain or minus one or minus two, it doesn't matter. You have to remove it. Then only you can apply mesh and gain formula. Okay. Otherwise, you can't apply mesh and gain formula. So I told you, whenever you have first self loop, you have to remove it. And whenever you have self loop of unity gain in between, you have to remove it. Then only you can apply mesh and gain formula. Otherwise, you can't apply. Okay. So, just remember this line. Now, let us take this. Now, what is this? What I have done here is, I want to apply the mesh and gain formula in the previous case. So, there is one more method. There is one more method by which you can, you can solve it. Okay? F first method, I told you that you have to remove it and then you can apply mesh and gain formula. You will get the same answer. There is one more method. What method you can say? Uh, what you can do is, you can connect one here and call it R prime. Call it R prime. Okay? I have created a new input node. I have created a new input node. I have joined this one like this and then 
it is r prime and this is minus 1. Now what you can do is you can calculate c upon r prime right you can calculate c upon r prime using Mason gain formula there is no problem there is no self loop of unity gain so you can apply Mason gain formula you can apply Mason gain formula and you can take this as output you can take this r as output so this will be r again put one here and you can take r as output so now this is r this is r prime so again you can calculate r upon r prime okay you can apply Mason gain formula here now you take the ratio you take the ratio of these two so you'll get c upon r is it fine so this way also you can calculate you can apply Mason gain formula uh, you have to create some extra extra r prime input you have to create extra r prime input okay and then you have to treat this as an as a uh, um, I mean uh, you have to treat this as output node you have to create an extra output node okay so first you have to calculate c upon r prime and then you have to calculate r upon r prime and take the ratio you can calculate c upon r here you can apply Mason gain formula because this self loop is of not unity gain if it were unity gain then also you will not be able to apply Mason gain formula so you have to remove this method is more accurate this method is jada ye, ye jada thoda sa badia hai. so what you can do is you can remove this first loop and you can apply Mason gain formula whenever you have first loop whenever you have self loop here at the input point so what you can do is you can remove this you can remove this and then calculate c upon r directly you can calculate it okay so it's very easy you can apply Mason gain formula also whenever you have self loop in between you can't apply Mason gain formula you have to remove that self loop of unity gain okay so remember there are two points where you have to be careful okay now look at this look at this this is the first loop and unity gain now you can remove it okay you, you can remove it and you can apply Mason gain formula answer will be same or you can apply cause effect relation using cause effect relation answer came out to be minus 16 and if you remove this and you apply Mason gain formula then also answer came out to be minus 16 you can see that okay so you have to remove the first self loop whether it is 1 or minus 1 or 2 or minus 2 it doesn't matter if the self loop came at the input point also uh, already uh, at the input point itself then you have to remove it okay then you have to remove it and you have to calculate c upon r using Mason gain formula if the self loop of unity gain came in between okay if self loop came in between then you have to remove it otherwise you can't solve it there is no point uh, there is no way to solve it okay so please be careful about this I told you how to handle this self loop of unity gain next let's come to this now tell me tell me now this unity gain self loop of unity gain came in between and th there is a self loop also and let's say they, they are asking about c upon r how to calculate c upon r tell me guys you can't even solve using uh, cause effect relation whenever you apply cause effect relation you can't proceed from this point onward you can see that if you apply cause effect relation c equal to 2d c equal to uh, 4d this point is 4 okay c equal to 4d now d d equal to 3b plus 2d 3b plus 2 so d came out to be minus 3b now look at the b point b is equal to b itself plus 2a so a has to be 0 now if a becomes 0 you can't go back you can't go back now you are, you, you are stopped here okay so you can't go back because a equal to 4r we know that a equal to 4r since a is 0 r has to be 0 so you can't calculate c upon r is it fine so using the cause effect relation you can't, you can't calculate c upon r you have to remove this self loop then only you will be able to calculate that and not only this self loop you have to remove this first loop also then only you will be able to apply Mason gain formula okay so remember this point okay so remember this point this is very important point guys don't be don't be confused with this whenever you have first self loop you have to remove it always remove it without thinking whether it is 1 or minus 1 or 2 or minus 2 whatever you have to remove it okay and then you can apply Mason gain formula if you have self loop of unity gain in between then you can't solve it actually you can't solve it but still if they want to ask you about c upon r then you have to remove it and then you have to calculate c upon r is it fine this is invalid loop you, you you can remove it okay so be careful about it let's move to the next case now i want to tell you about state diagram what is state diagram okay so i told you about the mason gain formula and uh, where this mason gain formula is not applicable tell me guys have you understood it say yes or no 
please like the session i want to make the double century of the of the likes it's 136 only so please like the session guys okay let's come to the next topic have you understood it say yes or no tell me guys the previous case have you understood that that previous case where we can we can't apply the mess and gain formula tell me everyone okay let's come to the next thing next is state diagram i want to tell you about the state diagram okay what is state diagram how to make the state diagram look let's say this is the equation okay in this equation let's say x1 and x2 are state variable let's say they are some state variable x1t and x2t let's call them state variable state variable let's call them call them state variable and i want to show them in diagram let's the state variable i want to show these state variable in diagram i call that diagram as state diagram how to show them what you can do is you can apply laplace transform here so if you apply laplace transform here it will it will be s into x1 s minus x1 0 is equal to x2 s fine tell me guys is it correct this way i can write it now you can say that x1 s is equal to x1 0 by s plus x2 s by s is it clear now i can write like this so if you are writing like this then you can make a diagram you can make a cause effect diagram this is x1 s and x1 s came from x2 s by multiplying 1 by s so what you can do is you can write this 1 by s here and you can write x2 s here so you can see that x1 s is equal to x2 s into 1 by s using the cause effect relation you can say that x1s is equal to x2s into 1 by s plus x10 by s into 1 okay x10 by s into 1 okay then you will get x1s is it fine guys so this way you can draw the diagram i'll follow this diagram there is one more diagram you can follow okay you can see that this is x10 this is x10 and this is x2s they will be added here both are multiplied by 1 by s and then you will get x1s so this way also you can represent it and there is one more way to represent the diagram like this so whenever you have first order differential equation you can draw the diagram like this is it fine we call it state diagram in this diagram you can see that this is state these are the state variable okay i can show the state variable and this way you can represent it can we analyze a multiple input multiple output system with state space analysis which cannot be analyzed using transfer function method yes in state space analysis you can have multiple input and multiple output there is no problem at all we can analyze that even we can analyze that uh, using uh, mason gain formula also if you have multi the only condition is the system must be linear okay then only you can apply that anyway so i told you uh, about the state diagram how to how to make a state diagram so you can uh, make the state diagram like this whenever you have first order differential equation you can make the state diagram like this now let's say you have this equation second order differential equation how to make a state diagram now the problem is with the second order differential equation whenever you have to you have second order differential equation you have to convert the, this differential equation into first order differential equation then only you will be able to design the state diagram okay now how to convert this second order differential equation into first order differential equation what you can do is you can say that yt is x1t you can treat yt as x1t and then take dyt by dt dyt by dt as x1 dot t x1 dot t or call it x2t okay and then double derivative d square yt by dt square you can say that it will be equal to x2 dot t is it fine guys we can call it because it, it is the double if i take double derivative it will be the double derivative of x1t but i don't want to write it in double derivative it is single derivative of x, x2t is it fine because on both sides i have taken derivative if i take both sides on derivative with respect to time it will become double derivative on this side you have x2 dot t only okay now you can see that this is first order differential equation on this side you have single derivative on this side you have x2 only now how to calculate this x2 dot t to calculate this x2 dot t what you can do is 
in this equation you can put here x2 dot t you can put here x2 dot t plus 3 dy t by dt what is dy t by dt dy t by dt is x2 t x2 t plus 2 y t y t is x1 t y t is x1 t equal to r t equal to r t is it fine guys this way you can write it like this now you can calculate x2 dot t so x2 dot t came out to be again it will become first order differential equation x2 dot t came out to be rt minus rt minus 2x1t minus 3x2t this is my first order dif differential equation and this is also first order differential equation now what i need to do is i need to draw the state diagram of this first order differential equation and this first order differential equation how to draw it i know how to draw the first order how to draw the di state diagram of first order differential equation i know that so similar way i can do that let's try to do that first equation is this x1 dot equal to x2 so what i can do is i have x2 x1 dot is equal to x2 so what you can do is you can make the straight diagram how to make the straight diagram tell me guys i have done the same thing here here x1 dot is equal to x2 the same thing is there na? okay this is x1 dot equal to x2 so we have already drawn that so uh, let me let me show you this is x1 s okay and this is x2 s and you can have 1 by s here and here you have tell me here you have x1 0 by s is it fine this is the state diagram for this equation now let's come to the next equation the next equation is this x2 dot is equal to let me write it again x2 dot is equal to x2 dot was equal to rt minus 2xt rt minus 2xt rt minus 2xt minus 3x2t minus 3x2t now we can make the state diagram of this also how to make the state diagram tell me guys here you have here you have x2t x2t x2s rather okay tell me guys here you have x2s okay you have x2s and now this time x2 dot is equal to this now so you have x1s here okay now tell me now tell me how to write it you have to apply the same concept you have to apply the same concept now how to apply the same concept tell me guys how to apply the same concept better you you make it like this now here in this diagram only in this diagram only you can you can draw this this equation how to draw this equation guys tell me so if this is x2 s this can be written like this 1 by s okay this can be 1 by s is it fine tell me this can be 1 by s and now this x2 s this x2 s uh, came from tell me uh, from where this x2s will come minus 2 x1 so from x1 it will be minus 1 tell me is it correct guys tell me from x1 it is came, coming from my uh, from x1 you can see that uh, it is minus 1 minus 2 minus 2 i have to take minus 2 and from x2 no 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 I, it's not correct it's not correct wait a minute wait a minute no no i'm not doing correctly okay so i have written this equation up to this point i think there is no problem this you can draw like this now the challenge is this how to draw wait a minute how to draw this equation how to draw the state diagram of this equation how to draw the state once you draw the state diagram of this equation we can combine them so that we can make the state diagram of this entire equation okay now the problem is how to draw the state diagram of this equation x2 dot how to draw the state diagram of x2 dot equal to this so we know that if there is a dot point if there is a dot point that dot point can be represented here x1s tell me guys and without dot point can be represented here is it fine this is my x2s okay without dot point can be represented here and 
the initial value is x10 so i have represent x10 x10 means y y0 x10 is y0 because if you put x10 here it will become y0 so y0 by s and 1 now the second equation is this now you know that this is the dot point so the dot point can be represented here and then you have to take 1 by s you have to take 1 by s because the dot point is represented here and the without dot point is represented on this side. No? Is it fine guys? So what I have done is I have done the same thing 1 by s here uh, uh, in the previous case in this case I have done x1 s the dot point here and then without dot point here and with 1 by s is it fine? Now I, I did the same thing I did the same thing or what you, what you can do is you can call, call it x3 s now better you call it x3 s don't look at this don't look at this better you call it x3 s. So if x2 dot equal to x3s, then this is x2s and this is x3s. Is it fine? And here you have to connect initial initial value is x20, x20 by s. And x20 is x20 is x20 is single derivative of yt. So x20 is y prime 0 by s. Is it fine? So this way you can make it like this. We call it x3s. We call it x3s. Now x3s came from RT, so I connect 1 here, x3s came from RT, I connect 1 here and from x1t it is minus 2, from x1t it is minus 2 and from x3 it is minus 3, is it fine? Let me repeat this again, let me repeat this again because uh, it's not that easy. So let me repeat this again because many students are feeling confused here, okay, let me repeat this again, okay, let's come back. Wait a minute. Yes, let me re let me repeat this. So I told you this is my equation. X1 dot t is equal to x2 t. Okay. Now what I can do is I can take the Laplace transform on both sides. If I take the Laplace transform on which both sides, it will become s x1 s minus x1 0 is equal to x2 s. Fine. Now I can take x1 s as x1 0 by s plus x2 s by s. Is it fine guys? This way I can write like this. Now we have this x1 s and we have this x2 s. Now you can see that x1 s came from x2 s into 1 by s. Eh, no? So x2 s into 1 by s I have done it and there is one more x, uh, uh, one more term x1 0 by s. So I put x1 0 by s and 1 here. Okay. So this way I can make the state diagram of this. I think it's clear to everyone. Now we need to make the state diagram of second order differential equation or multiple order differential equation. How to make the, uh, make the uh, state diagram of this second order differential equation? It's very easy. Let me tell you what, how. What you can do is you can take yt as x1t. You need to convert this in first order differential equation. Convert yt as x1t and dyt by dt as dyt by dt as x1 dot t. I have taken the derivative on both sides. So let's call it x2t so that it become first order differential equation. Is it fine? Now I take double derivative d square yt by dt square that is equal to x2 dot x2 dot t. Fine. I have take, taken the derivative on both sides. If you take derivative on both sides, it will become double dot. I don't want to take double dot. I don't take I don't want to take double derivative. So that's why I have written this x2 dot t and I call it x3t. I call it x3t. Is it fine? Now tell me what is the state diagram of this and what is the state diagram of this? State diagram of this is very simple. We have already done that. 1 by s. It is x1s. Tell me guys. It is the dot point x1s. This is without dot point x2s. And here you have the initial value. What is the initial value guys? Tell me. x10 by s. Now come to this equation. In this equation, this is the dot, dot point and this is without dot point. Without dot point is x3s. We connect 1 by s here. Tell me. Is it fine? And then we connect the initial value. What is the initial value guys? Tell me. x2 0 by s. Is it fine? Is it fine? So these two first order differential equation I have shown like this. But the problem is I have to show this differential equation. In this differential equation if you look at this double derivative term. This double derivative term I can represent it x2 dot t. So I can say that x2 dot t is equal to rt minus 2yt, yt is x1t, so minus 2x1t, 2x1x1t and then tell me guys minus 3 
dy t by dt dy t by dt is x to t because i need to make it in first order differential equation form so there should be one dot here and there should be without dot term here so that's why i am replacing yt with x1 t and dy t by dt with x2 t not x1 dot t because i don't want to take it in derivative now I, I i have taken one derivative on this side so on this side there must be zero derivative term so that it become first order differential equation okay so i take this minus 3 x2 t is it fine and this x2 dot is equal to x3 t we know that we know that x2 dot equal to x3 t so we can see that this is the cause effect relation x3 t came out one from rt so what you can do is this is x3 t so you take one from rs tell me guys is it correct one from rs and minus two from x1 minus two from x1 is it correct minus 2 from x1 and minus 3 from x2 minus 3 from x2 is it clear guys okay and so this is the state diagram but there is one more step we have to show y y s also so y s is equal to tell me what is y s y s is x1 s so directly you can correct one here is it fine so this is the state diagram this is the state diagram this is the state diagram how to make the state diagram i told you okay how to make the state diagram it's very simple let me tell you the direct method let me tell you the direct method how to make the state diagram directly so directly what you can do is since this is two power there is two power since you have two power so you write one by s and one by s is it fine you have to write one by s term and one two times you have to write because the highest power is two highest derivative term is two that's why you have to write one by s here one by s here fine now what you can do is you can join them you can join them and call this point as x1 s this point as x2 s okay and this point as x1 dot s oh sorry x2 dot s or call it x3 s call it x3 s or x x2 dot s okay whatever you call it okay call it x3 s or uh, x2 dot s anyway now what you can do is now you you put it like this y1 equal to x1 dy1 equal to x1 dot or x2 and de double derivative as x2 dot or call it x3 okay now you put here as x2 dot and this term without in without dot term you get the cause effect relation once you get this cause effect relation now you can see that x2 dot which is equal to x3 came from rt so rt it is 1 and then x1 t minus 2 from x1 t it is minus 2 from x2 t is minus 3 okay so this way you can draw the diagram directly you can draw the diagram directly okay so i mean there are no other way but you have to apply this method why i told you this because using the state diagram you can make the state equations okay how to make the state equation i'll tell you how to make the state equation i'll tell you but first you have to understand how to draw the state diagram how to draw the state, state diagram now what we can do is from state diagram we can make the state equation and output equation how to make the state equation let's draw the state diagram first let's say this was the state diagram let's say you have this state diagram 1 by s here 1 by s here okay and here you have 1 this is my rs okay here also you have 1 this is my ys fine guys now here you have minus 2 minus 1 or minus 2 it will be minus 2 and here you have minus 3 okay and these are the initial condition this is x1 0 by s and this is x2 0 by s now how to write how to write the state equation and output equation from state diagram let me tell you how what you can do is the first step is remove the initial conditions you have to remove the initial condition the first step is remove the initial condition uh, remove initial conditions initial conditions first step is uh, remove the initial condition so you have to remove the initial condition so let me remove it you can remove it initial conditions are not required you can remove it okay once you remove it then the next step will be treat this as x1 t this 1 by s represent integrator it means on this side you are integrating it means on back side you are differentiating so if it is x1 t it will become x1 dot t if you take this x1 dot t if you integrate it it will become x1 t fine that's why this 1 by s represent integrator so 
via integration you have received this x1 t. It means you have to write this point as x1 dot t and we call this x1 dot t as x2 t. If this is x2 t and here you have 1 by s, so you can write this point as x2 dot t. Is it fine guys? Is it fine? So you have to write it like this. The next step is, so uh, the, the second step was write, write state variable, write state variable. These are called state variables, x1, x2, x3, these are called state variable. Now the third step is remove 1 by s. After writing, remove 1 by s branch. Now you can remove this 1 by s. So if you remove this 1 by s, if you remove this 1 by s, you will left with this. Is it fine? Now you can remove this 1 by s. Now the third, now the fourth step, write the cause effect relation. Write cause effect relation. Now write cause effect relation. Now you need to write cause effect relation. How to write cause effect relation? Look at this x1 dot. Is there any any incoming branch at x1 dot? No. So x1 dot must be equal to x2. You can write like this. Is it fine? Now x2 dot. Now tell me x2 dot. This is x2 dot point. So from x1 it is minus 2, minus 2 x1. From x2 it is minus 3 and from rt it is 1, okay. So I have written the cause effect relation. Now you can write this cause effect relation in matrix form. So if you write this cause effect relation in matrix form, you can say that this is equal to, here you have to write x1 t, here you have to write x2 t plus rt okay now tell me x1 dot t x1 dot t is only x2 so you have to write 0 1 and 0 here fine now come to x2 dot t what is x2 dot t guys x2 dot t is minus 2 x1 so you have to write minus 2 here minus 3 x2 minus 3 x2 okay so you have to write minus 3 x2 here and 1 rt 1 like this so this is called state equation in this state equation, you can see that this is the first order differential equation. This we call A, this we call B. This is matrix A and this is the matrix B. Is it fine guys? And this is the input RT. So this way we can make the state equation. Now how to write the output equation? How to write the output equation? Output YT equation. How to write it? Output equation is again very simple. Okay. Output equation is very simple. Okay. What is output equation? Output equation is yt is equal to x1t you can see that yt equal to x1t from here you you can apply cause effect relation na? yt equal to x1t so what you can do is you can make it in in matrix form you can write it like x1t and x2t and you can write it like this 1 0 is it fine guys there is no coefficient of rt in this yt so you can write 0 0 rt is it fine so this is my matrix c this is my matrix C. So you have calculated A, B, C and D, A, B, C, D. So if, if differential equation is provided to you, you can write, you can make the state diagram. Using the state diagram, you can write the state equation. If differential equation is there, you can directly make the state equation. How to directly make the state equation? Put y t equal to x1 t x1 dot t equal to x2 t and x2 dot t equal to x3 t but you can calculate this x2 dot t like this put here in terms of this uh, I mean the double derivative can be replaced with x2 dot t and take this this term on, on the right side. So you get x1 dot x2 dot t and x1 dot t make them in, in, in matrix form and y t as x1 t you can write this again in x in matrix form is it fine. So you don't need to make the state diagram okay. If you want to uh, write the state equation, you can directly write the state equation from the differential equation itself. Okay. So this way you can write the directly state equation. I hope you understood it. Is it fine guys? Now how to solve the state equation. Okay. Now how to solve the state equation. Tell me. How to solve the state equation. Let me tell you. This is my state equation guys. This is my state equation. What you can do is you can take Laplace on both sides. If you take Laplace on both sides, it will become wait a minute this should be dot okay so this is my state equation if you take laplace on both sides it will become s x s minus x 0 is equal to tell me guys a x s plus 
BRS. Fine. Tell me, guys. Now, what you can do is take this excess on this side. So, SI minus A into excess is equal to X0 plus BRS. Is it correct, guys? Tell me. Now, what you can do is you can pre multiply with the inverse of this on both sides. So, excess will be equal to SI minus A inverse into X0 plus SI minus A inverse into BRS. Okay. So, using this equation, you can calculate next state variable XT. XT will be equal to Laplace inverse of this term SI minus A inverse into X0 plus SI minus A inverse into BRS. Okay. So, if you want to calculate the next state variable, let us say some initial state variable is provided to you and some input is also provided to you. So, what you can do is you can calculate the next state variable by, by doing like this. You can take Laplace inverse of this quantity plus this quantity. Okay. This way you can calculate the next state variable or the new uh, the state variable at some time t. Let us say the input is 0. If input is 0, then xt will be equal to Laplace inverse of, tell me guys, si minus a inverse into x0. This way you can calculate next state variable. And what is this? This is e to the power a t into x of 0. I have already taught you this. If input is 0, if rs is 0, then the next state variable will be initial state variable into e to the power a t. This way you can calculate this. I hope you understood it. Okay. So, this was again easy peasy. You can calculate like this x t equal to e to the power a t x of 0 if input is 0, if rs is 0. Otherwise, you have to take consideration of rs also. Okay. So, I told you how to apply the state transition, how the state variable changes, how the state transition take place. So, in, 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 in state transition, you can say initial state variable is, is responsible, initial value of the state variable is responsible and the input is responsible. These two terms are responsible. Okay. Now, let us come to the transfer function. How to calculate the transfer function? Transfer function is very simple. We have output equation yt equal to cxt plus drt and we have state equation x dot t equal to axt plus brt. Now, what you can do is we need to calculate ys over rs. This is my transfer function. We need to calculate that. What you can do is you can take the Laplace on both sides. Okay. So, if you take the Laplace of the first equation, it will become S xs minus x0 is equal to A xs plus brs. While calculating the transfer function, you have to take initial value as 0. So, you have to put this quantity as 0. Okay. Take this xs on this side, it will become Si minus A into xs is equal to brs. Fine guys, tell me. Now, you can pre-multiply with the inverse of this matrix, SI minus A inverse. So, on this side, you will left with S XS. On this side, you will get SI minus A inverse into BRS. Okay. This will be my XS. Now, what you can do is you can put this XS in this YS relation. YS equal to C, C XS plus DRS. Tell me guys, is it correct? Now, what you can do is in place of XS, you can put this value. If you put this value, ys will be equal to c into si minus a inverse, si minus a inverse into b plus d rs. Tell me guys, is it correct or not? Is it correct or not? I have taken this rs common, rs common. Here you left with d and here in place of excess you have this quantity. I have taken this rs common. So, it will be c into si minus a inverse into b. Is it fine? Now, take this rs in the denominator. So, it will become ys upon rs. So, ys upon rs is c into si minus a inverse into b plus d. Okay. This is the transfer function expression. Remember this. How to calculate the transfer function? Is it fine guys? Tell me. I hope it is clear to everyone. Now, let us move to the similarity transformation. So, there are some, some more terms are like this. Similarity transformation and then uh, uh, decomposition of transfer function and then controllability and observability. Okay. So, there are uh, some few topics uh, are remaining. So, I think it's been uh, it's very long lecture. So, let's stop it here guys. Okay. Because I, I, I hope that uh, it's been like 5 hours. Anyway. 
So let's stop it here and in some next session, maybe some other session, I'll teach you about uh, how to take a similarity transformation and in similarity transformation, what things remain same, okay? And then decomposition of transfer function and then the last topic that is controllability and observability. This is again very important, okay? So uh, we will convert into matrix form. Which one, Chinmay? Uh, what do you want to convert in matrix form? Okay, so let's stop it here guys. Uh, I don't want to uh, teach uh, from this point because the problem is it's been very long class. Okay, so let's stop it here and uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the control part. I mean the state space part because uh, it's not an easy part. So I have told you the first the mathematics and then I told you about uh, the basic terms of Mason gain formula. Okay, and then uh, I told you about uh, about the state equation. Okay, how to draw the state diagram. Okay. And uh, from the state diagram, how to write the state equation. From the differential equation itself, how can you write the state equation. And then I told you how to uh, find the state transition, okay. How to do the state transition uh, from uh, initial state variable to the next state variable. How you go like this, okay. How you uh, do the state transition. And then I told you about the transfer function. From the state equation to transfer function. How to write the transfer function and how to calculate it, okay. In the next class, I'll do the remaining part, okay? So thanks uh, for attending this class, guys. Thanks for showing interest in this class. I hope you enjoyed. So let's stop it here. See you in the other session. Thank you and take care. Bye. Thank you.